This is the best possible start to Baldur's Gate 3 that you can have. It will be the easiest time that you've ever played this game. This is meant for brand new players so that they can get overpowered builds to carry them through the entire game. I have researched and planned these guides for over a year from early access to beta to launch. I have studied thousands, literally thousands, of YouTube videos, read every wiki article, spreadsheeted every item in the game, every build possible, every skill ability combination, and I have got all the knowledge that a lot of other channels are not properly presenting to you. Just simple small things like how resistances can't stack and how certain skills do not interact with other skills, though that you would think they would. I'm going to explain all of that as we go through the video, but we're going to start on Act 1 here. Let's go. Before we play, there's some settings you need to change, so go down here to Options, and you want to turn off Karmic Dice. This is on by default, and what this does is this will even out your dice roll wins and losses, but this build guide is going to optimize your characters so that you will win the majority of the time, and if you have this turned on, it actually lowers your chances of success, so it is best to turn off Karmic Dice. Next up is maximum number of saves. You want these as high as possible, unless for whatever reason you have a very slow or, you know, low storage computer or something. I'm not sure, but you want it, the, you want as many saves as possible because there might be a time where you really screw something up. You accidentally kill a character you want to save later, or you forgot to loot something and it's too late to go back. And if you have a limited amount of auto saves, then you, you can't go back. You're basically, you have to start the whole game over. So, other than that, the last thing is in keybinds, scroll down to uh, take short rest. You want to unbind short rest. By default, this is your Y key. You might fat finger this, you might accidentally hit, hit it. Your cat might walk across your keyboard and accidentally waste one of your short rests. You want to unbind this, you can still short rest without a button. There's a button you can click on to short rest, and that's what we're going to use for safety reasons. Also, it's not on screen, but if you're a streamer or YouTuber, turn off your show nudity. <laughs> and if you're on Xbox, do not record any nudity because someone got banned for that. Now, this guide is meant for new players and casual players who only have a few hours a day to play and they want to make the most of it. So, this is going to be 100% min-maxed builds that will completely carry you through Act 1. It does involve some respecking when you get certain items so that you can maintain that power for certain encounters. But it, you are open for your main character to build whatever you want, but you will be lacking a healer. Your main character for this playthrough, I will be playing as a healer, but you don't need a healer to do this on easier difficulties. If you're playing honor mode, you really want a healer. This is optimized, completely optimized routing for the easiest and fastest way to get through Act 1 while getting all the mandatory items for all the builds I'm going to be showing for all the characters. Now, also, this uses minimal cheese mechanics, so there are some things in the game you can do to make it really easy, like using barrels and camp casting. I'm going to explain all of that later as we get to it, but you don't have to use these things. If you want a harder challenge, you can just not do them, but I'm going to teach them to you anyway. This will also save you the most time without cringe speedrun weird tech where you stuff bodies into boxes and then glitch them off the map. None of that stuff. No no kind of glitches like that in this run. Everything is done in order, and this is not a build gut. I'm not just going to dump a, a 1 to 12 build and then have you figure out the rest. No, we're going to be playing through the entirety of Act 1 together, like we're on the couch together, and I'm going to be teaching you the entire game and all the mechanics. Also, this is a 100% guarantee that you will have the easiest time possible getting through Act 1. And yes, I will be making guides for Act 2 and Act 3, but they will take a lot of time. Like I said, I have worked on this guide for over a year. And finally, there will be full explanations of all game mechanics as they come, as they arrive, as to punish people skipping around and just clicking on the chapters in the description. I just want to say that this video will contain spoilers. It is not a spoiler-free guide because we're going to be playing the game together. So if you don't want to spoil any story stuff or any anything that happens... You will have to watch another guide, I'm sorry. Before we begin the game, I'm going to talk about the characters we're going to play and use. Now, I'm going to also talk about optional differences here. So, your main character, what I will be playing, is a healer that will also be the face of the party. What does that mean? The face of the party is the person that does most of the talking. They do the persuasion checks 
uh, they do the intimidation checks, the performance checks, etc. to try to get the party through certain situations without ending in, in combat, or you can always kill them later. It's your choice, but you definitely want a character that, can, that knows how to talk to people, that is charismatic and whatnot. And your healer is also going to be your buffer and debuffer as well as a very hard-hitting ranged DPS early on, around towards the end of Act 1. Uh, but you can play whatever you like. You don't need a healer in the easier difficulties. I highly recommend a healer for honor mode, which um, this whole build here, everything that you're seeing is honor mode, ready, honor mode, ready to go. And I will point out parts in this guide when you should not do things in honor mode. So Shadowheart, as a single target DPS tank monk, you can use any character that you want. Shadowheart is just a fan favorite. Almost everyone plays with her in their party for some reason. So... There you go. That's her role. Also, Lazel is going to be your early game carry, and we're going to play her as a default Lazel for now, but she is going to transition later in Act 2 into a Radiant Evasion proc tank, and I'll teach you what that is later, though I highly recommend Minthara because Minthara is just better uh, than Lazel, but if you like Lazel, you can, you can take a small DPS hit and use her instead. It's totally fine. And then finally, Asterion, who is the most broken, overpowered, absolute, d ridiculous character through certain story choices. You can make Asterion the best at anything in this game. So if you want to play one of the story characters, play Asterion. Simple, easy, easy choice there. But ha not having Asterion in your party is a massive DPS loss. It makes a lot the game a lot harder. So again, he's the most broken, overpowered character in this in this game. And so he's going to be used to, to cheese solo events. He's going to be able to clear entire camps for you that don't force combat. And I'm going to explain this later. And he is one of the strongest DPS characters you're going to have by Act 3, who can attack 14 times per turn. Now, before we make our character, I just want to point out if you play an origin character that... Uh, unless you pick the Dark Urge, you are shorting yourself a party member. And when you are short a party member then you have less camp casting buffs, and it, it's just not as easy. So I highly recommend that you make your own character. Also, you can play the Dark Urge if you want to. You get a free cape that gives you stealth if you play the Dark Urge in Act 1. So it's a little bit stronger than playing just a regular default character, but you are kind of forced to be evil, and I'm not going to spoil the Dark Urge stuff. That's a whole separate video. Look out for that one in the future. But let's talk about our Cleric Start. So... For race, you want to be an elf, all right? And the reason why we pick elf is all of the bonuses they get, but the main one is that you get free longbows. It's just the easiest way to just be good at longbows, which will really carry you through the end of Act 1 into Act 2 for quite a while, especially with the build that we're going to be showing you later. So here's the choice now. High elf is better if you want to be, um, you know, just easier, uh, on easier difficulty levels. You want to pick high elf so that you can learn the cantrip friendship, and that just makes you <laughs> able to pass charisma checks easier. On higher difficulties, do not count on friends to, to help you. On honor mode, I would not use even bother. You can completely ruin some dialogues and enter combat. It, it, it's just bad. It's a bad idea. So, uh, for everyone else that wants just a slight advantage in combat, which you won't need by the end of Act 1, we'll have camp caster buffs to, to do this. What elf gives you extra movement seed? 1.5 meters or... I don't know how many feet it is. I'm sorry. I don't know how to convert that. But uh, I'm going high elf with friends. All right. Now, of course, class, we're going to go cleric. And the cantrips you want to pick... And, and there's a reason why I'm picking these cantrips. Because it's going to synergize with our other character cantrips later on. And that is sacred flame. This is just early game DPS. Uh, light helps you around act two. And then guidance. Uh, it just, it's a minor help in Act 2, you don't even really need it, but Guidance is the main one, you absolutely need Guidance, you don't have to pick Light, and you don't have to pick Sacred Flame if you don't want to. Life Domain is what we're using, because we are the healer, early game, this, this carries you, uh, you don't have to play healer, again, Deity does not matter, but if you pick Saloon, you'll have some banter with Shadowheart who is a follower of Char. Background is very important. I have tried all the backgrounds. I have had a whole year of the beta to test this. And Guild Artisan is the one that will give you the most XP in Act 1. Because here's a game mechanic. Whenever you have four of um, Inspirations, I believe they're called. Um... <laughs> Yes, it is called Inspiration. Once you have four, they stack to four, that's it. Inspiration lets you re-roll a failed roll. We will never do that. We will simply save scum. You'll have to do it in Honor Mode, but 
uh, once you have four inspiration stacked, all the inspirations you get after that are bonus XP little little gifts. And Guild Arson is going to get you the most of those to help you level faster. So abilities. We're going to go ahead and clear this out, and I have it on the screen here. This is temporary. This is not the stats we're going to run the rest of the game with. 15 strength with the plus one bonus here. And then we're going with 10 dex. Again, this just helps you early. 12 constitution, 8 int. We don't need intelligence. You want 16 wisdom, plus 2 there, charisma 10. Uh, charisma 14, I'm sorry. It's charisma. It, I was thinking of something else. Now, for skills, these don't matter too much. We don't really need history in Act 1 that much. I would go with religion. That way you can just get a little bit more going for you. Uh, but again, none of those make a real big difference. They're not, you know, game-altering. As far as prepared spells... Because we're going to be on the Nautiloid, we don't need Create or Destroy Water. We don't have any Lightning or Cold abilities to synergize with that. So you want Command. We need Command for something we're going to do. Some early game cheese. Now, your character is all ready to go. You can obviously change their appearance because, you know, you're going to be looking at their face as an icon the entire game. So make sure it's one you can stand staring at. When you get to Guardian Choice, it doesn't matter. You can just make her look or he, she, whatever you want to do. Make up a clown if you want. It Again, it does not matter. Now, before we begin, I want to just go over the controls that I use the most. Left click to move, middle click rotates camera, WASD pans the camera, shift and spacebar freezes time, enters turn-based mode, C is for stealth, shift C is entire party stealths or unstealths, shift, uh, and shift is just check enemy sight lines, control left click to out of combat attack, Z jump, G to ungroup and regroup party quickly, Right click cancels current anim action or animation, and so these I'm gonna I'm gonna go over more how to control your character optimally later as we go through the guide. A few more I forgot. Uh, the Alt button uh, checks for lootable stuff. You can see uh, no Alt button pushed. If I hold down Alt, I can see Mind Flare. He's over here ready to loot. And then Tildy or Grave. It's the button above Tab. It's the button to the left of your one. And that highlights entities. So right now you can see I'm not highlighted. I push tilde. I'm now highlighted in white. Enemies or neutral enemies will be in yellow. Neutral entities. Uh, hostile will be highlighted in red. And you can see that through walls if you've explored the area. Now I just want to point out this guide is going to have you skip a lot of loot that is not necessary. But if you want to, you are more than free to loot everything. So if you want to come over here and loot the Mind Flayer and grab, what is this, Bloodstone worth 40 gold. Gold will not matter very shortly once we get into the main game. You can go over here and loot some other junk. You're not going to need any of this stuff because my routing has it set up where you will have infinite money if you want. You will have more money than you will ever be able to spend very, very early on. So a lot of this, if you've played the game before, grabbing all this loot off the tables and stuff will be completely unnecessary. But you can do it if you want to. It, I'm, there's no harm in it. It's your time. It's your game. Play how, however you want. But this guide will not cover looting every single lootable object. That would turn a 7.5 hour Act 1 into a 40 hour Act 1. So the very first thing we're going to do on the Nautiloid is we're going to rescue us. And I'll, I'll show you who us is. And the reason why we rescue him is so that we can summon him later in the game. You won't be able to do this in Act 1. But I believe... Uh, act 3? or No, you see him in Act 2. I think you can get him in Act 2. I forget. It's been a while. But uh, we are going to rescue him, and so here's how to do it. We're going to proceed west through the sphincter. Gross. Look at it. It's a little butthole. Look at it. Just... <laughs> I know, right? Very gross. And then he's over here on the left. You see, with the tilde button, we can't see this entity, but with the tilde button, there it is. It's glowing. And you can just jump right up there as your priest. You have the jump ability, though there is... Um, there's an elevator here if you aren't playing priest. So here is us. We're going to talk to this character, and I'm going to skip the dialogue. This is not uh, This is not a... I'm not going to not skip the dialogue. That would make the video way too long. It's already going to be multiple hours long. And so we're going to see... Uh, tell me what to do. Choice number two. Blah, blah, blah. Do a strength check. You have 15 strength. Otherwise, if you're not playing priest or cleric... Do whatever you have the highest roll on. So if I mouse over Dexterity, Strength, and Investigation, you'll see that I have a minus one to Intelligence, but I have a plus two to Strength, or a nothing to Dex. So obviously this is the best choice for my character. So we're going to go ahead and roll. 
And uh, you have guidance, by the way. You see down here where it says add bonuses? This is free. You can cast this forever. It's a cantrip. You can always cast this. So every single time this appears, click it. And that's going to increase the odds that you win the roll. So there we go. We actually lost the roll. And uh, this uh, <laughs> might not play out as good. There we go. So continue talking to it. And we don't want to destroy it. So we actually failed getting us. So what we're going to do now is load our game. We made a quick save. If you're on honor mode, too bad you don't get us. But we're going to save scum. Yes, we are save scumming. If you're one of those holier than thou righteous gamers that doesn't like save scumming, well then just don't. It's your choice. But we're going to run back now until we pass the roll and you can make a quick save right before you get to us that is totally fine and so we're gonna do it again <laughs> because i like to have lots of summons on my healer later in the game and i don't want to miss out because he's a fun character to have so choice number two strength check and we're gonna add the bonus once again roll the dice there we go this time we passed it all right and i'm gonna skip the animation there and you don't want to mutilate it you want to spare the creature choice number two there you go and then let's say, all right, let's go. And there you go. You have us. He is now a party member. He is linked to us. He has only got four health, which kind of sucks. But uh, after that, we're going to proceed west, and we're going to get Lazel. Proceeding forward, we're going to go ahead and get Lazel. As soon as we go west here, it will trigger a cutscene where she flips into action, talks to us. I'm just doing choice number one here. And then we get to do our first fight with some of these uh, creatures. And depending, you know, it's always going to be different who goes first, but all you got to do is just run up and, and kill them. That's all you got to do. Just left click them. There you go. You can play around with combat if you want. And uh, I do recommend looting these because you can get a ranged weapon pretty early on. Also, experience is equally shared among everybody for the most part. So, uh, <laughs> again, uh, if you're playing solo, you don't just magically get more XP. All right. So I'm not within attack range, but I have that sacred flame cantrip and we didn't. We didn't kill it, but that's fine. If we take damage here, there is a station that can fully heal us and restore our spell slots. So feel free to go completely ham on these creatures if you want. I recommend that you at least get uh, the ones with the crossbow. So go ahead and loot the imps. And, uh, you know, just loot everything in this room. Hold alt key to see what... You definitely want to loot the void orb. You don't need it right now. Uh, I'm going to teach you later how to, you know... There we go. There's a light crossbow. Again, just grab everything. It's fine because we're going to just vendor it later. And what you want to do first thing is equip a light crossbow to your character. There we go. Now we have a ranged attack option. Now, if for whatever reason you're hurt or wounded, like you just missed a bunch and they got crits on you, all you got to do is click this little restoration pod right over here. And there you go. You get all of your spell slots back. So you can actually spend your spell slots right now if you want to. And uh, you can get them back. But you don't need to do this right now. Anyway, we're going to continue north and just pick up everything along the way on the dead bodies because you will want some early game gold for spending, uh, especially because it lets us grab a very powerful sword super early. And once we've climbed all the way up, we're going to continue east into this little sphincter here. And uh, another button that I forgot to mention earlier is the F key. You can switch between your melee weapon and your ranged weapon. So what this does is I have my ranged weapon selected here. And I can hold control, oh, there we go, and left click and just kill these cultists that are on the table. Just put them down. And they give 10 XP, so there's a, there's no reason not to kill them. And you can't really save them, there's, there's no really better thing you can do, unless you want to experience some story stuff. Go ahead and loot them, because why not? Also, the very first important thing to loot is over here next to, uh, this is Shadowheart, I'll talk about her later. But there is a Nautiloid tank, and you what you want to do is right click this and click pick up. And we're going to need that later on to cheese a boss. So from here, you can continue on. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a locked chest. You can pick this up and put it in your inventory and lock pick it and open it later. But it's got garbage in it. You don't need this. It's not worth the trouble. If you want some extra story bits in Act 2, I believe it's Act 2, you pick up this Dark Mind. Uh, go ahead and pick that up. And then again, we're going to proceed east into this sphincter. <laughs> oh man, I love these doors. They're so gooey. <laughs> <laughs> just just dive in head first, I mean. <laughs> Alright, make sure to loot the bodies. Don't attack any of the little brain creatures running around. If you do, us will get mad and he will leave your party and attack you. And we, we really want us later. 
So here we go, we got a chest, go ahead and yoink those, we got the slave mine, now you want to pick this up as well for some story bits later on, it's not going to, you know, keep you from any kind of important items. I'm going to pick up the dead thrall who has the elder rune. also very important, he has a candle, I want to teach you about candles, this is not really that useful later in the game, but the coolest thing about candles is you can put them on the ground and make sure they're lit up, so, you know, just left click them and, you know, make sure they're, they're lit up like so. And you can use the dip command and dip your weapon into it, and now you have one to four additional fire damage on all your attacks. And then you can just pick up the candle and put it back in your inventory. So now you have a permanent fire enchantment buff that you can apply anytime. Though, um, what you have to do is you have to apply it right before you get into a story fight. Because, again, um, it's only dipped in fire for one more turn and the fire's gone. So, I'm going to show you how to abuse that in just a bit. But for now, we uh, we picked up the slate. We're going to push this button here. And this is just useless story stuff. So, we're just going to skip through that. It's going to turn this person into a mind flare. And, again, not super important right now. But we do want to rescue Shadowheart. You don't have to, but I highly recommend it. Because she is going to help us earn a lot of starting XP points. Uh, and get a pretty good sword for Lazel. So we're going to talk to the, the pod here, and she's demanding that we let her out. I'm going to look for the latch that might open the lid. There we go. The pods, I can't free you. I found some sort of key. It might free you. There we go. So click this little thing here, and we're going to skip through that. There's a socket in the console. Now, I want to I want to teach you something here. Hold on. We're just going to place our hand on the console. This is, this is very important. This gets you a free passive later on whenever you see Ill illithid and wisdom in the same answer choice you can only do this once per day for long rest and what this does you want to do this at least once on every character that you plan to main and that way you don't have to spend a parasite worm later learning this ability so we're going to use illithid wisdom to will the pot open and uh, again it's a difficulty too but go ahead and guidance anyway just in case just in case you you fail the roll and skip 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 and there we go talk to Shadowheart she's up you know and uh, again you want to agree and be nice to your party members because if you're not they can permanently leave okay so uh, there we go we got uh, we got some XP for that and you know that's what we want to do early on we want to get the XP and from here we're going to proceed south now here's another thing too. push the k button on your keyboard i don't know what it is on consoles i'm sorry you'll have to figure that out on your own console people or push tab i'm sorry push tab go to spellbook and then on shadow heart you want to remove uh one of her spells and give her command this is important you need command for what we're going to be doing in just a little bit we're going to proceed through the sphincter once again here and uh now, what you can do here is you can buff everybody up and then use Restoration to get your spell slots back if you want to. It's not super necessary, but um, again, I'm not going to bother doing it because I am doing it on easier difficulty. If you're on Honor Mode, you definitely want to do this. I'm going to make a quick save also. Alright, so we're going to pre-buff before the fight for the Honor Mode players. And here's the spells you want to prepare on your characters. You want to have Guiding Bolt. This will make it easier to hit the enemies if it lands. Uh, you also want Command on both your Healer and Shadow Heart. You want Shadow Heart with Bless. Uh, that way it makes it easier for you to land attacks on the enemy we're about to face. And that's all you really, really need. And what we're going to do, we're going to switch to Shadow Heart by clicking her portrait. And then we're going to go here to the spells. And then we're going to go Bless. And then we're going to just click each of our main characters. We don't have to worry about us. There we go. Everything's blessed. Now we're going to switch to the main character here and go ahead and use the Restoration Pod to get that spell slot back. There's some fire on the ground. I did not mean to talk to her. Uh, we're going to dip our weapons real... Yes, yeah, we're nearing the, the boss fight. Dip your weapons into the fire. Uh, for Lazel, you don't really have to do this because we're going to get her a new weapon in this room. But for everyone else, you, you definitely want to do it. And then we're going to run as close as we can to the doorway here. And we're going to use our shift plus space bar. It's going to save for us, and that's fine. And then once everyone's real close to the door, we're going to enter turn-based mode, and then we're going to dash. So there we go. Dash on every single one of your characters. And what this is going to do is double our move speed, so when we enter combat, uh, we will be able to run up to the boss very easily. I'm also going to make a little save now. And then go ahead and enter the room. Alright, here we go. So I click the sphincter in turn-based mode. It's going to open, play a cutscene, 
we're gonna enter combat initiative again is totally random and our goal is to disarm as soon as possible we're going to disarm commander zalk and uh, also we have a few things to loot we have these two or three nautiloid tanks uh there are void bulbs uh on there's a table up here where there's some void bulbs we want we want to grab as well as um caustic things uh, and, and try to loot everything along the way. So, again, as I move, I'm just going to open and then loot. Go up here. Talk to this thing. Loot it. Again, loot everything. And we're also going to kill everything for the XP. So, we're going to go ahead and have Lazel kill this. Let it fully die. And then go ahead and loot it. Run up. Loot it. And, again, our move speed is very high because we have dash active. We also have bless active. And there we go. That's her turn. Uh, you, there's not really any bonus action we can make with her. And then, let's see if this hits. You can have some real bad RNG here. So, uh, honor mode, this might not always be possible. Because you're limited in spell slots. Uh, have us kill the mobs. Just have moss be on trash clear. Us can't loot, though. So have, again, put us close to the enemy so that they are threatened and can't move freely without, uh, a reaction happening. So we've looted basically everything on this way. And, uh... We're going to run up to the boss now, and we're going to do command, drop, and that's going to drop this guy's weapon. It's not the highest percent chance to succeed, but we have like four chances to do it. So here we go. And weapon dropped. That's what we want. There's the Everburn Blade. We're going to pick that up and immediately give it to Lazel to, you know, beat down this enemy with. It also dramatically drops his DPS. As a bonus action, there's not much I can do. Don't, do not buff the Mind Flayer on easier difficulties. You don't need him alive. But you do want to last hit him for XP. Alright, so here we go. It is now uh, <laughs> Shadowheart's turn. Because he's already dropped his weapon, she doesn't have to command him anymore. There's no reason to do it. But you do want to hit him with Guiding Bolt. That's going to make it easier to hit from now on. And it missed. And that's fine. Whatever. It happens. Alright, and he was not close enough to put him in Threatened. But that's fine. All right, so it is now Lazel's turn, and <laughs> Lazel needs to run up immediately grab the Everburn Blade. Immediately grab it. Now, she can't reach it, so I should have dashed, but whatever. It's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, she can shoot with a ranged weapon, though. There we go. All right, we'll grab it next turn, <laughs> unless he, he, he picks it back up. I've never seen the AI pick it back up, though. But there's another thing we can do also, because I believe we have a turn coming up. And us, the brain that you control, will kill all the ads. That's fine. But do not go too far up here. And again, move us towards a Commander Zalk. Well, End your turn. So much for peace. All right, so my main character, it's very important that you get the weapon as soon as possible with whoever. Now that my main character here has looted the blade, we're going to open the inventory. And we're just going to equip it to Lazel. There we go. Or at least, well, I guess we can't because it's not her turn. So that's fine. Let's try to hit him with a Guiding Bolt. 36% chance, and it's at disadvantage because I'm next to him. I should have cast it first. It's fine. It's totally fine. Try to get that Guiding Bolt on him. All right, we, f we got it. So Guiding Bolt for two turns, it's now easier to hit this guy. And we're also going to run up to him, and uh, we're just going to start pounding on him. When we kill Commander Zalk, he's worth a lot of XP because he is level 8. All right, it is now Lizel's turn. Now we can equip that sword. So that, that, that takes your action. It sucks, but it happens. But we can run up behind him, and we can pommel strike him for now. And uh, again, uh, <laughs> you're, we're just going to wail on him now. And we have a pretty strong weapon to do it with. So let's go ahead and start, start slashing and smacking. Now, we have a limited amount of turns to kill both of these characters, right? While looting these tanks and escaping and looting a few other things. But we're going to make sure we get it done. Alright, so just sit back and uh, enjoy. Now, I'm going to be uh, using melee, not ranged, uh, up close. And we're just going to pound on him. I have no more spell slots. So there we go. Just uh, smack him down. And that's all we're doing. Just uh, give him the old beat down. And if our Mind Flayer friend gets some crits or some hits in, it, it makes it way faster. But Lazel, she's going to hit really hard when she does hit. There we go. 13 damage. And uh, it's very nice. And then he hit for 16, so that's good. He's also stunned. And again, we're just having a good time. Uh, if you get a really, if you get really unlucky rolls and miss all of your attacks, you it's, you really need to get this guy killed. It, you might have to reload, but it, that almost never happens. So again, just wail away. 
All right. There we go. Now, that it sucks whenever he dodges Lazel. That's not fun. And it also sucks when he dodges the Mind Flayer. But we can we can take him down. Where do I go from here? Just, uh, <laughs> just keep at it. We got plenty of time. 11 turns remaining. Very important you kill this guy. He is an XP bomb early on. You absolutely want to start the game at level 2. It really makes things easier. And that's another miss from Lazel. <laughs> But, uh, hey, at least the Mind Flayers land in those hits. Alright, so we got him down to two. Or, or, not down to two, we did two damage. Now, also, we don't want the Mind Flayer to land the Killing Blow either. Um, though, I'm not, I'm, I don't remember. So, I'm actually gonna attack the Mind Flayer here. Uh, because we want to kill the Mind Flayer at some point. So, that's 16, Mind Flayer's at 2 HP. But we don't want Commander Zok to kill the Mind Flayer either, but... Alright, we do get XP for for the Mind Flayer killing him, and now we can just kill the Mind Flayer. Maybe. He doesn't dodge the whole time. So... Yeah, he's gonna dodge the whole time. And, um... <laughs> um, he does an opportunity attack if I, uh, run away, so I'm just gonna chill here. And then... Bash him. There we go. Alright, we did it. Now, uh... Shadow Heart is going to go down here and grab this tank, if we can, pick up. Nope, not in range, that's fine. So these two Cambians, they start, they, they come in, and they're going to really mess us up if they attack, because these guys are high level too. They're hard to kill. We could kill them, but they're not worth the XP or the time, and you don't even bother in higher difficulties. Now, we want to take Lazel, and we want to do something special, and I'm going to explain in a bit why we're doing this. Besides... Picking up these Nautiloid tanks, which she can carry both. They're kind of heavy, but hey, she's a strong girl, right? And uh, we're just going to end her turn here. That's fine. Now, us, you don't want us to die. So I'm just going to... Uh, don't run too far up here yet. That's going to trigger more enemies. So I'm just going to hide with us and sneak over here. That's fine. No choice but For the main going. character, we do want to go over to this table and grab these Void Bulbs and the Caustic Bulbs. We got plenty of turns, so that's going to trigger the cutscene. That's totally fine, because our main character can make it. I also forgot to dash, so let's... Well, it's too late now. Nice. Maybe not. Go ahead and grab those void bulbs. And the, it's a little iffy sometimes if you can grab it. It does eat up your movement. All right, so that ends his turn. And then we pick up the Nautiloid tank there. And then we loot the dead thrall. And again, we don't have to... like. There's a void bulb over here. You don't have to grab it. We're just going to run up and kill these remaining enemies. We got eight turns to do it. And uh, I should have dashed with her again. I should have dashed. It does, it's not a big deal. It's fine. It's We're totally fine. All right. The Cambians can fly, by the way. And they can. They have a lot of move. They have a lot of move. They can fly around. And uh, what we're going to do with Lazelle, and uh, this is going to be really weird. We're going to jump her to her death by jumping her in one of these holes. And sometimes the aim, the aiming is a little weird. Maybe we have to move... Yeah, there's chasms there. We can't jump on the left hole holes anymore. It says blocked? Oh, yeah, there's a guy down there. You can't loot him, though. Uh, so we're, we're actually going to dash over this way. Uh, we want to fall into the chasm and die. As Lazelle, this lets us skip a cutscene. It lets us get her earlier than intended. And I'll, I'll explain later. If, if you don't manage to do it, it's okay. It's fine. All right, we don't want to jump. We want to dash, and we're going to run. We're just going to run. We want to run from the Cambians. We do not want us to get killed at all. These guys should not kill us. He's, he's too tanky at this point. He's fine. Uh, they're going to run up and beat on him, though. And then our character here. Again, we're just going to kill. We're just going to kill the enemies along the way. There we go. So that's an enemy down. Swift as my feet. Run up here now. And uh, in turn. Shadowheart uh, can do the same thing. We're going to dash, though. We want to get, you know, a little bit closer. And yes, there are some chests up here with uh, a few potions and whatnot. They're not worth getting. It's just a big waste of time. All right. And um, go ahead and intern there. All right. We got, uh, you know, things attacking. It's fine. These guys should not kill Lazel. If, if Lazel gets down, and it happens if she gets a bunch of crits, which they might do... It's, it's okay. We can just get her normally. And she's still alive. Good, 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 good. She's, we're gonna, we're gonna use her, her second wind here and heal. Cause they're gonna attack of opportunity whenever, um, she moves. But we want to jump into the chasm. We, we, we're wanting to die. I know. 
Come on, jump in the chasm. Did they- they didn't patch this, did they? Surely they didn't. <laughs> well, it looks like they uh, just put a patch out a day ago, and it's not in the patch notes, but I literally can't get Lazel to jump into these holes and die anymore. And we do need her to kill Commander Zalk and get the sword. So, uh, that exploit was fixed, but essentially it let you start the game with Lazel in your party as soon as you drop down. So, it's fine. Uh, just, uh, we'll just get her normally. Go to the transponder, trigger the cutscene, and I'll see you on the beach. Once you've spawned on the beach, head north, and you're gonna awaken Shadow Heart. Go ahead and get her into your party, and, you know, just pick the right answer choices. Just be nice to her, you know, invite her. You know, just talk to her like a normal person. And there we go. She's in the party. All right. And also, we are now level two. And I'll go over... Uh, well, right now, everyone's default. We're not doing anything special or fancy with leveling. So, the cleric level. Oh, boy. We got some new abilities. Prepare spells. We're, we're not going to be using any spells for a little bit. And then, Shadow Heart, also a cleric. And again, we're just going with the default, whatever. Nothing special yet. I'll make note of it when we do anything specific with these characters, but uh, while running along the northeast, just feel free to loot some stuff, but there is one important thing that you do want to loot, and uh, we're just going to pick that up. I'm not going to pick up any kind of junk like that because it's only worth one, but feel free to run around and loot some bodies if you want. Now, here's something very important. Right down here, uh, northwest, there is a backpack, and I'm going to teach you about coordinates right now. So, if I move the camera right here, you see my cursor circling over this part of the map here? You'll see an X and a Y. So I'm at X278, Y245. This backpack is very important for a, a vendor exploit we're going to use later. So go ahead and just loot everything in the backpack or don't. I'm going to throw that hat on the ground because I don't want it. Right click the backpack and pick, pick up. Now you'll notice that the backpack is in our inventory, and we don't want to lose this. This is our key to yoinking everything off of a vendor. Very, very important. From here, you can go north and loot if you want. I'm going to head northwest, and uh, again, just grab some stuff along the way. I'll grab the fish, and uh, for bottles, uh, regular bottles, don't need them. But if this is a grease bottle, definitely want that. And loot is randomized on these corpses. Like, it's... it's not always absolute and we have a couple brain dudes over here and what we're gonna do is uh, they're gonna they're gonna sc scamper off there but uh, I'm gonna teach you a, a really cheesy way to fight them and that is have your party enter stealth and then use control left click while you have your ranged weapon selected and you can get a few free hits before they initiate combat and this is gonna be heavily abused by Asterion and later in the game but right now we're just gonna fire and that one's dead so we start combat with one of them already dead sometimes they don't detect our presence and we could shoot another one and another one it really depends uh but it will get easier especially in act two where it will constantly be free you'll never have to waste time going into turn-based mode and uh there we go so we're just gonna go ahead and smash them down there we go got a lucky crit there i'm gonna go ahead and clear these now, another Nautiloid tank, and go ahead and pick that up. Now, I will mention I didn't pick up two of them on the ship because I save scummed and then I forgot to do it. It's not a big deal if you don't. It's just, it's helpful later the more you have, and we're going to have plenty. And you want to make sure to loot the Dead Mind Flayer because Potion of Speed is amazing. It's a super powerful early game buff, and uh, these chests, again, random loot. Uh, but yeah, make sure you loot the Dead Mind Flayers that are right around here. You can look at my coordinates. Uh, if you want to match, if you're not able to find them. But all, always, one of these Mind Flayers will have a Speed Potion. Very important. We're going to continue southwest through here. This is what it looks like on the map. We started down here. We kind of looped around. That's where we're going. And we're just checking stuff along the way. You should get a, 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 a lockpick kit in one of these crates. There it is. Thieves Tools. This one's always empty. Oh, no, it's got water this time. It's always been empty on my tests. And uh, you'll have a lock trunk here. Well, you can bash that down, so we're just going to bash that open, and then we have a leather helmet and some gold. Leather helmet, you can just put it on whoever. It's not super important. I'm going to give it to Asterion here in just a bit. We're going to continue northwest up the path and uh, just continue along. We're not going to go this way yet. We're, we're going to go there shortly, but here is Asterion, and we definitely want Asterion, most powerful character in the game right here. And uh, he's going to tell us to attack a boar, but he's going to attack us. 
and we're just gonna talk to him, and we're all chill, we're friends now, My and, uh, so, there we go. Well, yes, you know. All right, so now we have Asterion, and then we're just gonna, again, he's gonna be default as well for just a little bit. So, level two, Asterion, very cool. Now, one thing that I like to, to do and that you should get into good practice of is inventory management. So, items should be sent to their respective people, right? And so, to do that, I'm going to switch to the main character, and then I'm going to do sort by type. And what we're going to do is we're going to send the Thieves tools and the Trap Disarm kit to Asterion, because that's what he is going to be used for. All of these extra weapons and stuff, we're going to send to camp, and then again, send this helmet to Asterion. Send all this sellable junk to camp. We're going to pull it out here in just a little while. Uh, send all of that to camp. Send that to camp. Uh, water's useful for throwing. The candle's useful. These are all throwing weapons. We're going to keep these in our inventory. And then steering, you can put on that little helmet there. There you go. I know, right? And uh, yeah, we're all, we're all set. So what we're going to do now is we're going to backtrack where that boar is. And we're actually oh, no, going to uh, kill the boar. It's, uh, it's, it's not really, it's a little bit of food early on. It's a little bit of money. It's a little bit of XP. It, it doesn't change anything. I, I've massively looked this up. I've played through the whole game multiple times. Killing this boar does not change the fate of anything. And, uh, we're just gonna smack him. Now, uh, I could just use a Sterian to stealth snipe him here. Uh, well, I shouldn't be using range attack there. But we killed him, and then we loot his meat. There we go. All right. Next up, okay, let's end combat. We're going to, uh, we're going to learn how to separate our party here. And you're going to push the G key and separate the party so they don't follow you. Because sometimes the AI bugs out and gets stuck. And we're going to go west down this little coastline where we killed the boar. And jump across the water here. There we go. And there's a rock here. Let's see if we pass the perception check. Nature failed. Nope, okay, well. Should have brought Shadow Heart then. <laughs> uh, Asteria does not have good jump. Uh, that is the first time I've ever failed that. It is, it is a very beginner check. But yeah, we're just going to jump across and... Really, really? Okay, well, I'm saving. Because there are two speed potions down there. Asterion should be able to make the jump. He is our weakest jumper in the party. And normally, I just hop down here with Lazel, but I guess they fixed it, or I can't do that anymore. Oh, I guess you could just walk across. You don't have to jump. And, yeah... <laughs> <laughs> There's two speed potions under this rock. You left click and you move it, and then you loot it, and it's two speed potions. It's some nice starter cash. Listen, these potions are very powerful, so I don't recommend that you skip this. So yes, I did save Scum it. I'm gonna roll I'm gonna roll it again. This breaks the early game getting these speed potions. That's why it's in the guide. It's the most optimal route. And there we go, they all succeeded this time. Okay. So now we can move the rock. And then there's a little chest there. And speed potions. So I'm going to grab these. And I don't need to read the notes. You can if you want. It just uh, it adds a little stash that you can grab. You don't need it because we already have uh, what it gives. So there we go. Now I'm going to backtrack and proceed north. Which I'll have to have everyone jump back up the cliff here. There we go. All right, and you got to make sure sometimes the AI will not jump with you. They, 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 they just won't follow. They'll just stay there. So from where we grabbed Asterion, we're going to proceed northwest, curving around back into one of these Nautiloid crash sites. There is a Mind Flayer on the ground. This is your first game over moment if you, <laughs> you talk to him wrong. Just shoot him. Whatever. We don't need to talk to him. And then uh, go ahead and loot him. There we go. And then we're going to proceed north east now i would make a save here just in case you fail the rolls but um once you uh, go northeast you're gonna have like some steps up to your left here to the north and then a path with some dead goblins uh southeast so now we're gonna turn southeast loot the gobbos there we go and once we've done that we're gonna see a ancient sigil circle here and we're gonna go ahead and talk to that and that is gale now, one thing I didn't mention at the start of the guide video is that we use we do use Gale, but not in our party. So if you want Gale in your party, it's going to make things a little more difficult. Anyway, so uh, my character is strength-based, but we also have Cleric Wisdom, uh, which is plus three, plus two. So Wisdom, let's go ahead and just kind of do that. There we go. Critical success. All right, so we got Gale out. 
And then we're just going to talk to him. You know, be nice to Gale. He's very sensitive. Um, and I'm going to tell you exactly how not to lose him later on. And uh, there we go. So he's going to join, but we're not going to use him in combat, so don't bother leveling him up or anything right now. Uh, we can actually use him to... <laughs> Uh, reset a vendor by leveling him up, which we don't need to do, but you can do it. All right, from here, we're going to, again, make a safety save. And now we can get Lazel, um, which is uh, right up here into the north, and then continue north. And then we have the tieflings here that have uh, got her to cage somehow. I don't know how they caged that woman, but boy, oh boy, they got lucky there. And uh, so we're going to use deception here. It's pretty easy to pass. And you can use friends if you're on easier difficulty. It doesn't matter. It's it's not a big deal, all right. And there we go. So, all right. So they're gonna they're gonna mosey off. And then you gotta wait until they walk away. But if you immediately attack her cage, they might aggro, which sucks. Um, so just kind of let them mosey off here. All right, there they go. And you're gonna just use a ranged attack on uh, the bottom of her cage here and pop her out. Might take a few hits. There we go, we got Lazel, and Lazel is our main carry for Act 1. She is the powerhouse, and you're going to see why later. Because we're going to get her a sword that you're not supposed to get this early. And we've already done that, but we're going to get her another sword. Alright, and she's, you know, talking about the crash and getting a cure. Alright, this is funny. Dismiss your weakest warrior. So we're going to go to Gale and dismiss him. We're going to tell him to wait in the camp. And we got we to gotta do a little dialogue check there. And then I need you to remain in the camp, the and then decision, perhaps we'll travel together again. together again later. There we go. Now we can get Lazel, and I would like you to join me. There you go. All right, a crush is near, and then level her up. Now Lazel's the only person we won't be respecting until Act Two ish, uh, because we need some gear to really get her build started. But she's already powerful. She's got action action surge. She is the strongest person, especially with. Uh, the uh, Everburn Blade that she's got here. Huge damage. We are set to go. From here, you're going to go directly west. And there's a little cart here. Just go around it. It doesn't matter which direction you go around it. I'm going to go to the right. Don't go too far to the right now because that'll trigger cutscene. Or just walk over this hill. And there is a shovel here. So we're going to go ahead and grab the shovel. And you don't need four shovels. You can. But uh, we're just going to pick it up. And you can now dig up dirt mounds. Uh, so there you go. That, there's plenty of shovels scattered throughout the game. You can also buy them. But these are random loots. Uh, they're not included in the guy. But go ahead and just grab them when you see them. From here, you're going to head directly east, but curving the right side. So just be kind of careful here. And you're going to curve the rightmost side. You don't want to get too far to the left. Because you could trigger the cutscene. The, the, there's a fight that we're. It's, it, it's an easy fight because we get a we get a buff and uh, it's it's free XP. So when you get waypoint discovered, I would make a safety save just in case. And we're gonna backtrack now. We're gonna go. Uh, what direction is this? This is southwest. Okay. Now you have a little path that leads up to here. And what you want to do is get a little bit behind these rocks. So right about here, we're gonna position our characters. And uh, this is the point where we could throw a candle down and dip our weapons, but we don't really need to do that. I'm going to enter turn-based mode, and we're going to make everyone dash. There we go. So everyone's dashing, and then kind of line them up here just like this. Uh, get a stare and get him dashing. There we go. And Lazelle, get her dashing. Of course, of course, of course. And uh, now we're going to just kind of inch your way up a bit. I forget the cutoff point. I think it's this, this secondary dirt mound. But we're going to move everyone up as close as we can, and I think that's close enough. Let's trigger the cutscene. There we go. So there's a uh, there's a little goblin fight that's uh, about to happen right in front of us. We're going to skip the little cutscene there, and there we go. We, uh, we start the fight right next to a goblin, which is great. So uh, just kill them with range, kill them with melee. It doesn't matter. These are really easy enemies, and by the way, because we're dashing, uh, we have so much movement to start the fight with and uh, just have at it have fun so i like to loot these as i go it doesn't take your action or anything and i also like to send weapons and armor to camp i don't loot the like useless crap but uh again with all this move speed you can move so so far and uh we didn't really give uh shadow heart a ranged weapon but she has firebolt so you can just firebolt somebody on her turn all right, so after the fight, there's one important thing you want to loot from the goblin boss, but you do want to loot all of them. 
And you want to loot Gloves of Power to Asterion, and that's just going to help him uh, just a little bit early on with some log picking and a few other things. And uh, again, you want to send all the, all the weapons and all the armor to camp, because we're going to be vendoring those pretty shortly here, and we definitely want the early boost in income. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up, and there we go. Once you've looted the goblins, head north into the town, and this is where we're going to do our first vendoring. Now, there's there's a lot to do here, but we're going to come back and do most of it later. It's not important right now. We can skip this. Now, here's a fun thing. In this little cutscene, if you don't intervene, uh, which uh, I'm just going to, you know, skip here, you can stand back and watch. This will knock out Zevlor, and... Uh, if you want, you can now lockpick him for some gloves, but we're going to get those gloves later. It can it, it can just kind of screw things up, like someone might witness you, and, uh, like, I would if you're going to pickpocket him now, save Scummit, but, um, you can get some early healer glove buffs, but we're not going to need that because we're going to use Gale later to be basically resistant to everything. Now, while you're in town, there's a few things of important to note here. Whenever you see a crate, as long as the icon is a golden color like this... It is not considered stealing, so we can take all this freely. This is ours to take if we wanted, right? Whereas if an icon is red, like this damaged vase, that is stealing, that is trespassing, that is criminal activity. You do not want to click on the red icons, only the golden ones. So, you know, be careful about that. But I'm going to show you how we're going to do the vendoring here. So, uh, you want, before you ever talk to the vendor, you want to make a little safety save. And uh, because when you talk to him, that's when it rolls the items. Also, it rerolls items every time you level a character up near them. We're now going to click this bottom right button and go to camp. And we're going to uh, do a little bit of inventory ma management here, which I've kind of done off camera. But we're going to combine everyone's gold onto the main characters. And then we're going to go. And there was a ping, which pings the camp chest. This is called the Traveler's Chest. It'll be right over here on the southwest side. So we're going to go ahead, and this is where everything that we've looted so far, I'm going to click this top left button, click uh, sort it by type, grab this bottom right button, and drag it all the way down. And then I'm going to just left click this first item, and then everything I want to sell, which is all of this stuff, I'm going to, uh, well, I, I left click this item, and then I hold shift and left click this item to select all of these. Then I'm going to pick it up, and I don't want to sell the dark mines, I, I do want to sell these gems. I can control and left click to... Pick which ones I want, right? And then we can pick those up as well, and then I can resort. And this is this is some colored dye. You start the game with this. I don't know if your version of the game will have this or not, but it's it, it's it's not really important. And uh, I should have more nautiloid tanks, but it's fine. We're going to have plenty of explosives. And then I'm going to leave camp, and now I'm just going to sell everything here. And our main character is our high charisma character. So uh, this is the one that we're going to be talking to Aaron with. A Aaron. Uh, what are you selling? What are you selling? And then I'm going to switch to barter mode because it's just easier to hit barter mode. And then I'm just going to throw everything into the trade window here. There we go. Just left clicking, double left clicking everything that I'm wanting to sell and get rid of. Which is all. This is a regular bottle. And there we go. So we have 700. Well, he doesn't have 700 worth of stuff. Uh, but we do have his 513 here. Also, he has a potion of speed. That's very nice. I'm going to go ahead and get that too. We don't need to buy the heals. He's got a, these arrows of ill matters. Uh, those are okay. Uh, definitely want those. Uh, we're going to use those later. And Let's see. We're still a little short. Uh, he doesn't really have anything else too useful to us. Uh, let's check the scrolls. Anything good here? And um, no, nothing really too useful. Uh, oh, oh the, the arrows of ice. Yeah, we want the arrows of ice. And the Roaring Thunders, yes, yes. Okay, so we're short nine gold, okay. Uh, well, that's fine. We're just going to have to put one of these back. So we'll just put both back, and then I'm just going to add item. Just add one, one for now. That's fine. 681 barter. There we go. So we sold all the stuff we've looted thus far. We've got a nice chunk of change. We got some good starting gifts. Uh, now, these arrows we're going to use way later on, but they will be used. And these potions of speed will be used as well. So there we go. We did our first vendoring. Gonna go ahead and save now. Now, this is something a lot of players can miss. Because uh, if you proceed a certain way, this vendor won't exist. And it's very important that we get these early items. So we're gonna go west from Aaron. Or Aaron. And then we're gonna curve north. Down this little slope here. 
and yeah, there's a lot going on. It's, you know, you, you you can pause the video and talk to everyone if you want. It's totally fine. Little meeper, little rat there. And uh, you have Auntie Ethel. All right, so Auntie Ethel, she's a sweet old thing. Oh, sweet old lady. Yeah, anyway, we're just going to skip the dialogue, and uh, I'm just here to trade. Nay bother. And she's got two very important items that we're going to want immediately to be able to get one of the better swords in the game. The Potion of Invisibility and the Elixir of Hill Giant Strength. All right, I'm going to buy all of these because they're insanely useful. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna pay gold for him. 217 down the hatch. And there we go. We have secured our very powerful potions. Take care, Take care now, sweetie. And, uh, we're gonna give, uh, these to Lazelle. And she's gonna use them in just a little while. Uh, I'm actually gonna split the, uh, just, just one for now. Just go ahead and give her one of those. And there we go. So we've got 472 gold. Pretty good to start. Alazel's got the core components to grab a very powerful sword. And, uh, gonna go ahead and do a little save here. And you don't have to do this step, but if you talk to Okla here, she'll give you some porridge. Uh, take a bowl, and then switch characters, and take a bowl with every character. This is just an early healing item, which you don't really need. I'm gonna teach you how to scum heals later. There's so many different ways to cheat heals. And we have two healers in the party anyway, right? But, uh, this, this gruel will trigger an amulet that Asterion will get later, which will give him poison damage, or uh, acid damage, so, some kind of, I forget the damage type. But uh, go ahead and just everyone hand off their gruel to Asterion. He loves the stuff. He, he's going he's gonna to learn to love it, okay? And we don't want it in the camp supply, we want it in his inventory, because gruel, when consumed, heals 3 to 12. And uh, we, we don't care about the healing aspect, we just care that it's going to proc an amulet later on that we're going to go ahead and grab. Now, we have one more thing to, to buy here, and we're going to curve uh, north. We're going to go just, just directly, like, west here to this guy, Damon. And uh, yeah, he's, he's right across the road from Auntie Ethel. I'm going to talk to Damon. Damon, let me see your wares. And he's got a little shield here called the Safeguard Shield. We're going to buy that, and uh, I'm not going to buy it with Lazel. I'm going to... Here's the thing. Lazel's not good. Her persuasion is bad. And, you know, I'm paying 5% extra. Let's close the inventory. I didn't want to talk to him with Lazel. Talk to him with your, your, your healer character. Your healer is your talker. All right, he's, he's the smooth guy. Let me see your wares. Now we pay 43% less. It's not a big deal. Money's not a big deal. Now we only pay 77. See, it's better to, to be a smooth talker. There we go. 77 gold down the hatch. We now have this safeguard shield. And we're going to go ahead and just uh, throw that on Shadowheart. Give her a little gift, you know. I give her a little kiss on the forehead and send that sh her send her old shield to camp. We'll vendor that later, and uh, we're gonna give uh, we're gonna give, give the arrows to Asterion for now because he's gonna be our range guy. But we're gonna be using these arrows on everybody. Uh, so there we go. A little inventory management. We're all set, ready to go. So now we're going to curve around uh, northeast here. Just curve right around the corner here. And hey, remember that guy earlier in the fight? This is Will. He's he's the main story character. And we're going to go ahead and get him in the party. So he's doing little tradey trains with the tieflings. And then, oh no, we got break the brain worms. And uh, yeah, let's join forces. Go to my camp and wait. There you go. He's going to run off. And uh, you can go ahead and strip him of his stuff if you want. We're not going to be using him. He is, uh, he is food for hysteria. <laughs> That's all we use them for, but you can use them as a buff bot later. Anyway, so now we're gonna go east. We're gonna curve around east and don't talk to any of the children. Do not let me catch you talking to these kids. It is very important that you never, never, never talk to these kids. Not right now. You can talk to them later, but do not initiate a conversation with them now. You will mess up a very important item. We're going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, uh, this guy transforms into a bear. We're going to walk up, and I'm just going to do, if it weren't for me, you'd be overrun by goblins. So get out of the way, and make a save here, because you can screw this up, okay? This is Volo, and uh, he'll disappear on you if you're not careful. He he'll go, he'll, he'll disappear. It sometimes glitches. That's why we saved. So we're going to talk to Volo, and immediately, we're going to just... Let him talk a little bit. As soon as this button in the bottom left lights up, it says trade right down here. We're going to click that trade button and make sure you're talking with your cleric. He's got a little ring called the Whispering Promise. We're going to buy that. And it's 56. We got the money. We definitely have the money. There you go. 56. Go and you can get, uh, if you don't have the money for some reason, sell, sell a scroll. These Revivifies, they're infinite. Trust me on this. 
by the ring and on your healer the ring goes because this thing is going to give you a bonus to attack and saving throws this is called um bless uh this is this gives you bless so the, you don't have to cast bless anymore when you heal someone with a potion or regular healing you now bless them for two turns it's great it's, it's totally amazing also, check his scrolls if anything is really good. Doesn't like you won't have good stuff at this low level, but it's always good to check. Anyway, we're just gonna talk to him just a little bit, and I'm just gonna fill his story full of whatever. It doesn't matter. We just wanna, you know, just talk to him, exhaust his dialogue, and he's gonna. He, he said he's gonna go off to the goblin camp. From here, we're going to turn around and go east through this little gate here. Remember, here's the bear. We just walked past. He's a little spooky bear, and then to the east is a gate. We're going to go through the gate, and we're going to curve south. And you're going to make a safety save here, but I think they made this easier. It used to be hard in the beta, but now it's easy. All right, and we're going to talk to this Alfira girl. There we go. If you're the Dark Urge, uh, this ends badly, I think. I, I don't remember. But uh, we're going to go ahead and just talk to her. Are you all right? Uh, let me see if I can help. And then hand me that loot. We can perform together. And we just need to pass two skill checks. We're going to go performance, and then we're going to add guidance, and we're going to see if we pass this. If you don't, it's okay. It's okay if you don't pass. You get to try again. Okay, don't use it. Never, ever roll again unless you're on honor mode. Because once these stack to four, they all become bonus XP. So we're going to continue, and she's going to be like, uh, why don't we try again? Yeah, what? and then hit performance, continue. And then we'll, we'll hit her with the friends. There we go. Now we, we won. We got to win, I believe, one more, possibly. Sorry. Anyway, no, we don't. That's all we needed to pass is the second roll. So blah, blah, blah. So here's what just happened. And uh, she gave us her loot. Lila's loot. So there we go. We now have a musical instrument. But more importantly, we just spent, we just earned 15 years of, ex of musical expertise here. Let me show you what I mean. You go to your character sheet. And you go to your healer. That's me, Soul Bidgey on YouTube. You go to your third tab here, detailed view. I am now proficient in musical instruments. This may not sound like it's that important, but it is because this allows you to lure and group entities and move them around without using illusion or summon a little kitty cat to meow. It's just a way to move creatures around. Now, if you're wondering, there's a little chest over here. It's got a little uh, bard hat, so if you're playing a bard, grab that. But we're not playing a bard, and well, we're, we're going to play one at the end of the game. We're going to have a level 6 bard at the end of the game, but not until Act 3. Not until we have the right gear for it. Alright, from here, we're going to start waypoint warp warping. So push Elm and open your map, and then we're going to click that waypoint that we grabbed earlier. It's going to teleport our whole party. There we go. We're then going to travel southwest along the path here. Oh boy. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little thing you can do on the bonus on the side here, but we don't need it. And then we're going to curve up uh, northwest here. Here's all the goblins we killed earlier. Here's the gate to the town. We're going to continue along this path from the town. See? Uh, we're going to go west. And there's a little doorway here. And let's see... Uh, Let's make sure someone at least sees this doorway. And we saw it, okay. If someone doesn't see the doorway, load game. Okay, because we need to get in there later. And then we're going, at this little point, those little crossroads, we're going to turn and go north. And there's some people here. And I'm going to I'm gonna save because uh, we're going to do a little bit of double dipping. And uh, people up ahead. this isn't quite an evil action. It, I would say it's a chaotic neutral one, maybe. Anyway, they got some people... Going on, we're just gonna skip the dialogue, and um, you can you don't you can say what happened to your friend, and then you want to hold the stare. There we go, we're holding the stare, we're staring them down. We're big Chad. <laughs> All right, so they want orders, and we're going to say you need to find the beast and avenge your brother. What? So this gets approval from your party members. That's why we said that. We we don't care about the beast. We're not killing the beast. You can if you want. Now, as soon as dialogue ends, you're going to hold shift and push spacebar. So, shift spacebar. Oh, did they, did they wait. Did they patch it? Okay, so normally we would kill them. It's okay if you don't. It's okay if you don't. Um, <laughs> normally, they you see them run off. But uh, it's just free XP. It's not like they don't have any good gear. Make sure you loot this guy. Something special is going to happen here. Strange power resonates within the corpse. It calls to you. Hit this choice. Let your body guide you. Welcome the tadpole's influence. There we go. 30 XP. Go ahead and loot him again. 
Uh, grab the gold and the food. You don't need to grab the shaft of the broken spear unless you want to do that side quest. It's not worth doing. But these two, they're not really worth anything. There we go. On to the next part. Now we're going to proceed back down south. Doesn't matter if you loop around or not. It, it, again, it matters not. And we're going to cross the bridge here. Also, um, <laughs> your characters will walk in twisting vines sometimes. It happens. It's whatever. Okay. You can loot stuff along the way. It's just some, it's just some basic things. I'm going to go ahead and do it because a normal player would do it. Get some potatoes. Man, those sound good right now. And uh, that was a gemstone. I'm going to send that to camp. I don't care about the cutlery. And uh, again, I, I really I keep a tidy inventory, man, because it can get out of control if you don't. You, you want to get in a good habit. All right. And then carrots. And what we got here, again, some, the loot's random. Don't talk to, don't worry about these people. If you're evil, don't kill these people. You were gonna kill them later, when they have better gear. Or don't, if you kill them now, they have crappier gear. Don't loot, uh, some of these, like, you can't loot the adventurers, but you can loot the goblins. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, send that to camp. And this goblin here, and he's got, you can look at the drawing if you want. I just sent it to camp, I don't know why. Uh, misclick, whatever, it doesn't matter. And uh, we're going to go to these gates. And we're going to loot the tiefling in the backpack. And But we're not going to go in. We're not going to go in. Let's see, there's the backpack, loot that. And if you didn't pick up the backpack earlier, you can pick up this one. It works the same. And we're going to make a save, because this next part we can mess up. We're going to actually, we're not going in here. We're going to turn and go north, down the little forest road. Look at those god rays shining on the dirt. And yeah, uh, there's those two people we talked to earlier. If you want to kill them now, you can't. It, you don't need to. You don't. That's a side quest with an owl bear. You're not. You're not. You're not level up enough to fight that thing, unless you're playing on easy mode. Okay, so here is Scratch, and we want to recruit Scratch because we can summon him later as you know, as a character. Do not touch this body. Do not loot it. Talk to Scratch. I'll tell you what to say. Okay. We made a save in case we fail the roll. So he's going to bark at us. We're going to hit sidestep him to get to the corpse. And he's going to growl. Then we're going to hit perception. Peer at his collar. You should be good at this if you, you're following my healer build. We got guidance. We got a bunch of stuff. There we go. Let's roll it. We did it. All right. So we know his name is Scratch. We're going to say, it's all right, Scratch. I'm not going to hurt you. And then we're going to say, you're all right, Scratch. And then we're going to say, come on, Scratch. Follow me. And then we're going to say, hold out your hand. We're not going to say it. We're going to hold out our hand so he can follow our scent to camp. And there you go. That is Scratch. Do not touch this body. Even though it's no longer red, don't touch it. S scratch no likey. You can come back later and loot it. There's nothing good on it anyway. From here, we're going to proceed north. And the AI really hates this spot. But we're going to jump across the little puddles here. And uh, make sure that everyone gets across safely. Okay. going to climb up the rocks here. Sometimes Asterion gets stuck. Let's see if, he, if, he's, uh, if, he's, if he's able to do it. He's not going to do it. Okay, so here's how you solve that. Push G, separate everyone. Switch to Asterion. Go ahead and jump over. Go ahead and uh, just push G, link everyone back up. And there we go. All right, so Lazel has hit level 3. There's some important choices that we're going to do here. And I don't know why she leveled up before everyone else. She's Lazel. Look at her. Puff out her chest. She's going to beat you up at school tomorrow. All right, so you're going to go to your subclass and select Battlemaster. Then for maneuvers, you're going to do Disarming Attack, Repost, and Pushing Attack. Those are the three, and you're going to learn that. And that's it for her levels for now. So here's the thing. Those two people we were supposed to kill earlier, but I guess they patched it or something. We're 6 XP away. We're going to get that just walking around. I'm going to teach you uh, what to put into these characters in a bit. All right, so from the stream that we just jumped over, we climbed up these rocks, we're going to head east. We're just gonna head east, and look, it's Karlak, it's a party member, yay, we're gonna grab her. So here's the thing, don't talk to her with any of your other party members, don't talk to her by yourself, and uh, make sure that everyone is with you, they're not stuck in the stream over here, because if you don't, you won't be able to loot her backpack, which is right now, it'll say we're stealing it. But if you have all your party members and you're using your main character, it doesn't have to be your healer, it's whoever you chose to play as. Talk to them with that character. And then we're just going to be like, are you alright? I'd like to know how you control those flames. Tadpole in our heads. I'm so, I'm, your name, your character name. Let's send them back to where they came from. She's going to give you a little smile. Sounds like a great plan. 
And there you go. Now she's going to run off, and you can loot her backpack. If you don't, she'll stand there and guard it. it like, it, this thing messes up all the time. And then we're just going to loot uh, some of the stuff here. And oh, there we go. From here, you're going to now retreat. We're not going to solve her problem until we're ready to leave Act 1. But you can't leave Act 1 if you don't solve her problem because she will either hold you into Act 1 until you do it or she will permanently leave the party. We're going to return to that stream that we jumped over. Remember? We, we just jumped over and we're going to go west. And there's a little skeleton here in the bushes. Okay? There's a little skeleton hiding in the bushes. And this is X57Y512, in case you miss it, okay? So, loot the skeleton. He's got the smuggler's ring. This is really good early on for Asterion. And, uh, yeah, put that bad boy on right away. Asterion is going to be your lockpick grand master. Uh, <laughs> it's so, so good. All right, so this path, almost no, there's no videos and no guides anywhere on the internet that tells you to go this way. But we're going to do it because it's the best. From the Smuggler's Ring, we're going to continue west along the stream here. Uh, there's um, there's a little movable rock with a gem under it. There's there's like a crate here, you know. Just grab, you can grab the herbs if you want, and you know we got some some arrows. Just give whatever, random loot. And there's a, this rock might be movable. If you don't detect it, it's fine. So you move the rock, and then there's a bloodstone. It's just 50 gold. You don't need it. It's just uh, in case you're wondering, what the hell is that? Why are my characters perception checking? And you're going to run under the bridge. There's some skellies. You know, you can loot them if you want. Uh, some okay stuff here. Just send it to camp. It's fine. Some more skellies. Again, just free money. Send it to camp. We're gonna we're about to get a huge boost of money shortly. And you're going to climb up this cragged rock that's up north. There we go. We're climbing up the rock. And uh, you can loot these barrels if you want. It's uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So we're in, we're in a kind of a higher level zone here that we don't want to mess around with. So, from from this area that we just climbed up, right to the right, there's some hyenas. Don't mess with them right now. We'll do that later. You're gonna go northwest along this route, just looting all the things, you know, just just picking up the food and stuff, and uh, continue along. We're gonna keep going, and we're gonna keep going west. And yeah, there's more stuff to loot. Why not? Just go ahead and. Get some food, some burlap sacks, let's check them out. I don't remember if there's anything in these. There's, no, nah, it doesn't look like it, okay. And, uh, oh, more, more crates. That's an open crate. Eh, nothing good in there. We got a little disarm kit, give that to steering, why not? You're gonna see a signpost, and there's stuff going on in here. Lots of crazy stuff. Don't go in there yet. We're not, we're not gonna worry about that. You're gonna continue, but you're gonna curve around now, northwest, right? You're gonna go northwest a little bit, and we're just gonna go right over here. And waypoint discovered. There we go. Uh, we got the waypoint. Where is that? Dang it. I guess, uh, actually, no, the waypoint's right here. It's, uh, when you see the signpost, you curve around the rock, and then you go north. There's the waypoint. This is, this is huge. Okay, we're going to make a save. We're going to make a very important save. And now we're going to separate the party, and we're going to select Lazel, who is level 3. She's got disarming attack. She's got the invis potion, and she has the elixir of hill giant strength. This is all we need to get her the ultimate weapon. <laughs> and this is going to take some saves coming. If you are playing in honor mode, do not do this. Don't do this if you're in honor mode. Unless you're a gambling man, okay? We're going to now travel west. And this is going to require a bunch of saves coming. But it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. So here we go. We're going to travel west. And uh, there's going to be a pretty cool cutscene that happens. Uh, you'll have to play the game to figure out what that is or... Watch someone else's video. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, there's a dragon. Look, there's a cool dragon. There's a bunch of soldiers. These guys are high level as hell. They're beefy. They're Gith Yankee fighter. They're all fighters. They will kick your butt. They will They'll <laughs> give you a wedgie, okay? So, we're going to climb down the Cragged Rock, and this is where we make... Um, we, we don't make another save... Wait, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead and save here. You want to make multiple saves because um, there's a few things that can happen. We're gonna take. We're gonna go and disarm Kithgrak Voss. Sometimes when he spawns in from that first cutscene that we skipped, he will have a crossbow instead of the sword. And if that happens, we load back to when we saved over here at the waypoint, and then we trigger the cutscene again, and then we make another quick save, and so on and so forth. So from here, we're going to chug the Elixir of Hill Giant Strength, and then we're going to chug the Potion of Invisibility, and we're going to walk right up behind Kithrak Voss. And make a safety save, because this is the part we're going to reload. And then we're going to hit him with a disarming attack. 88% chance to hit, 
And we got a first try. Oh boy, <laughs> first try. Okay, it normally takes 10 to 20 tries because even though you hit him with the disarming attack, it doesn't mean that he actually drops his weapon. That's a separate roll. Uh, the, the potion dramatically increases our chance to hit and the chance of success. The invis potion allows us to not trigger a cutscene. The next thing that you have to get lucky with is not dying here. If they down you before you get to loot the sword, then you have to reload. And I'm getting real low on health and I'm down. Okay, so I am not... We gotta load. So even though we got lucky there, we, uh, we, we know now that he's dropping the sword and not his crossbow. So we're good on that point. We can continue to reload this save. First try, very cool. And uh, we're going to disarm him until we get a turn where we don't die. Before we get to pick it up. And this sword is super amazingly ultra powerful. Let's see if I get lucky once again. And we didn't. It'll trigger a cutscene. You just load game again. I'm going to skip to the part where he drops it. Because this could take a bit. Alright, this time our Lazelle got the third turn. And as long as they don't crit her to death. She should survive long enough to pick up this weapon. And now she's knocked prone. So, oh no. Fighters are such bullies, man. Let's see if she gets to pick herself up. There we go. She picked it. Now, go over and check out this sword. This is a busted weapon. You're not supposed to get this until Act 3 in normal circumstances. But we got it in Act 1 at Level 3. And now, all you have to do is let Lazelle die. Just let her die. You could, you could action surge if you want and try to disarm someone else. We're going to come back later and kick these guys' butts. It's fine, but just let her die. She is now marked for death, and we we have a way to revive her. And also, there goes Repost. You know, good thing we got Repost. But uh, <laughs> she didn't hit it. These guys are level 6. We're level 3. We can't kill them right now. Unless you get real lucky. And there we go. Just make sure they full kill her. Don't let her leave her wounded on the ground. Sit here and watch Lazel die. It's brutal. It's, uh, it's messed up. But uh, that's what happens. It's life in the Gith Yankee world. <laughs> a lot of people think the Gith Yankees as frog people. I think they're like aliens. They're like little green aliens, right? Okay, she's dead. She's full dead. Go ahead and switch back to your main party. Group them up, or don't. You don't really. You just need your healer or Shadow Heart for this next step. We're gonna continue. I'm gonna save. Actually, I'm gonna do a little safety save just in case my power goes out. Anyway. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna curve down this time. We're gonna go we're gonna go southeast down here, down back, down not down by the river. No, 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 not like the song. And there's there there's Lazelle. She's dead. It's okay though because she won't be dead for long. There's a little broken bridge here. A little broken bridge. I'm gonna gonna ungroup here and uh, I'm gonna jump across the gap. Laz or uh, Shadowheart can also jump this. It's fine. But you can just leave them there. They're just gonna chill. And have a little chat. We're going to walk along. And we're at the goblin camp. So here's the fun thing. And this is... I'm going to explain what's about to happen here. It's, it's going to trigger a cutscene when I go right here. And this is because I'm technically in the goblin camp as soon as I get here. Which is going to change the state of the game. So here we go. We trigger a cutscene. And it's going to show all of them for some reason. It's about the artifact that uh, <laughs> Shadowheart's carrying. And there we go. So at this point, we're going to go to camp. And what we just did is we skipped an entire dungeon um, and unlocked Withers. So normally in the game, when you start, you go up here and there's like a little tomb that you have to do and you unlock Withers. Withers is a NPC in your camp that will let you respec your characters and resurrect characters. So we're going to go to camp and Withers is just there. He's just here in the camp now because we have progressed the story by visiting the goblin camp. And the goblin camp uh, accepts us for being there. We didn't have to do any kind of persuasion checks or any fights or use illithid powers to get in. We're just in. And so we're going to talk to Withers. And he's going to talk about himself and what he does and why he's here. And he's not going to tell us much. And uh, so we're going to talk about resurrection. I want to resurrect someone. I want to resurrect Lazel. So he's going to charge 200 gold. Here's the gold. It's fine. We didn't really pay him. I'm going to show you in just a bit. So he's now going to resurrect. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let you see it. You can see him. He's just going to... He's just going to channel his magic and... Uh, well, do his little thing. We're just chilling. Carlac's over there doing something. 
And there's Lazelle, she's back, all right. And she's just, she's just peachy, right? I'm gonna give her the super weapon now. And she is, again, she is our carry for the whole act one. And that leveled up Shadowheart. And uh, I don't know why Asterion hasn't leveled up yet. But uh, we're gonna switch to Asterion now. Asterion's just chilling. Uh, we're gonna send Asterion to camp. And we're gonna go over to Withers. And we're gonna stealth behind him. And we're gonna yoink that money back. And if you fail, nothing bad happens. Withers won't beat you up. He's not going to leave. He's not going to attack you. He'll just be like, nice try, bro. And then you can do it again. As a matter of fact, you, you can attack Withers. Nothing happens. Look, you can stab him. He just, he'll dodge. He'll, he'll do zero damage. He cannot die. This dude is way stronger than you can possibly imagine. Okay? So don't worry about Withers. And now we're going to send uh, Shadow Heart to camp. There we go. And we're, everyone's in camp. Right, so now we're going to take the main character, and we're going to, uh, well, we're going to link Lazel with the main character. And then we're going to take the main character out of camp. And this glitches. This is going to show Minthara for some reason. And, uh, Lazel's here. We're going to talk to Lazel. And Minthara's here. I don't, I don't know why. They said it, they, they, that they patched this, but they didn't. It only works here. <laughs> And she's gonna talk about the sword a little bit. You can try to pass the history check. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if you do or not. It's just. It's just lore. It's just a lore dump. It, it's not. It doesn't affect relationships. And uh, what? You just talk to her about the sword. On to other matters. Blah blah blah. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what happened with the dragon and about mind flares and what happens when we turn and we get her approval. Whatever. That's fine. Besides. All right. So there we go. Now. We're going to do another little safety save. We're going to split the group, and Lazel is now going solo for a bit. Lazel is going to do so, a little a little mission. Now she's a Githyanki. She's also a fighter, so uh, she's a little bit beefier. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump down here. And you may not be able to do this. And we just leveled up the main character and Shadowheart and uh, Asterion. So uh, we're gonna level them up later. It's fine. And we're gonna jump down here, and then we're going to jump down again. And try to find the spot that deals the least amount of damage. It doesn't matter. We have multiple healers. We have withers who can respec and heal you. It's fine. Alright, so these guys, these gobos are sleeping. So just walk by them. Don't walk near too close to them, though. Especially these three. Walk very far. We're, we're going east, by the way. We're going east. And uh, Lazel's great because she can jump up ledges. Like, normally, there's a cutscene and, uh, like, a check you gotta do. But you just walk over here. And then you jump up the ledge, and you skip that whole interaction. You can dig this up. I'm, I guess I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, I click the ground. Uh, normally I skip it for videos, but I'm just going to go ahead and... Why not? There's a lot of good stuff in here, actually. That's a good roll. And um, there we go. So next up, we're going to continue northeast. All right. And there's a chest down here. We're going to jump down, take some more fall damage. Make sure you jump behind the chest. Do not jump in front of it. There's traps here. And uh, we don't, we can't lockpick this as Lazel, but we do have a sword that can smash it, so just smash it. And uh, I'm going to make a safety save, because I've heard items can break when you do this, so just in case, we're going to go ahead and smash it. There we go. And this is the glowing shield, and some gold. So we're going to pick those up. And the glowing shield goes to your healer, so there you go. The healer now has a shield. That if he drops below 50% HP, he gets an 8 HP, temporarily HP buff. Pretty cool. I'm going to mule some money over to him. And we're up to 511 gold. We're about to be wealthy as heck. Very heckin' wealthy, Reddit bros. All right. I hate Reddit, by the way. <laughs> Jump back on the ledge. And then we're going to continue southwest. Climb down the cragged rock here. And uh, right here, there's a little, a little ladder. And we're just gonna walk down to the ladder. We're, uh, we're we are traveling south, by the way. And now we have the ancient sigil circle waypoint. There we go. So we're gonna make another safety save here, and we could teleport our party in from here, but we're not gonna do that just yet. We don't need to. There's a few ways to do this next step. All right. I'm gonna teach you a little. I don't know if it's a glitch or a bug, but uh, you can use something called improvised melee weapon to pick up smaller creatures like goblins. So if I click Improvise we Melee Weapon and click the Goblin, I can drag him around and, th and, and stuff, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag him up the ladder. And it's a little awkward, right? 
and I'm gonna drag them. I'm gonna drag them over here near the down by the river, I guess. And I'm gonna left click, and that's gonna commit the action. So now, Lazel has picked up the goblin, and she is gonna carry him over here. I'm going to right click before she gets over here, and cancel it. And then I'm gonna enter turn based mode, and I'm gonna kill him. We have a weapon that can totally just destroy this dude. There we go, he's dead. No one saw us. We just killed Crusher. We skipped his entire dialogue. And let's go ahead and loot Cr Okay, in, in turn base mode, he's dead. And we're going to take the Crusher's ring, put the rest of the stuff in camp, and we're going to equip that to Lazel. That is three meter movement speed. That's a lot, and it's about to get even higher later. There's a few other ways to deal with this. If this gets patched, you can have your clerics use command approach to force him up here and kill him. Other other than that, you can save scum the dialogue and have Lazel intimidate him through speech, make him lick her toes. You will then take a piss by going all the way over here across this bridge by himself and you can kill him there and take his ring. There's many ways to take his ring. All right. So, from here, we go down the ladder. We're going to reunite the party now. And we're just going to click over here. It's fine. And we're going to go click our main character who should be in camp with everyone else. Or no, he's, he's over here. Whoops. Sometimes it, like, switches the characters around. I don't know. But we're going we're gonna to reunite with our party who's over here just chilling on the bridge. Also, Shadowheart's going to want to have a little talk. And you should save before talking to her so you don't, like, fail the, 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 the checks. Jump back over here, do my safety save, and there's going to be times where you, you need to just exhaust all their dialogue. Okay, yeah, her hand hurts, she's got carpal tunnel, magical carpal tunnel, uh, there we go. And then again, I'm just exhausting her dialogue, it's a good time to do it. Alright, so, again, this is the one of the check I was talking about, uh, if you want to try to pass it, you can, we can do friends... Uh, and there we go. Maybe we pass this, maybe not. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You could try again tomorrow. It, this just helps your relationship with Shadowheart. So, anything? it's whatever. Alright, like... let's see. Let's just just exhausting her dialogue awesome. again. Just and mash through it or listen. There's a lot to get through. Prove our salvation. Must we? You want your party members to like you so they don't leave heard. later on. It's very important that you make sure that they don't leave. Sweet of you, but don't w thank you. All right, she approves. Whatever I said, she approves. Again, I'm just mashing through it. <laughs> okay, and uh, she's got the exclamation point on. Most would think us mad for All right. right into the middle of a fine. What's on your mind? Let's see. And that's probably going to be there for a bit. Now, you want to level up your characters, but again, we're still just default characters. We have withers. We're going to respec here very shortly when we need to. But uh, for now, you want to be level 3 so that the shopkeepers have better loot on them. That's how shopkeepers work. It is based on your character's level. And we're level 3 at the goblin place. So, uh, again, so for, for Asterion, I'm just going to click Assassin. We're not really going to use that because we're going to respect here pretty shortly. And I'm going to link up the party. Uh, Lazel is not linked. And then we're going to go to camp. Or we didn't have to go to camp. Whatever. Uh, and then we're going to warp to the goblin camp. And then we're going to link up from here. There we go. Everyone's linked up, and we're set to go. I'm going to travel southwest now, and we have Grat the Traitor. So Grat the Traitor, he's one of, he, I like him. I like his dialogue. This is my favorite line. I don't know why I like it so much. You look like you got something jingling in your pocket. So what we're going to do with Grat the Traitor is we're going to do a safety save before we even <laughs> attempt this. Uh, actually, let's go, let's go over here to the bridge, switch to Lazelle, because she's big and mighty, and strong, and powerful, independent woman, and we're gonna smash the barricades, just kill them, just kill these barricades, they get in the way, I know, they're, it's whatever, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna unlink everyone, and just kinda have them stand off to the side here, uh, hold on, Mysterian, just get over there, and main character, you can get over here. And Lazel, whatever. So main character is going to go and uh, interact with, or it doesn't matter. Whoever has the backpack, you're gonna go to Grat the Trader. I got stuff. If you got coin. I don't got coin, but I got exploits. So now we're gonna give Grat the backpack we looted at the start of the game. 
So to do that, you just drag it over. You can't double click it. And then we're gonna hit barter, and it's like, are you sure you want to do this? And then we're gonna we're gonna open his, the backpack that is now in his inventory, and we're gonna stuff everything we want inside of it. So I want uh, I, I I basically want everything he's got. Okay, I'm I'm a greedy boy, and uh, I'm I'm a hungry boy, and we're just gonna take all of it, every single last thing, right? And uh, you know I'm doing this the slow way. Just do it like that. There you go. <laughs> so now everything is in the backpack. Hey, don't be rude. Uh, okay, so. Again, remember that uh, thing I taught you with uh, uh, the improvised weapons with Lazel? Again, you could use command and you could do approach. So you cast command and cast approach and you can force him to walk over here. Uh, or, or you just get Lazel and you pick him up, which is what we're going to do now. And so we're going to grab improvised melee weapon, click on him, and then make sure that we drag this line all the way across the bridge and this is why we broke the barricade so that we can walk all the way over here and then Brad doesn't have a lot of HP and then we're gonna cancel it when we get over here in a turn base mode and then just smash he's got six health so he's dead there you go we just killed Grat the traitor it's fine he's a goblin goblins are bad kill all the goblins watch goblin slayer all right so send that to camp now we're gonna go. We're just gonna loot the, the whole backpack back. And there we go. It's in Lazel's inventory. We're gonna open this sucker up, sort by type, and there's a few things that we need out of this. Okay, so I want the hide armor plus two. I also want the gloves of archery, uh, boots of aid and comfort, and you you could you you could uh, you could put other stuff on on people if you want, but you don't need to. If you're on honor mode, maybe, but like a lot of this. Not that good. Not that good right now. Okay. Uh, again, we don't really need to use any of this stuff. So just just making sure of uh, pushing a greater healing. Let's get the yeah, and the res scrolls, and of course the gold. We're gonna we're, we're gonna send everything else to camp though. Uh, actually, we, we can put the food in our pack just for you know organizational purposes. All right, and there we go. So send to camp. There we go. And now we're going to do a little inventory management here. We're going to give the backpack back to the healer. We're going to give the Gloves of Archery to Asterion, who will only be using that for combat. He's going to keep on those Gloves of Power for now. We're going to grab the gold. We now have 1,125 gold. We're going to give Boots of Aid and Comfort to the healer. These are healer boots. Best of slot. Send, the, send those stinky old boots to camp. We're going to sell them to a feet person. Okay, Hide Armor Plus 2 is going to Asterion. This is... Again, this is his best in slot for a long time. And people get the... Oh, people always mess up Asterion's armor in the guides. This is the top armor. It is <laughs> so much better than anything else you could get. I'm telling you, man. And then we're going to send these rusty old armors and shields to camp. Uh, Everburn Blade. We're going to send that to camp. We're going to send uh, Pike to camp. Uh, these potions, whatever. It's fine. Okay. And uh, that's Grant the Traitor. Done. Next, we're going to kill Gribbo, which skips the entire Volo storyline, kind of, sort of. So, here's Volo. We talked to him earlier in the Druid camp. He's singing or talking, whatever. Here's Gribbo, who has him as a pet. And normally, when you play this, she will drag Volo to a prison cell. You gotta rescue him out of the prison. He's gonna invis potion and sneak away. But we can skip all of that. We can just skip that entire interaction and all of that hassle. Uh, by just grabbing Gribbo or commanding her, you know, if it's patched, and just drag her out to the bridge, and uh, you know, just just murder her the same way we killed Grat. So here we go. We pick her up. No one cares. They just, you know, the goblins don't care about the, their goblin friends. And then we just smash her, and there you go. And uh, you know, go make sure you, you can loot the key. You don't need it. And uh, I send all throwables to my healer character. And so what happened is Vol Vol Volo just vanished. Where'd he go, huh? Well, I know where he went. He went to camp. He just found his way to camp. He's a very resourceful man. We're gonna go talk to Volo, but not not as Lazel. You want your healer to do this. You generally want your healer to do this. All right. So we're gonna talk to Volo. I think you have to do it with your main character anyway. I'm not really sure. Anyway, we're gonna exhaust his dialogue. How do you find the camp? Blah blah blah. Mind flayers. Just keep talking to him. Tell him all about it, and uh, he'll lay you down on a table. There we go. We're on the table. He's gonna peer into our eyeballs, and there we go. And then we talk to him again. 
Has your research turned up anything that might help with this parasite problem? Not, Not yet. yet. I'm afraid. So, next time we long rest, he's gonna give us a magical eyeball that will let us see invisibility. This is super useful. While we're in camp, it's time to respec everyone, because default Shadow Heart sucks. Just straight up. And, and default, uh, Asteri is not bad, but we need him for a very special mission. And so to respec, you're going to take control of Shadow Heart here and talk to Withers. And he's gonna be like... Oh. Thy name has been recorded. And anyway, and then you're going to go, can you help me change my class? You're going to pay 100 gold, which we clearly have. And again, she's going to start as a cleric. I'm going to put it on the screen for you. Here is uh, what you're going to level up. So Shadowheart is going to go level one into cleric. And cantrips, you're going to go with sacred flame as per usual. Guidance and produce flame, which is useful in act two. We don't really use it in act one, but if you need a Start a fire and Asterion's not around. There you go. Subclass, you're going to go to the nature domain. And this is mostly for um, uh, the, the the perks like heavy armor and stuff. But uh, it, it, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time here in Cleric. We're just getting it for for the heavy armor shields. And uh, talking to animals is very useful a little in a little bit. But uh, for the cantrip, we're going to switch that to Thorn Whip. This is really useful in, an, in a fight on boats. You'll see you later. And then abilities, we're going to clear that out, and you're going to... I'm going to hide the text for this part, okay? And, uh, no, I'm not. Let's scooter over a bit, and... No, actually, that's fine where it was. And we're going to go strength 16, so I like the... It doesn't matter if you use plus 2 or plus 1, just make sure it says 16. Uh, dex 12. Whoops. Uh, constitution 14. Intelligence 8. We're dum-dums. Wisdom 16! And uh, do that plus one there. There you go. Got 16 strength, 16 wisdom. And then charisma eight. You don't need to be using Shadowheart to talk. She's kind of uh, she's kind of mean. She's a mean girl. And then for uh, this, uh, I didn't mean to hit recommended. I got to do it all over again because I misclicked. I was looking at my stream software. Oh, boy. Well, it's a good thing I have it on the screen here. You get to see it twice, you know, just in case you missed it the first time. And... Uh, <laughs> We're going to change our skill profici proficiencies to animal handling. Okay, and then medicine, which is already selected, and persuasion. So unselect history, select persuasion. There we go. Which I know you're like, why persuasion if she's low charisma? It's useful in like one part in act two. And there we go. Confirm it. We're done. Now for now, you're going to just keep playing her like a cleric, okay? So um, that was level one. So level two, you're going to dip into monk and... Some people didn't realize how to do this. I'm going to show you for people that are like making the forum posts and stuff. They're like, I can't, I can't switch to monk. It's grayed out. So what you have to do is you have to switch your difficulty level to balanced or higher. Okay. If you're playing on explore the game, I don't know. It just wants to punish you. It doesn't want it to be too complicated. All right. But that's, you know, that's what us YouTubers are for. So now that I've switched difficulty, this little button right here, that says add class can be clicked. And you're going to click on Monk. And then you're just going to hit Accept. And now she's a level 2 Monk. And now it's going to continue. And you're going to have two buttons this time. You're going to have on the left is Cleric and on the right is Monk. So you want to make sure the one on, on the right is selected. And what this is going to do is give you Key Point and some other stuff, which we're not really using yet. But it's just better to have this now because it lets her hit more often. And then hit Accept. And there we go. We are now level 3 uh, in total, level one cleric, two levels into monk. And now it is Asterian's turn, but in pure Asterian fashion, we're going to yoink that gold back from Withers that we used on Shadow Hearts. So just stealth behind him, yoink the gold. There we go. We got it. And now for Asterian, and uh, we're gonna also make him a cleric. Yes, just for just for now, for level one, you're going to go cleric and cantrips. You're going to go with resistance which is the hand, the arms crossing each other you got guidance always guidance and thaumaturgy which is the dude that's like puffing his chest out there you go so for your subclass you're going tempest domain this doesn't have a lot of effect now other than if you get attacked which asterion won't be attacked very much but later on it's pretty darn useful deity does not matter since we're not using him to talk for your ability points we are going with 10 strength 16 dex so we're going to put a point there, and then Constitution 14, and then Intelligence 8. Again, we're dum-dums, and then we're going to go 16 Wisdom and 10 Charisma. 
which, um, there we go. So 10 strength, 16, 14, 8, 16, 10. And then for your skill proficiencies, you're going insight and persuasion. You don't need religion. You want persuasion. Useful in a few parts where you got to do some talking with Asterion. And there we go. So we confirmed that. For level 2 with Asterion, you're going to go rogue. Yes, that's right. He's not He's not staying as a cleric. Not for not for a while. And we're going to respec him at level 12 in Act 3. You're going to have to wait for the Act 3 video as long if I live that long. Okay, but we're gonna, for now, we're, <laughs> this is the easiest way to progress through Act 1, is to make him a rogue. And there we go, so he is now level 1 cleric and level 1 rogue. And then for his third level, he's going to go into rogue again. Alright, and there we go, so he is now roguing it up. Oh, and at level 2, you're supposed to pick sleight of hand and stealth. It defaults to that, so I forgot to mention it. But if there's like a weird patch, and for whatever reason it does not default uh, his abilities when you pick level 2 rogue to sleight of hand and stealth, just make sure to change them. And just so we're clear, okay, so because someone in the comments will not know what the hell I'm talking about. So when you level Asterion to 2, you're supposed to click this abilities button and make sure that sleight of hand and stealth are selected. It's selected by default, but if there's a future patch where it's not, just make sure whenever you do that, okay? So what we just did is we have an Asterion that has the amazing super ability Fog Cloud, which we're going to skip entire rooms of fights with. It's such an amazing ability, you're gonna see. All right, it is time to leave the camp with your party. Everyone's linked together on the left here. And you're going to lead with Shadowheart. She's gonna be the leader. Let's keep going. And we're going to walk into the camp. You don't need to inter- there's really no reason to interact with these goblins. There's no reason to go win 35 gold. Who cares about 35 gold? We have thousands. We don't need 35 gold. And we're going to enter the northern doors here. Uh, to the- I forget what this is called. The, the Shattered Sanctum. Make a safety save here. There's a couple persuasion thingamajigs you might have to do. Uh, your character, if playing a Selunite healer, might have an argument with Shadowheart about the temple. That happens. You also might fail a role here and have to fight. So we're gonna... Saluna. Yeah, here we go. Let's She's blah blah blah. I would say try to be as nice as possible here. No I'll breathe easier once we're Let's clear see. Of this we don't have time for this. And Besides, uh, another persuasion check. Oh boy, friendship and guidance this time. Oh boy, we did it. She's gonna open up now and tell yeah, us about I her problems. And again, we want to be nice to her. You gotta be nice. We have bigger problems. Uh, she approved. Okay. Yay! Mwah. Kiss on the forehead. <laughs> Perhaps I should have told you sooner. All right. So now that that's done, safety save, safety save, and uh, let's walk forward and uh, with Shadowheart. Make sure she is selected. Okay. I I love this goblin that's about to talk. She, she's like, oi! I love it. Listen. Oi! I love it. I love it. Okay. So you want to use Illithid Wisdom here? Okay. I will, I'm not here to talk to a lowly guard. This unlocks the passive. Again, very important that you do this. And I'm just going to use guidance because why not? Oh my god! <laughs> I never lost that roll, bro. Well, hey, you you were laughing because I made a safety save. And who's laughing now? Hmm? Hmm? That's why I did it. <laughs> it's a 5% chance. I'm pretty sure it's a 5 Yeah, it's like a 5% chance to fail that. I think it's even less with the guidance buff. Anyway, oi. Oi! Hello. We got two oi's. All right. This time, we're winning. You know, time travel power be damned. Okay. There we go. And then we just leave. There we go. 120 XP. Everyone's like, whoa, dude. We can control people's minds and stuff. So the tadpole gives us the ability. Ignore and then you want to be positive, okay? You want to be positive about the tadpole powers. You do not want to talk smack about tadpole powers. So, all the better. Asterion will approve of that. And uh, the reason you want to be positive is because later on, your party members need to put these in their brains so they have more magic abilities. <laughs> Alright, so this next part, uh, I'm making another safety save, boy oh boy. <laughs> We're gonna walk through the doors and go north, and this- we're gonna do a little combat, a little bit of combat, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do this, hopefully if this gets patched, you're just gonna have to kill the whole room. It's not a big deal, but this will save you a lot of trouble. Do you hear the absolute voice, mate? 
Anyway, you're gonna switch to Asterion, and you have to do this very quickly. She is going to brand this poor goblin. So just chill for a minute, let them do their thing. But you gotta act quickly after she brands it, because other people are gonna line up and get branded. So yeah, ooh, right in the forehead. Mm-mm-mm, tasty. All right, we're gonna save because I don't want to have to wait through this again. And now fog cloud, shift and space bar immediately to enter turn-based mode. And now you're just going to kill True Soul Gut in the fog cloud. So here is Asterion, and he's gonna give her the old shank. And uh, so that's gonna start combat between. Oh, this guy got in too. So that usually doesn't happen. But right now, Asterion is in combat with these two. The other characters are not in combat. They are free to act, which means we go to stealth, and then we could swing on True Soul Gut with Lazel, and it missed, so we get another free swing, and there we go. We hit her for 20, which uh, she's now halfway dead, and now our main character, who is not that strong yet, is just going to give a old swing. Boop. Critical miss. Okay, it's another one roll. Seven. Not bad. Now we have Shadow Heart. She's going to maybe swing, and there we go. So... What's bad is that um, we're all in combat, and she didn't die. And this in higher difficulties, that's what happens. All right. <laughs> so again, just fight it like normal. If these guys run and hit the drums, just load game. It's okay. Yeah, we're loading game. I'm not gonna fight all that. Feel free to turn the difficulty down if the save scumming gets annoying, right? Because it just makes it easier to kill. So again, fog cloud, stealth, enter combat, turn base mode, stabber. Uh, switch to Lazel. Try to get her one shot here, and there we go. She's dead. So what we're gonna do very quickly now is we're gonna in turn base combat mode, loot her in the fog cloud, and then teleport out. So there we go. Loot and just take all, and then teleport about, and then boom. No goblin saw us kill them or kill her, whatever. And let's just sort our inventory because there's a lot of junk. So we got the the parasite specimen. This is for abilities later. Uh, we got stuff we can send to camp here. And I uh, got some food items that we can just stuff in our food bag. So that's cool. Uh, let's see. We got a note you can read. There's not really a reason to read it unless you want, uh, you know, just whatever. Uh, it just updates your journal. Who cares? Drop it. And uh, send that to camp. And there you go. So we, we just took out one of the goblin bosses. And we skipped all the dialogue and all the cutscenes and all the bullcrap and all the time wasted crap where you have to move around and do a bunch of little mini games of crap. And yeah, it's just that easy. So what you're going to do in camp is you're going to use your waypoint. Don't leave camp like this. Don't do that. That puts you right back in front of her. They'll find you out and they'll get mad. And uh, it's time to feed Gale. He's over here haunched over. So this is very important for Gale feeding time. You only need to feed him three times. Don't panic. We have plenty of magical items to give him. We've already done the prep work. So uh, open one of these doors. Do Again, do not talk to him without a good magical item. Otherwise, he will permanently leave. It happens sometimes. And we're going to go into the Traveler's Chest, and what you're going to do is we're going to just uh, mouse over things that say we can feed... I know Doomhammer works, and I know... Um, uh, let's see, Magic Item, Magic Item... I know Everburn Blade works, so there's two Magic Items. And uh, once you talk to him, he explains his condition. He's got a condition. You see, I, what he needs to eat Magical to Items! Up, I mean, it's There'll be danger involved. Anyway, uh, we're going to give him a magical item. Only get you, you can't give him multiple ones. Like, here's Doomhammer, here's Everburn Blade. Uh, if you select multiple ones, again, it won't work. So there, donate that, and then if I donate that, it, it's, it shows that he takes it, but he only takes one. He only needs one. Understood, I'll give you what you need. Here's Doomhammer. There you go. And so he, that hit the spot. We don't have to feed him again until later. Go ahead and exhaust all his dialogue, that way make him happy, make him, you know, content, whatever. And then uh, we can just, you know, put this back in the chest, whatever, just send it to camp. <laughs> and uh, again, just, to, again, you, what you want to do is you want to go talk to every person. Talk about, like, just every kind of thing that they can rattle about. Let them talk about themselves. Do not yet need to consume an item. All right. And uh, again, do this with every party member. Do it with Asterion and Will and Shadowheart and et, et cetera. Once you've talked to everyone in the camp over and over and over until there's nothing left to talk to them about, where uh, you just have like very few dialogue choices, now it's time to leave camp. Not leave camp, but teleport to Goblin Camp, that way they don't find you out. Uh, it's like you were never there. And then we're going to go back in again, and we're going to do this to another character, but this character 
we're not going to kill. Now, you, you could kill them if you want to use Lazel or someone else as your evasion tank. But Minthara is the best choice because she gets a special ability that increases the damage of anyone she wants as a bonus action. And it's invaluable. There's nothing better. Uh, like, none of the other story characters have anything better for this specific build. Minthara is best in slot. So we're going to run past where Truso Glut died. It is... No, it's not Glut. It's just Gut. There's another character named Glut later. We'll talk about him. But we're gonna... Here's some spiders. Don't worry about them right now. And we're gonna hit... See this doorway? It's locked. We're gonna turn to the right side here. And we're gonna go in. And I highly recommend we kill everything in this room except, of course, Minthara. And, uh... We're going to basically do the same thing. We're going to do a little safety save, and we're going to crowd around Minthara here. But this time, see at the bottom where we see passives? Turn on toggle non-lethal attacks. Turn that on. Boy, oh boy, you want that on. And, uh, there we go. Now we are non-lethal attacking. All right. And I'm going to, again, I don't know. Too many safety saves, right? Switch to Asterion, and we're doing the exact same thing. We're going to fog cloud these two. Immediately stealth, and then enter combat. And then we're going to beat up Minthara. She has 36 HP. There we go. And then we're going to hopefully Lazel lands a big fat juicy crit. Let's go. And well, it's good enough. 14 HP. Go ahead and smack her around. Down to 7. And can we not hit her from here? Yes, we can. 7 HP. We're down to 5. Alright, so uh, that was everyone's actions except Lazel. Uh, she has... Uh, well, that, no, that's that's the actions. So let's see how this plays out. Let's make sure it doesn't alert the camp. Okay, so she's just gonna run out of the fog. <laughs> a little small talk. Which, um, well, complicates things a little bit, right? You know, just a little bit. We might be able to one-shot this goblin boss. Is this... Okay, is she in the sight cone here? What about this floating orb eye? Yeah, we're gonna try to- we need to take out the goblins in this room anyway, so let's see if we can do that. One shot, let's go. Thirteen! Bro, thirteen. Hey, these- hey, look at these characters, they're not in combat. She's gonna heal and soul brand herself and run around. Oh, he is knocked out. Okay, so we just put him in- we just put everybody in combat, whatever, it's fine. Uh, a pretty- pretty basic fight, she's already heavily wounded anyway. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, just beat her up and take her out. <laughs> or load game, whatever you prefer. Alright, I got her knocked out, and we're gonna end combat and try to go after this goblin boss. We want to clear this room without alerting the whole camp. It's a little difficult to do sometimes, but we can make a safety save because we're not technically in combat. And let's see if I, uh, I can just grab him right quick. And, uh, no, okay, if they dodge, it doesn't count as a hostile action. Come on, hit! Three in a- damn, I am missing- <laughs> All right. All right, so we can talk our way out of it. Oh, man. And we got guidance. And again, if you talk your way out of it, you just get a free hit on the guards. Otherwise, they initiate combat. All right, so once you've cleared the room, the scrying eye, just kill him, whatever. And no one else is alerted. This room is pretty much good to go. Also, remember to turn off the passive mode and uh, kill this goblin because you don't want him coming back. So, there we go, he's dead. Give, go ahead and loot his stuff, send to camp. Now, you're gonna loot Minthara, but not everything, because again, she's gonna be a party member later on. And so, here's what I recommend that you take. You take her armor, you take her boots, you take the liar, because you'll need that for Act 2. You take her weapon, uh, you remove her other weapons. I recommend that you just, well, I'm just gonna send these to camp then. Uh, and then you take her supply pack. Now, here's the thing. You, this step that we, I just showed you is not necessary to do, but it sets it up really nicely later uh, because she gets bugged and she's going to respawn, not knocked out, with a whole lot of supply packs, like 14 to 16 of them. It'll basically cover your entire food expenses for the rest of the game. Also, there's a gilded chest you can rob here. It's got some uh, nice stuff in it, too. You can just send that to camp. Right now, we're going to do a little bit of looting. So, we're going to borrow Lazelle, just have her do a little solo mission work, because Lazelle is our most nimble and highest jumping character that we have. And what you're going to do is you're going to leave the room. There's the locked door. You're going to cross this bridge. The spider's down below. By the way, if you want to have fun with the spiders, uh, <laughs> this is how you do it, right? 
Uh, there's a little switch on the on the wall here. You can actually shoot it with an arrow, and uh, it's a little bit hard to get sometimes, which I can't select it right now. Sometimes you, you can target it, but there's a there's a lever there. Oh, there it is. It's again, it's a little bit. It's pixel perfect. Shoot the lever. That'll <laughs> get the spiders busy with the goblins because it it opens the gate, and the spiders like ooh goblins. <laughs> So you can do that if you want, it doesn't really change anything, but we're going to go into this main room, and here's Dror Ragslin. Now, he's a pretty powerful dude right now, and here's the problem with Dror Ragslin. There, you, we can't do the fog cloud glitch with him. Attacking him at all sets every goblin everywhere immediately permanently hostile. We don't want to do that. Ever. So, we're saving him for later, but we're going to walk behind him, because there's some good stuff to loot here. These crates are full of food. Lots and lots of food in these crates. Uh, these, again, barrels, lots of food. And uh, again, we're going to be loaded up on food for a while here. But most importantly is the smoke powder barrels. You want to steal these. And uh, very... Oh, I don't want the rotten eggs. Uh, just dump those out. Alright. <laughs> anyway, we're grabbing the smoke powder barrels. Alright. Grabbing the food. We're basically just, uh, Lazel loot time. <laughs> Alright, and now we're gonna backtrack to the way we came. We can open this door later, we could technically open it with, um, Asterion, but we're just gonna- There's nothing super important in there to grab right now. And we can grab it for free later, without using lockpicking, you know, stuff. We're going to leave this doorway, and- Oh, the spider- Oh, crap. <laughs> the spider's coming in here, what the hell? That's never happened. Okay, let's go up the rope ladder. That's the safer... Hey, okay, yeah, we're going we're going up top. We're just... We're lazy out. We can do this. We're going up top, then. <laughs> Screw the spider. Uh, grab the crate. Oh, we got a little thing for a stare in there. Give it that to him. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, we have to go... <laughs> oh, no. Who's he fighting? Maybe setting the spiders free was a bad idea. <laughs> Oh uh, no! He, okay, he's going in the good. Oh no! 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 That sh that better not make me hostile. <laughs> well, that might make things easier for later. You know, it works out. Anyway, we're up on the rafters now. <laughs> uh, this there's there's some loot up here. There's nothing really that good. Uh, this is kind of the longer way to to go where we're going, but it gets us there all the same. <laughs> get them spiders I've never seen the spiders get that far they always die super quick all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the normal way to get to the room that I'm going to uh, <laughs> uh see Lacelle's just so nimble she's just she's just a little frog girl right okay and uh, let, let's jump down we're gonna take a bit of damage it's fine we're just jump jump down the crate it's gonna break Oh no. Anything in here, Rob? So, from Priestess Gut, this is where we killed Priestess Gut. If you go west from there, up to this room, there's a locked door. We actually have the key from Priestess Gut. Also, you can hear the spiders doing stuff. You're gonna go to the right side here and jump over this little gap. Jump, just jump over the gap. There you go. And now we're kind of in a room we're not supposed to be in, but uh, it's fine. No one can really see us. And up here, there's a little area we can jump to. As Lazel, you can jump there. Easy peasy. Uh, don't worry about that. That's a burrow hole for little creatures. Uh, again, we're going to give that to Styrian. But in this room, and you want to make a safety save, there is a lot of smoke powder barrels. And these things are nice. We're going to take more fall damage. It's okay. I'm going to show you how to cheat your health later. Smoke powder barrel. Grab it. Sometimes these guys can see through the damn doors. I don't know how or why, but that's why we do the safety save. Smoke powder barrel. Smoke powder barrel, and we're encumbered. That's okay. Smoke powder barrel. We can't grab it because we're too heavy. So we're going to take... Well, let's move that gold over. So we're going to take all our smoke powder barrels and send them to camp. And now we're no longer overburdened. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Grab the smoke powder barrels. You could grab these fire wine barrels, but they don't deal as much damage. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to send all this loot to camp. There's a, there's a lot of okay stuff in here. I'm going to send these to Asterion. And again, it's random loot. There's a chest here. We're going to actually pick up the chest. Okay, don't worry about it. And send that to healer. Send this to... Yeah, send that to the as well. Alright, very cool. And uh, now we just uh, reunite with the party. 
Uh, or we can just warp out, it's fine. It's whatever you want to do. Oh, by the way, uh, since we took the top part, I don't know if you'll have to take the top part, but you can encounter Raphael up here. So let's do that. So, <laughs> on top of the rafters, might as well just spawn them in now. It's fine, and Lazelle can just kind of handle it herself. Alright, and uh, if you go this way, if you go further up this way, we will see Raphael, who is a, he's a devil, he wants to make a deal. He's kind of walking around. There's a chest up here, might as well go towards the chest. Raphael should spawn right about here. No? Okay, yeah, uh, we can send that to camp, send these, send these to healer. Okay, maybe it's when we cross over, because there's another chest over here, and then it doesn't really matter that you spawn Raphael here, it's just kind of a jump scare sometimes. But yeah, we're walking, and there he is. He pops out right in front of us. This is Raphael, well met. and uh, there's really no wrong choices here. But if you want extra food, click uh, this one. Ignore him and fill your plate. That gives you food. That's the only good winning choice here. Anyway, we're just chatting, whatever. It doesn't really change things. Anyway, and then we're back. We got four breads. We stole his bread. Yay. <laughs> And again, there's there's more loot up here. You don't have to get this stuff. It's just, uh, it's whatever. Alright. So, back to it. So, let me teach you how to, to scum your health bar, alright? There's a few ways to do it. If you respec your character with uh, Withers, it resets your, um... Oh, what is it called? Your, your spell slots, right? So, you have healers that can heal, but there's a way easier way to do it. You open your difficulty slider, you increase the difficulty, then you decrease it. So Lazelle just healed a bunch, right? She's 47 out of 56. Do it again. And there you go. Now you're fully healed. It's that easy. It, it just saves you time from something you would do anyway. So once you're reunited with your party, which you could have just warped everyone out to camp and then back to goblin camp, you can go ahead and uh, drop the, the chest here, send the explodey barrels, not to the healer. <laughs> not to the healer. Send those to camp. All right, you got to keep a tidy inventory. You really, really do. Otherwise, it's going to get out of hand quick, right? Uh, send these to camp. Put on the liar. We don't need Lila's loot anymore. Send that to camp. Send that to camp. And sort by type. There we go. We're all set. So, we have a chest on the ground. We have a Asterion. You can make a safety save. And it's time to lockpick. And this should be pretty easy. He's more than equipped for it, right? Look at all these bonuses we have and guidance. This This is totally doable, right? And look at that, chest is opened, and then just collect the loot, 261 gold, simple as. Now it's time to get another permanent buff that will last the whole game as long as that character does not die. Which, being a tank, they should never really die, and we're going to have many ways to prevent them from dying if they do die. Which means, if they die, they will come back with some HP and not die anymore. So you're going to return to the room where Priestess Gut is, and then you're going to go east. So we're going to travel east, and we're going to go up these little stairs, and uh, we're going to make a little safety save. So right here in the middle, where this wall is kind of broken out, you have Abderak. Now you have to make a choice here, depending on how you're going to play. So if you want Lazelle to be your evasion uh, radiant tank, you're going to have her do this next step. If you're going to have Minthara, which is what I recommend you do, as your evasion radiant tank, you're going to have Shadowheart instead do this. So we're going to take Shadowheart, and, you know, control Shadowheart, and then talk to Abderak, and he's going to flog us for a permanent buff. And here we go. So, you can be, uh, what do you mean? And, um, it's appalling. How did you know? And, and why would you do that? All right, why not? So, here's what you do. Now you stand next to the wall here, and he's going to attack us. Yes. And this is, again, this is going to give you a permanent buff. If your HP reduce is below 30%, it's a plus two to attack rolls and save for throws. So, again, we can tank this pretty easy. Here's the easiest way to pass the checks. Do performance. It is, it's the lowest, even though you don't have the charisma for it, do it anyway, because it is the easiest to pass. So there we go. We do charisma. It's a five. The other ones are like tens and fifteens. And then guidance. You got this, bro. That's We made the save. It's okay. All right. And so he's going to do it again. He takes his sweet time. There we go. We got hit again. And again, another performance. This one's a ten. We, we got this. Easy. All right. 
And then one more time, he's going to hit us again. And then we're going to do one more performance. And this one's easier to do, because now it's situational advantage. The other ones don't give advantage. We actually failed it. <laughs> so, again, load game. Hey, second try. <laughs> uh, I can't believe we rolled so low with advantage. And there we go. So... He's gonna hit us one more time, and that's it. He really enjoyed himself. It doesn't matter what you picked here. But now we have Lovitar... Lovitar's... Lovitar's... <laughs> Loviatar's Love. There we go, I can't say it. Plus two attack rolls and wisdom saving throws for three turns when you reach 30% hit points. And as long as you don't die, you can carry this the entire game. So, I'm one of those gamers, I gotta get, like, every little thing like this to stack up. It, I just have to do it, man. So, we are actually done here for now at the Goblin Camp. You're going to switch to Asterion. He's gonna lead the way. We're going to teleport to the Goblin Camp, and we're going to just straight up leave. So, we're going to travel southwest, and we'll be back later, but there's not much to do in there at the moment at, la at our level with our gear. We need to get a little bit more powerful, and if it bugs you that we're gonna skip around... Don't. It's it's real simple. It's just if you do certain things there now, it's a real pain in the butt and it messes up the flow of the story. So you don't want to do it. So I'm going to I'm going to continue to travel south here and to the west there or I'm sorry, to the east is this little goblin gate. We we don't have to talk to anyone here. We've already technically been accepted in because I went up on the ledge and we're going to continue going east. Now, the game saved for us, otherwise I'd tell you to make a safety save. The reason we're using Asterion to lead is we, we're going to use his Illithid powers and unlock them and uh, get a waypoint. So here we are. We're continuing to go east, up the path, and now we're in a goblin camp. There's a well. This goblin's going to talk to us. Here it is. You sniff you sniffing away. around. We're going to use Illithid Wisdom. Let's try again. Address me properly. And I always use the guidance uh, just in case you never know, bro. And there we go. He's going to let us in the camp. That's a bonus to XP. That's why we did that. That unlocks a passive for Asterion. And now we're at the Blighted Village. So continue going east. And right here is the waypoint. There we go. Waypoint discovered. All right. Next up, we're going to go north here to this moss-covered chest. And we're going to uh, make a safety save. And we're going to bust it open with Lazel with her melee weapon, not her ranged weapon. She's going to smash this sucker down. There we go with her big, powerful, mighty super sword. All right. And inside is the haste helm, which uh, Lazel is going to put on. There we go. Lazel has now a movement ring and a movement helmet. And <laughs> thief tools. There we go. Smoke powder bomb and gold are also in there. So real quick, smoke powder bomb goes to healer. Thief tools goes to Asterion. And then I had some stuff, you know, that we need to send to camp. Of course, of course. Just, just you know, basic inventory management. You know, it's all good. All right, from here, you're going to go southwest. That means you're going to turn the camera this way and go into this little hut here. And boy, this is a really good addition early on. And we have the money for it. And it's just easier to pay these guys. I'm going to tell you right now, these are these are the uh, the ogres. We can hire them. Stranger. And we're going to just talk to them normally, Friend. right? Oof. And um, you? if you're not an elf, that's I fine. You know, just see. just do whatever. Uh, I you want to you want to deceive them, okay? It's pretty easy to deceive. Use friends if you want. Get guidance from one of your party members. You got this, bro. It's easy, easy, easy. And we just did a safety save, so it's okay if we fail. Alright, so then you tell him Friend. that you notice that you don't have a brand of your own, or he doesn't. No then you say, talk. you should be fighting for me. Make now, me if you really want to save scum, you can do one of these, but we're going to get the money back anyway, okay? So just give him 500 gold. There's plenty, we got plenty of money, alright? And he's going to give us a horn, well spoken. and that's it. So we have his horn, and now we can summon him... Up to four times in Act 1 to fight for us. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to use these guys. They're just, they're beefy. They deal lots of damage. They they do really good range damage, too. They're going to make a lot of fights super simple. All right, next up, we're going to get a few more items here. So we're going to, uh, where is that waypoint? So from the waypoint right here, there is like a, there's like a big old double doors to the south of the waypoint. We're going to go inside. 
And inside, there should be an antidote on the shelf. You can hold the Alt key. Grab that antidote. We, we're going to use that later. There's another antidote over here. There's Potion of Healing, Potion of Sleep. You can, it's, it's good stuff. Potion of Sleep, I don't really know the use for. I'm just going to grab it anyway. Why not? And right behind this counter here, facing west, is a floor wooden hatch. And we're going to go into that wooden hatch. And there we go. Once we're inside the wooden hatch, we're going to travel north here. There's three boxes against the north wall, and we're going to hold left click and scoot them out of the way. And then pull the lever. There it is. And then we're going to go through the bookshelf here into the north. And then we're going to follow the path. Curve around. And here we go. So we are now in a crypt. Right here, we're going to stand next to this moldering casket. I'm going to... Well, the game's already saving for me. I'm going to go to camp. And I'm going to do this with my healer character. I'm actually going to go to Withers and respec. Just for a sec. Just for a sec. This one. And skip dialogue and help me change my class. This is very important that you do this. This is a permanent summon. And you're going to switch to wizard. And confirm. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to leave camp. We're a level 1 wizard. You don't need to level up. We're going to loot the moldering casket. And inside, there's a poo scraper. That's funny. Um, there is a scroll of summon cuisine. And you're going to, um, first off, take off your armor. I know, we're getting buff. And take off your shield. And now you can cast the spell. So, we're going to cast the cuisine. All right. So he's a little he's a little vulgar boy. You have to do these exact choices or it messes up. Choice number one is Illy. Choice number two, you're a disgusting little creature. Choice number three, your name is Shovel? Choice number four, what would you like to be called? Shovel is fine. No, and you'll commit no such deeds in my name either. Now, at this choice number two, you have such a way with words. All right, now you're going to proceed east and up these stairs, so south. And talk to this mirror, and you have to pick these exact choices. You're going to tell it your name, and then you're going to say yes, an ally. You're going to say a foul lich. May he die a thousand more deaths. You're going to tell it to clean a wound, and then I look for whatever spell will rid me of this worm in my head. Then the mirror will let you in. Pass through the mirror right here. Let the Quasit pass through as well. Let him pass through. Come on. Or she, whatever it is. Now that he's in the room, talk to him. You need him to say spell shite. A spell shite. All right. So now we officially have Shovel as a companion. So when you go to your spell book, you'll notice in your common tab, you have the fine familiar cheeky Quasit spell. This can be done every short rest. He, he's pretty good. He's pretty useful. And we're 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 gonna put on our uh, our armor and shield now. And now we're gonna go back to camp and we're gonna respec back to cleric. So let's do that. All right. To help you respec, here's the stats once again. You're going to go back to cleric. Can trip is sacred flame, uh, light and guidance, uh, subdomain life, and then abilities is fifteen strength. Which, um, well, I, there we go, 15 strength, 10 dex, uh, 12 con, 8 int, 16 wisdom, and 14 charisma. There we go, and skills are all set. Now, if that little quasi does not mention spell shite, you have to reload or you won't get them permanently. So, the thing with our cleric, which is our healer, which is our buffer, our supporter, you're going to be able to summon an army of things as meat shields and extra damage later on, and it is just insanely useful and broken. So now we're going to leave camp, and everyone should be here, except the quasi to got unsummoned because we respect. And once you're in, you're going to read the Moonhaven logbook over here. Uh, so, just hold the alt key, you'll see Moonhaven logbook, right click it, and then click read. And just make sure you read, you don't have to actually read it, just, your character technically reads it, okay? And then from here, you will go west into this little room here. And there's a lever that opens the door. You don't really have to open the door because we're going to warp out anyway. But there's a rusted key by holding, hold alt and you can see the rusted key. Grab that rusted key, there we go, got it. And go ahead and turn back around and go east. 
and there is a rusted gate here. And yeah, this this is trapped. It's whatever. Uh, I'm gonna separate my party so only I walk go. in. And we're gonna just click the door there. We open it with the rusty key. Then we're gonna just left click the book here. The book is you try you can send something. And we're going to tuck the book into our pack. There we go. And then we're gonna run out run out of the room because it's gonna shoot fireballs at us. And there we go. <laughs> so we're we're done here. Now open your map, teleport to Blighted Village Waypoint. There we go. And then you are going to now go north. And we're going to go continue north through this big door here from the waypoint. We're not going to go up here where all these goblins are doing stuff and there's a windmill. I know, I know. We're going to go through this north door. Also, there's a bugbear we can kill real quick. It's his free XP. We might as well get him. And, uh, no, main character, stop it. Lazel is the opening attacker. Okay, this thing's asleep. Just slash him, he's dead. Easy. Easy fight. Send that to camp, and if you want to loot his crate... Empty. Oh, empty, dang. Well, there's another crate, also empty. Proceed. Cool. So, Lazel, we're gonna go ahead and go through this northern door, and then we're gonna curve around west, and we're gonna grab an item. So, there's a little hole in the wall here. I'm gonna make a safety save, and I'm gonna unlink her from the party real quick. And we're just gonna... Stealth, and she's not a stealthy girl, but hey, it's fine. We're on, like, hiding failed. It doesn't matter. Just run into the basement. And <laughs> we're going to, when you're in the basement, grab this heavy chest. And, well, we're just going to loot everything here. And the speedy light feet. We're giving this to Asterion. And put those boots on immediately. Oh, boy. These are really good boots. Especially, uh, <laughs> especially when we hit level four. And there we go. So we're just going to return to the party now as Lizo, which should be easy enough. Just uh, stealth. No one's looking. Up over the wall. And again, if they see you, they're, they're not really going to bother you too much. And then relink to the party. Now at this point, still as Lazel in the lead, we're going to warp to Joaquin's Rest. Remember, we, we went there earlier in our adventure. Unlink Lazel once again, and then we are going to go north into the village here. Here we are. And you're going to run up, and Lazel's going to push open the door. If you don't, you can smash it. It doesn't really matter. So I clicked on the door, and I'm going to use the strength to push against the wreckage. Let's see if we pass it. Oh, we did. If you don't, you just attack the door and break it open. It's that simple. So now the door is open. We're going to leap into the second floor right side window, just like this. There we go, leaped in, and then we're going to walk over, and we're going to smash open this broken door, and then jump over the wreckage. We're going to curve east, smash this broken door, and there we go. That frees the counselor, Floric, who's going to talk to us. And then we're going to just um, jump back out the way we came. And, uh, yeah, there we go. We are now an official Get the Yankee Firefighter. <laughs> And now we gotta wait for them, because they're still uh, just running around in the burning building and smoke and... Yeah, so we did it. We're gonna talk to Counselor again. And skip dialogue. <laughs> and uh, you want to be nice to this person. There's some good rewards later later on. I'll travel west and rescue Duke Ravenguard. And now, for your reward, you're going to pick the Jolt Shooter. And this is gonna be used by Asterion for the rest of the game. Best in slot. Put on that bad boy immediately. Huge power spike to Asterion. He is about to get super one-shotty here in a little bit. Once you're done with that, switch to your main party, link them up, and walk inside. Lazel's job is complete. It's now time to be a smooth talker. So here was that door we busted down, and we're going to go west through the burning ground. It's going to sting. Our characters are going to complain about the burning and the and the pain it's fine continue west and there is some crates stacked against this door that's fine let's go ahead move them over like so there we go and make a safety save oh i did forget this uh this dead halfling uh there's a key on him you should loot so we're gonna grab the suit key sweet key i don't know how to pronounce that but uh, this uh, this one here, I mean, you know, it's not, this isn't like game ending or anything, but I wouldn't walk in here with your party on honor mode, okay? So 
Keep everyone outside in honor mode. But we're not on honor mode, so we're fine. And we're gonna walk in. This guy's gonna be like, a buh 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 And we're gonna go detect thoughts. Read his mind. And it's a wisdom roll. And, oh no, it's an int roll now. It used to be a wisdom roll. Anyway, uh, I failed it, so I'm gonna load game. Because <laughs> I want the barrels that this guy explodes when you fail. So, uh... <laughs> Again, I like to stock up on barrels. Barrels are nice. They let us one-shot bosses. They let us speed through the game very quickly. Barrels are insanely useful for killing targets that you don't want to have to attack a bunch of times in the early levels. Of course, at the end of the game, when you're super powerful and mighty, you don't need the barrels anymore, but they're still fun to play with. They're one of the most fun things about Larian Studio games. And uh, <laughs> I didn't really need to go in this monologue. This is a guide video, after all. But... I just want you to share in my barrel passion. It's very important to grab the barrels. So, attempt number two, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna read his mind this time for sure, bros. I'm, I guarantee it. Detect thoughts. Bugger. <laughs> okay, we got it on the third try. <laughs> so he says a password in his brain, and then we read his brain, so little serpent, long shadow, whatever. And uh, now we're gonna we're gonna grab these oil barrels. We're gonna pick up that oil barrel there. And uh, there used to be two in in this room. Did they remove it? I think they removed it. But right, where where is that oil barrel? Is it? Anyway, there's only one oil barrel now, I guess. But there used to be two. And now we're going to go down the hatch. Yes, indeed, we are down in the hatch. And then we're going to walk north here. And there's a little wardrobe that has a lock on it. Ooh, that's curious. So we're going to walk there now. And you can loot the stuff in here. There's nothing really too good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, some like food. And some other junk. Anyway, we're going to click the wardrobe. There it is. In we go. Hidden stairs. Now we immediately get a waypoint. We're going to immediately leave. We're not going to... Do not walk forward. Do not proceed. From here, we're going to go back to the Emerald Grove in Virons. I don't know what that means. And Asterion will lead the way for now. Asterion with his new powerful boots and bow. He's a new man. He's strutting around in his shiny new boots. And we're going to go northwest. Remember that door earlier that we perception checked or whatever? Uh, yeah, we're going to go in there and have a little bit of fun. Do a little bit of adventuring. Do a little bit of... Uh, wow, the party is way behind. Holy crap. <laughs> These boots are made for walking. <laughs> okay, and I'm actually going to save Scummit. Uh, just in case. So we're in the stone door, and uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to proceed north, not too far north. And uh, I'm actually going to separate the party here and enter turn-based mode. And I'm going to dash, and I'm going to click on this Rune of the Eagle. So I'm in turn-based mode. This thing will shoot turret blasts at you, but I turned it off. Now we're good. And there we go. In turn-based mode, I'm going to pick up this flamey barrel. There we go. And send those smelly old boots in the barrel to camp. Oh, I need to be sneaking. We got, uh, there is a, this is a trapped and locked chest, but it doesn't have anything good in it. We want these oil barrels, though. These, these freaking oil barrels, bro. And there we go. And I know your curiosity is burning, like, what's in the box? What's in the box? But, again, it's, it's just garbage. But I'll show you how to deal with a chest like this for the future. So, when it's glowing like this, it needs to be disarmed. You right click, you click disarm, you don't want to lock pick it while it's armed. And you add your bonuses, and then you roll it, and there you go, we did it. If you fail this, it eats your trap disposal, whatchamacallit. And then lock pick is simple enough. Uh, you know how to do that already. And again, we have so many bonuses, this is really easy, especially with plus two from our armor. And there you go, you got a whoop de doo a really crappy staff. Uh, an arrow, and a little bit of money, and a, a grease bottle, who cares, right? It, again, all this stuff sucks. So what you're gonna do now is, on the lower difficulties, you can just one-shot this goblin from stealth. There you go, she's dead. Alright, and no one cares. These people listening to her, they don't care that she's dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what you wanna do before you fight these people, you need to do this next step, and you're gonna use Asterion for it. And you're going to make sure that you don't step in their sight lines. You're going to pickpocket a little Findle here, who is the halfling, or is he's a, what is he? He is a lightfoot halfling, okay. You're going to pickpocket him, and he has a uh, key of the ancients. Okay, we're going to pickpocket that. There we go, and then put that on top of Shadowheart's little head there. 
Mwah, give her a forehead kiss. And then stow away her old circlet in camp, you know, just in case you want to, you know, have... <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to be weird. Anyway, we're going to reunite the party now and make sure they're all in stealth or not. And I just uh, put him in combat accidentally. That's fine. All right, because we got... Like, these, these are little weak, low-level goblins, okay? We're level three. We're geared out the wazoo. This is this is pretty easy to fight. Lazel, you need to get in there, okay? You need to you need to dash, and then get in there. So she's dashing. Okay, so this is an easy fight. Just kill the goblins. Now I want to teach you a little bit about the items that we just got for uh, Asterion here. When you use a bonus action, you can dash, and that's going to give you lightning charges. So we dashed, we gained three lightning charges. We deal three lightning damage now uh, with our ranged attacks. So, uh, we can pick a low HP target to just instantly delete if we want. I'm gonna go actually with this one. Why not? Boom, dead. Uh, we only dealt one lightning damage. Whatever. But uh, we're up to five charges now, which will guarantee damage on the next attack roll. And once we get one more level, we can hide, and they can't fight back. And we can just rinse and repeat forever. It's really stupid how broken it is. Okay? But um, I'm gonna teach you more later. Now remember, I want you in the in the habit of looting these crates, because there's some okay stuff in these crates. Nothing special, but uh, just get in the habit of popping them all open and grabbing what you want. So what you're going to do is, from the top ledge here, you're going to go east, and uh, you can just hop down from the top ledge here. Your party should follow, and I'm going to turn off stealth. I don't know why they're stealthing. And, uh, yeah. So, there we go. So everyone's coming. Now, you want to, uh, with Shadowheart, remember, equipped the uh, Key of the Ancient. She's going to lead the way into this stone door. There we go. Alright, so when she has this helmet equipped, she can now open this stone door by just walking up to it. And perception failed on some of them. But if perception fails on everyone, you got to load because otherwise you can't open the door. But now we're in. And this is also a pretty good power spike here. When you're in this room, there's no one here to see you. These bookshelves will have random spell scrolls sometimes, so loot all of them. Go up to each one of these and grab the spell scrolls. Oh man, I am having real bad luck in this run. I can't believe- No scrolls yet! But yeah, check every single shelf and you'll get some spell scrolls. I I promise, I'm not lying. There, There's one. It's a really crappy one, though. You can get some good stuff sometimes. Again, this is total RNG. It's not game-breaking, it's not required, it's just nice to have some extra spell scrolls. And uh, I got, what, four more to check, five more to check, and yeah, we'll, we'll get that in a sec. <laughs> I don't know why the narrator is uh, popping up. Wow, this is, this is the worst run I've ever had on spell scrolls. Normally you load the hell up. Anyway, so on this table, there, I mean, there's the dead guy, whatever. There is a Mind Flare Parasite Specimen, and we're going to yoink that off the table, so that's for powers for later. So again, with Shadowheart leading the way, you're going to open this Southern Stone Slab Door. Switch to your talker, your main talker, and uh, lead the way. Don't talk to this netty girl, you don't need her. Instead, you're going to go southwest into this main little area here. And do not let this little girl die. Do not let Arabella I'm die. Sorry. Do everything you can to save her. I will so I'm going to say imprisoner. She's just a kid. Bro, chill, right? And then I'm going to persuasion release her. I'll see that she stays out of trouble. And it should be pretty simple. Um, friends, again, won't work in high difficulty. And there we go. So we we should totally get this, right? I've been having bad luck all, all this whole video, well. but there we go. There you go. So, so the kid is safe. We're good to go. Thumbs up, everybody. Pats on the back. But we're gonna we're gonna go over here now to the western little entryway, and we're gonna continue west. Don't bother with these shelves. It's considered stealing. There's witnesses. You're gonna you're gonna. Bleh, I can't talk. Continue west, and then up on this ledge. There's a little sneaky, sneaky area in in the back here. And, uh, yeah. So, I recommend lockpicking this, because sometimes it gets destroyed. I'm going to do a safety save, and we're going to lockpick it. There we go. And sometimes people will witness you doing this. I don't know how, but whatever. There we go. We got it. Easy peasy. Pop open that chest, and you're going to read the half-torn note. Go ahead and give that a read. Blah, blah, blah. That's going to mark a thing on your map. You can also loot the bloodstone of your camp. And there we go. From here, we're going to open our map and teleport to Blighted Village. 
And I recommended the healing at this point. So again, you can just difficulty swap to quick heal. People are going to complain that's cheating. But at the same time, so is respecting from Withers for free and pickpocketing them afterwards. What, what are you going to do? You know, pick your battles. Who cares? You got three healers in the party and like 20, 30 potions by now. There's no excuse not to be healed up and topped off. But we're going to travel south from Blighted Village. And we're just going to continue south for a while. And I'm actually going to switch to Asterion just, just to skip some dialogue. You don't need to do this. But uh, again, we're just going to go down the path here a little bit east. There's going to be some peeps talking. I'm just going to shoot at uh, Auntie Ethel here. There we go. Shoot at her. She's going to teleport away. And she's going to kill these two, I think. Yeah, is she? Yeah, there you go. They're dead. Okay. So that just saves you a whole bunch of talking. A whole bunch of useless talking. And you can loot them if you want. They died very violently. Look at that. That guy just had a cleaver. Man, he's very ill-equipped, isn't he? And you can read the note if you want. It doesn't matter. You don't have to read the note. It's not over. And uh, it's we're going to continue southbound. And you're probably... If you're in honor mode, you got to be careful here. you got to be... If you're in honor mode, summon the Quazid and have them walk around and pop all the traps. Okay, because there's some very dangerous traps in honor mode. You could die here. You could game over here in honor mode. You can make this check if you want. I I want you to I say ignore it. It's a hard check to pass. It's you don't get nothing for passing it, and it we don't get a good advantage if we if we don't do it this way. So again, Asterion's gonna lead, and you see the sheep over here. This is actually a hard fight. This is a hard fight. We're gonna stealth the whole party, and we're gonna try to murder the sheep before it reacts too much. And there's the red cap. We got two. We got two or three shots on them. But one missed. So, oh no, we're not in a meadow. We're in a swamp. It's spooky. Also, everyone's in traps right now. Bleeding and open wounds and surprised. Yeah, it's not fun. This is actually a very difficult fight. But, uh, okay, it's Asterion's turn. He's our ranged uh, big boy. And where is the red cap? There's the red cap. We did wound him before the fight started, so that's good. And, uh, yeah, we're going to shoot him now. Which, uh, there we go. Crit hit, 9 plus 2, he is still alive. Which is, that happens, it's whatever. And, uh, let's get out of this little swamp area. This is, uh, this is all trapped. <laughs> so, yeah, just fight the red caps. Your party is strong enough to handle this, even on honor mode. They're pretty annoying. This is, this is one of the harder fights in the guide. I'm gonna admit right now. Don't call the ogres. It's not that difficult. It's only four of them. And uh, you have to kill these or you have to fight them later. So it's better to fight them now. So after the fight is over, you're still going to be bleeding for a while. You're going to be rotting a lot. Just a lot of bad stuff in this swamp area. But continue west and you're going to get the waypoints. All right. And yes, it is a tough fight. But hey, you have literally three healers, plenty of supplies, an honor mode. You could try to get a high ground advantage before you start combat, like start combat up here. It's not a, like the red caps. They mostly just waste their turns crowd controlling you and uh, bleeding you out. That's what their strategy is. So, from here, you're going to continue west, and you're going to see the tea house. Oh boy, it's the tea house. It's the, the hag's tea house. And you're just going to walk in, just let yourself in, don't knock or anything, and uh, don't talk to, don't, just don't talk to anybody, or I do. <laughs> Alright, so we don't want to provoke Auntie Ethel yet. Just, oh, you have an interesting home, how do you know that? And then, uh, just leave, just leave as soon as you can. And she's like, my door is always open. Blah, 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 blah. Just walk into homes now. And yes, Asterion's weird about walking into homes. Whatever, who cares? Uh, so what you're going to do is, when she's not looking at you, turn off the fireplace. And then, it's a little awkward, but just try to just walk through here. She's going to become temporarily hostile. And she's going to poison you and do a bunch of crap. Don't even bother fighting. Just, just don't even bother fighting. You're just going to run, run down into the stairs, which um, we can't yet. Oh, hold on. Let, let me get this character out of the way. So we're going to run him down the stairs. That's plus 120 XP. You get a little bit more for come down here, too. But everyone else, just have them run out of the fight. Like You don't need to fight her. You can't kill her right now anyway. So everyone's technically just retreating. And if you beat her up, she's just going to teleport away anyway. <laughs> That's how it works. So everyone else... 
This is the fastest way to deal with this. And yeah, you could knock her prone and beat her up here, but you're gonna you're gonna mess up a lot of stuff that you need to do later for a lot of really good rewards. Really like permanent rewards. A summon and a and stat boosts. So you gotta do it the way we're doing it here. Alright, and Just then there we go. We have successfully retreated. Alright, so that's plus twenty XP, right? There we go. Group everyone back up, and uh, we're good to teleport out. Though, you could walk forward a bit. That's going to trigger another hag scene where she's, like, talking about turning you into stew or something. I forget. Here, let's just talk to her. Just walk forward. You can't kill her here either. This is an illusion. Yeah, she's a hag. She's not a sweet old lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me where Mayrene is. It doesn't matter what you pick. She's just going to run away and teleport out. But we're good. We don't, we're don't. we not going to do this area yet. It's way too high level, and we're super wounded. All right, so from here, we are going to leave the hag's hut, because you can't fast travel when you're in here. But we can go back upstairs, and we won't have to fight her and take more poison damage and get all messed up and... This character has flesh rot now. Only 18 more turns to go. It'll heal. It's fine. And we're going to take the Riverside Tea House Waypoint once again. At this point, I recommend you heal because there are more traps. Do whatever favorite method for healing that you have. That's my method. And we're going to go south now. We're going to travel. Uh, let's see this. We're going to go south along the beach here and uh, curve around east. So east along south and east along the beach. And yeah, we just stepped into more traps, so there's more bleeding, uh, more rot to come. It sucks. It's... <laughs> Again, you gotta be careful. Oh, there's more traps, yep. <laughs> Wherever there's water, there's traps. It's fine. Don't worry, we're not, we're not gonna die. We're not in honor mode, okay? It's totally fine. And, uh... What we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop across the gap here. Everyone should be able to make this gap. There we go. And before you jump this gap, this is, uh, well, let's go ahead and loot the trunk. You want to make another safety save, of course. There's nothing in there, just rope. I think there's always just rope in that one. Anyway, we're going to make another safety save here. And uh, make sure everyone's in stealth mode, which kind of sucks. Because uh, you're bleeding and, you know, it's not fun. But get everyone jumped over here. And uh, it's a little tricky, what we're about to do. So, again, uh, we're doing a safety save. And... We're a little wounded, so let's heal up. And they shouldn't detect us, but it, yeah, it looks like we're getting detected. It's fine. All right. Uh, it looks like we successfully hid. All right, yes. Heal up. De you don't want to be low health for this fight. This is actually an even more difficult fight than the red caps. And so with Asterion, you're going to just start blasting. And we're going to... We're, we're in sneak mode. We're going to hold control and left click as fast as possible. Try to get as many hits on that dude as possible. And uh, we managed to kill one before combat officially starts. Next up, you're going to go to your main character who is not in combat. And we're going to walk forward. And we're going to blow the ogre's horn. There we go. Get those ogres in here. Now, there is a chance that the ogres die here. <laughs> Which sucks, but... They're not necessary, but they are very... The, the, they're, this, this fight gets annoying. These, these mud methods, if you don't kill them fast enough, they summon more and more and more. And they get everyone muddy and no one can move and everyone is stuck, barely able to move. It's a real pain in the ass. But um, go ahead and move everyone up that's not stuck in combat, which I guess uh, Asterion's stuck in combat. And that's fine. See, like, you can't barely move through mud. Everyone's still bleeding and rotting. It's a real tough situation right now. You're really not supposed to come here this early, but it's a, it's a good power spike. And with the ogre's help, it's doable. See, now the ogres are all covered in mud. And uh, <laughs> uh, if they survive, we're going to hire them again. We're going to hire and use them in many other points. But it's not mandatory, okay? So if they do die, just loot them. It's okay. It's fine. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the fight here. Now, I just want to explain a few things. These wood wodes, they're weak to fire. Not, not our magical sacred flame. This is holy damage, radiant damage. But uh, you have characters that can cast firebolt, and you should cast fire on them when you get a chance. But your priority for targeting is the ancient mud methods. These need to die first. And it looks like uh, we're having a pretty good run here, but sometimes they get a, a little out of control. So do whatever you can to shoot the mud methods first. And for whatever reason, 
The Mephits know that you're weaker than the Ogres, and they're going to just ignore the Ogres and try to kill you. I, I, there's no way around that. <laughs> so, uh, and again, everyone's stealthing and muddy, so they're moving kind of slow here. But you just just use ranged weapons to kill the Mephits, okay? Just shoot them with whatever you got, if you even can, which uh, doesn't look like my characters can. So I'm going to skip the fight now. And just a tip for dealing with the mud methods is if you kill the one that summons the others, they will all die. But they explode, so it hurts everyone near them. Once you've taken Shall care of them, you want to extend the contract with the ogres and uh, pay them another 500. It's okay. Like I said, we're going to get all of it back. And uh, yeah, you may think our money's a little low. It's not. We have tons and tons of loot to sell later on. So while looting the creatures, one of the wood woads will have a wood woad shield. Give that to Asterion and go ahead and put it on. And you may be thinking, why would a rogue have a shield? You gotta remember, he's got a level in cleric. Everyone except Lazel will have shields. And this makes us even more broken later on. So when you come up to the wooden chest, remember that cantrip uh, produced flame that I told you about? We're gonna use that. And then burn the twisting vines here. Just get them out of the way. And uh, go ahead and just open that chest up. We have the Sparkle Hands. Now, you're going to give this to uh, Shadowheart, and that ends her debut as a cleric. She is now a full-blown monk, so you can take that mace and just uh, send it to camp. She's punching from now on. So, because we read Kaga's note, we can click on this wooden crevice. You would normally have to pass a perception check or something to loot it. But it's right here. If, if you're facing north... You're on the south side of the tree. So there it is, wooden crevice. And then we're going to read this note. You don't have to loot it, you just have to read it. And apparently everyone will believe you just by reading it. That's 15 XP. And now we're going to travel back to the goblin camp through the waypoint system. Thankfully we don't have to manually travel there. That would be a, a rough trip. And we're going to go back into uh, the main building here by heading north. And this time, we're going to, uh, we're mostly going to be collecting a bunch of gear in a place that we w really shouldn't be at yet, but it, we'll, we'll handle. We we have some pretty strong characters. We got Lazel, Asterion. We're also level 4, but in my testing, some players do not reach level 4 yet, so I will talk about what we will do about that. So, from here, we're going to go west. Yes, I had a, I had a peek. We're going to travel west. And as tempting as it is to open this door with the key, don't. Because this little row of moon glow is going to get pissy at you if you do. And don't talk to her yet, by the way. We'll talk to her later. But um, we want as we want some discounts, uh, which we can we can get later. But we're going to jump the gap now. Everyone's going to jump the gap. Just jump in the gap. No one cares, apparently. Maybe in uh, honor mode they might. But we're going to enter this priestess quarters entrance, which we have the key for. Because we looted it from priestess gut. Now, once you're inside here, uh, there's a few ways to fight the ogre. If you're on a higher difficulty, I suggest that you just climb up on this ledge and shoot ranged attacks at Polma. Don't bother trying to negotiate. It's a it's it's a freaking ogre, and um, they caught me stealthing. But uh, I want her to get. If you try to, if you pass this little line, she gets pissy. So here you go. Okay, okay. My humble apologies. I shall remove myself. We're going to stealth and then use a staring and get some cheap hits in as soon as she walks away. We're just going to open fire. So that's one hit, two hits, three hit. We got three hits before we initiated combat. And um, once we get certain items, we can do that infinitely without ever initiating combat. So uh, as a staring normally does, he dashes. So he gets those lightning charges. He's got seven opening with seven is just nutty. And uh, she She's not very dangerous. Polma is not a dangerous character. It's just a big ogre, right? <laughs> you know, I actually wondered what would happen if um, you, you use the ogre horn here. That, that would be an interesting little uh, thing, but I don't think anything happens. I mean, it's whatever. So our healer is still kind of weak right now and can't really do much in combat. So just you can just attack with your mace. You can attack with your crossbow. You can do produce flame and throw flame. You're, you're mostly just a support at this moment. But Lazelle, that's our carry. Look how hard she hits. Boom. <laughs> uh, now, remember, Shadowheart is... Uh, she's not level... She's technically level 4, but not, we haven't put that in yet. But she's got a punch and a bonus punch. And she has sparkle hands now. So she's going to start hitting pretty hard here pretty soon. And then you have... Uh, you, you know, you have Asterion who is just fully lightning charged right now. 
He's just gonna zap and kill everything. If you go south, in the Gilded Chest is an amulet of Misty Step. All the other YouTube guides, they love this thing. They think it's such, it's like the greatest thing ever. But in my routing, I have, I've never found a real use for it. But feel free to loot everything in the rooms. Alright, once you've looted the rooms, continue to the east. And we're going to go into, uh, I don't know, just a little ruins area. There's really nothing here. There's some platforms you can jump on. There's a whole lot of nothing, though. And we're going to continue now north. And we got a little puzzle room. Oh boy, don't you just love puzzles? I'm going to give you the puzzle solution, but I'm going to tell you the quicker way to do it is to just use a Sterian. And uh, you, just, you just take a Sterian right here to the north wall, because it's going to open this door. And yeah, right here. There's this little lever you can lockpick. It's really easy to lockpick, and that'll pop it open immediately. But I'm going to give you the puzzle solution for people that maybe they don't want a lockpick character. So, here is the solution. You're going to face north. Face your camera north. And just follow the instructions on the screen. Spin the south disc three times. So, I'm going to unlink my party so they don't step on this and I click on them. So, I'm going to go over here and spin this. That's one time. You can see how long this takes. Two times and three times. There we go. Now, we're going to spin the west disc. That's the one on the left. Once. And now, the south disc. Once. And now the north disc, once. And now the west disc, three times. There's one. That's two. And three. And now we're going to spin the east disc, that's the one on the right, twice. So here we go. And I, you, I know you get this, but there are some people out there that simply do not get this, and I have to explain it as simple as possible. Alright, relink your party. And uh, before we head down the S Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater ladder, which it's a pretty long ladder, well, we'll go ahead and do it anyway, right? This is a very long ladder. It, it goes all the way down. You get a little cutscene, Snake Eater. Uh, people might not get that reference. But we're going to, uh, we're down here now. We're, we're in the Cell Unite Outpost. You know, it's a whole new zone. Oh, boy. But let's get let's get to level four. There's some stuff we gotta do for level four. Your healer is going to be at level four. Let's get this stuff out of the way. You're going to just pick any cantrip. It doesn't matter. I like Th thaumaturgy because it gives you advantage on intimidation and performance. Very useful. That's what I recommend. It doesn't matter though. And for your feet, right now you're going to pick heavy armor master. So you're going to. Uh, you, you, you'll get this later, okay? It's It doesn't have much use right now, but uh, plus one strength, very nice. For Shadowheart, you're going to put your fourth level into Monk. So you are now level one Cleric and three levels into Monk. And for your subclass, you're going Way of the Open Hand. Very simple, brainless. Now for Lazel, on easier difficulties, I highly recommend that you just go Savage Attacker. This will let you... It'll save you time with less saves coming because you're going to be using her to one-shot a lot of enemies, okay? Whereas on honor mode, you probably want to go with a great weapon master, which can really change a battle if you land a crit or if you end up getting the final killing blow on an enemy. So, because I'm not playing on honor mode, I'm going with Savage Attacker. There we go. For Asterion, you're going to put that level into Rogue, not Cleric. It's going to try to put it in the cleric for you, but make sure it's level 3. Level 3 rogue, 1 level cleric. Your subclass is going to be thief. And uh, you're, that this is where Asterion gets ridiculously strong. Because, oh, I, uh, I didn't have bro on the screen. There we go. <laughs> but so the way combat works for Asterion now is what he does is he opens with cunning action dash. This will charge his lightning charges. Then he shoots. Then he uses Cunning Action Hide outside of enemy sight cones. If you're soloing, this basically lets you solo entire towns, cities, camps. You could go solo the Goblin Camp right now with Asterion if you want. They will never find you, but we'll do that later, maybe. It's up to you. Once you're down here, there is a lot to do, and we're actually going to do some pretty tough fights. And if you're playing an easier difficulty, you don't have to do this next step, but if you're playing anything above Explore, I highly recommend it. And it's a good way, it's a good thing to teach you now how to do it. So we're going to go to camp, and the very first thing you're going to do is grab a magic item. Do not talk to Gale. Do not talk to him, because if you don't have a magical item, 
and you talk to him and you tell him, like, I can't help you right now, he will just leave. He will full-blown leave the party and you will never see him ever again. So, do not click on him until you have something you're ready to feed him with. And there's the chest, so I'm just going to go and... Uh, I'm not going to feed him anything of, you know, that we're using in our builds. No, we're going to just uh, grab a random junk item here. And for those that don't know, you can hover over the item like this Everburn Blade. And at the bottom of the tooltip, you'll see where it says Gale can absorb this item's magic, destroying it. So that works. And we're going to return to Gale now. And yeah, it's uh, we're just going to feed him. Just give him an item. Now, this is another time where you should talk to every party member in the camp and exhaust all of their dialogue. Just coming down here advances the story a bit, but not really. Everything on the surface is untouched. Also, at this point when you talk to Asterion, assuming you're not playing as him, spoilers, he is um, a vampire. And what this does is it unlocks his ability to bite people, which we'll get to in a bit. So once Asterion has revealed that he's a vampire, it is time to feed on someone. And if you feed on anyone in your active party, it will get a bloodless debuff, which you need to use lesser restoration to get rid of. But uh, if you feed on certain characters like Gale, his blood's poisonous. And uh, Karlak is too hot. Uh, there's just a lot of bad choices. But Will is a nice regular blood bag, even when he is transformed, which he is not yet. So we're going to just bite Will. And what that's going to do is give us the happy buff. And boy, oh boy, this is powerful. Plus one to attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. So what that means is he is now even better at pickpocketing, he's better at stealth, he's better at lockpicking, and it, it's just an amazing buff. It is absolutely crazy good right now, and he only gets better as the game continues. So before we proceed, we are going to abuse a game mechanic known as camp casting. And we're going to be using Gale as our main buffer, and I'm going to teach you... All the methods how to do it. There's not a single YouTube video out there that shares everything I'm about to share with you. So this is very important. But for the sake of the guide, you're going to talk to Lazelle and you're going to tell her to wait in camp. And she's going to get Chuck. She, gonna, she just says Chuck. <laughs> so tell her to remain here. That's going to free up, up a party spot. Blah, I can't talk. That's going to free up a party slot. So go talk to Gail. Make sure that you've already fed him a magic item, as I stated earlier. And then invite him to your party. Join me, why don't you? Switch to Gale, and we're going to respec him into a cleric using... Uh, where is Withers in this camp? Withers is around here somewhere. But uh, once I find Withers, we'll respec. Wow, okay, so Withers was right next to Gale. Anyway, we're going to respec Gale at, to cleric for buffs. So and at level 4, we have a lot of buffs. So we're going to change our class, pay him 100 gold. We can always get that back, as you know, and change to cleric. And trips do not matter whatsoever, but I, I you can cast light on someone's stuff for Act 2 if you want. Subclass, it doesn't matter. You can just pick life. Deity doesn't matter. Abilities do matter. You want as much wisdom as possible, and you want as much constitution as possible. Though it's, it's iffy on constitution, it just saves you having to revive Gale. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? I'm going to explain in a bit. So I'm just pumping Con, Int, and Wisdom. And this will give me the most spell slots and the most HP for what we're going to do. Your skill proficiencies doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it on medicine, uh, but we're not going to use him to craft anything. Now, we're also going to abuse leveling up and vendors real quick just to uh, get rid of some of our junk items. And I'm also going to give away the potion that Gale has because he's never going to enter combat in our playthrough. He's got some camp supplies. We can just hand that off as well. Or you can take all of your characters and hand off the food to Gale. Because when you go to camp and rest, it'll just pull from his inventory. Which, uh, if for organization you can do that, you don't have to. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk to... We have the traveler's chest here, and we're going to sort it. And then yoink out a bunch of stuff that we're going to sell. Which, um, well, looks like about everything up to... Yeah, like right up to there, actually. And we're just going to pick it up. And then we're going to sell it to Volo. Yes, my and make sure you click the little trade button. Just pull his gold out. You don't need the potions or anything. He's not going to sell you anything good. Uh, you're talking to him with, you know, a level one Gale. And just, you know, get your money's worth here. Just uh, click everything in. There we go. We're given six. Whatever. That's fine. So now, whenever we level up, it's going to refresh his inventory. Unless they patch this. He shouldn't have patched it. Cleric level two. There's, again, nothing important you need to do here. You don't need to prepare any spells yet, don't worry about that. So now that we're level 2, I'm just going to push escape, get out of the menu, talk to Volo again, yes, and uh, we're going to trade him once again, and uh, 
There you go. The gold is now back. He's got a new inventory with some higher level stuff. And just continue, just rinse and repeat this process. Now at level four, which I skipped level three just to save you some watch time here. So cleric level four, you get a feat and what, and the cantrip, again, cantrip don't matter. Uh, the feat, you're going to go down to ritual caster and you're going to learn long strider and enhanced sleep. And you don't really use enhanced sleep, but you definitely need long strider. This uh, allows you to cast this for free infinitely, and it lasts all day on whoever you cast it on. It's free movement for your entire party. I'm going to show you what that means. And again, continue to sell your items to Volo here. Once you're done vendoring, push K, and you're going to ready a few spells. You're going to ready protection from poison. You're going to ready warding bond. And you should have, from if you're the life uh, tree, you should have aid already readied up. And that's all we need, and then Long Strider will always be prepared, so that's fine. And we're going to cast that on our party. So, the way to do this is you want to start with the main character because we're going to refresh our spell slots. And here's the thing. If they patch this, then all you do is go to Withers and Respec and you get your spell slots back. If they patch that, you just make anyone else in the camp a cleric and do the same thing that I'm going to do. And if they patch that, then they took Weathers out of the game, which they're not going to do that. So here's our main character. We're going to cast Warding Bond. There we go. Warding Bond. We're going to cast Protection from Poison. And then we're going to cast Long... Or not Enhanced Sleep. We're going to cast Long Strider. And there we go. So, now I have uh, one more remaining level 2 spell slot, except technically I have infinite. And I'm going to show you how to do that after I go and buff Lazelle with Warding Bond. And yes, you as Gale can buff multiple people. And there's a reason we're using Gale. So, lore-wise, the reason we use Gale for this is because he is officially the camp chef. He's the guy that prepares all the food in the camp. But he's also, he's got that magical thing that he needs to feed magical items to. And for whatever reason, when he is not in our party, he will self-heal whenever he takes damage. And I will demonstrate this now. So, we're going to talk to Gale. What's on your mind? And we're going to tell uh, him to remain in the camp. The and so he's going to go, he's out of the party now. And our buffs still remain. As you can see, I still have protection from pro Poison, Warding Bond, and Long Strider. And then we're just going to take Asterion, or anyone really, it doesn't matter. And what Warding Bond is, is it's completely broken. So Warding Bond is resistance to everything. Every damage source in the game we now take half damage from. But the damage we take will be split with Gale, who heals himself. So as, uh, what is this? Uh, this is Asterion, and you never want to make your main character attack your party members. They will lose rep with you and leave your party forever. So as Asterion, I'm just going to punch the main character until he takes damage, which may take a few tries. All right, so that's three, that's three coin flips lost in a row. Boom. He, see, Gale takes one point of damage. Now watch what Gale does. He's going to puff out his chest and get that HP back. So now, when I talk to Gale again, and have him join me, he just magically gets his spell slots restored. And that is how you infinitely buff your entire party. So, you're going to buff everyone with Warding Bond, Protection from Poison, and then you're going to upcast Aid, which increases your maximum hit points. And once you've done that, you're pretty... Oh, you're also going to cast, I forgot, uh, Long Strider. Very important to cast that. Once you've done that, we're ready to go to the next step. I also forgot to mention Warding Bond gives you an additional armor class, or an AC, which is your defense and chance to be hit. So right now, uh, armor class 16, you can see it's plus 2 from shield, plus 1 from Warding Bond. Don't worry, these numbers will be very high for almost all of our characters before we leave Act 1. Now here's a fun way to group everyone up in the camp, because sometimes they're all spread out. So Gale has one more level to charge for aid, and I don't want to have to cast it twice. So I'm going to take Shadowheart here, I'm going to enter turn-based mode, and I'm going to run over to Lazel. I'm just going to use dash, whatever, and just run over to Lazel. but I'm going to use up the entire meter of run here. So you can see, um, this needs to be like, like, I need to make it where I can't run anymore. So now that I don't have any more action, I'm going to do that for Asterion as well, just dash him over. Make sure that they're all grouped up, because normally when you move them here and you in combat, it's going to 
well, they're just going to walk back to camp. So now his movement is, is exhausted, so to speak. And then what we're going to do is go to our main character, and then we're going to end combat, and they will stay there and not move. So we're going to have the main character move there. Switch to Gale, and uh, have them move here. And he's going to aid all, all four of the party members in one cast without having to run all over the camp and deal with it that way. So there we go. Level 2 spell, and then aid... And maximum HP, this is huge. So everyone, this is basically 20 extra HP. This is like one third of someone's full HP. It's just really powerful, especially in honor mode. Now to unbug everyone, you will have to enter mode again, turn base while on that same character. So uh, for Asterion here, we're gonna enter turn base mode, just move a little bit and then end it and then switch characters and they will walk back. So now they will, they're ready to follow you again in the main world. So now we're going to do a little bit of inventory management. You're going to give, if you have it, it's okay if you don't, but give Shadowheart and Lazel an elixir of hill giant strength. Uh, it just helps, especially in the higher difficulties. You want to make sure that everyone has potions of speed. So I'm going to give two of these to Lazel because she makes the most use of them. And then I don't really... You know, Asteri, it's alright if he has one, but I'm going to give two to Shadowheart because she's got some high DPS now. Especially when she has key, which we can restore with a short rest. No problem. And then, uh, make sure everyone has at least one potion in their inventory because they can throw this to resurrect downed players. Uh, though, again, everyone has heal abilities that are bonus actions because they're clerics, except for Lazel. Um, and, you know, just whatever other potions and, and arrows and stuff, just split split it up between your party. And then as far as everything else goes, our entire party right now is resistant to everything. We aren't going to be poisoned or deal with poison at all for the most part. Three out of the four characters... Uh, well, Shadowheart is the only one that can be sleeped or charmed currently because Lazel's immune due to her sword. Asterion and your healer are immune due to being elves. So <laughs> you're basically... You're, you're, un, you're just overpowered right now. And we're going to go kill some big monsters and a lot of small creatures, and get a whole big ton of XP. Not enough to level us up, but enough to get us close. Make sure that you save after buffing, because if you miss a perception check, you'll have to start over in this area. So here we are, back in the Salunite outpost. Make sure that you just pick up all these ex explosive or oil barrels, send them to camp as you normally do, and uh, make sure you've tidied up your inventory. Remember, the, the ogres have a thousand of our gold, and we have plenty more items that we can vendor, but go ahead and feel free to loot the stuff if you want. But we're concerned about this area to the east. And Asterion, with his happy buff, is more than happy to uh, pick, lockpick everything that's currently in Act 1. You look at all these skill bonuses we've got. And we're going to be getting even more than this in, in a little while. And we're even going to have permanent advantage on doing this forever. So it's like a double, per it's like 50% more chance. There is a chest here that's locked, but it's just it just has a paladin item. There's this doorway right here. Someone has to make a perception check. You can open that up. And then inside here is going to be your Radiant Tank's main chest piece armor. It doesn't do much right now, but we're, we're still going to loot it. So disarm the trap. Again, you have uh, an overpowered Asterion here with way too many bonuses that can easily handle these locks. And there we go. Now we lock pick it. And inside is the Luminous Armor and some money. So Luminous Armor, for now, goes to Lazel. It will go to Minthara later, or if you want to use Lazel, that's fine. Now, Lazel has some pretty good base armor. Uh, she starts with the Gith Yankee half plate. You can give this to Shadowheart, or you can give it to your healer. It, don't give it to Asterion, though. I'm just going to give it to the healer. There we go. So armor class 18, 17, 19, 17. We're pretty tanky. And uh, feel free to, again, loot more stuff here and, you know, lots of useful potions there. And again, make sure you pick up every single one of these oil barrels. And there is a waypoint right here. Sometimes you won't discover it from this room. So make sure that you get close to this window seal or you come down and you discover it. Now, besides looting everything, which I'm not going to show footage for because I'll do it off camera. When you're ready... You're going to come up here to the north, and on the left or right side, it doesn't matter too much. And make sure that you have Asterion leading, because we're going to make sure that we pick up some free experience points. And if you don't do this correctly, you won't get the experience. So there's a Minotaur that's going to charge this gate and get shot by turrets. All you have to do as Asterion is shoot the Minotaur, which 
Uh, I have the wrong weapon selected, so let's make sure we get a shot in. Just start blasting him with your bow. It won't put you in combat, because he's busy attacking the gate. And we shot him a few times, I think. There we go. So we got 75 XP from that. Now, I know that may not sound like too much, but th these XP bonuses add up big time. And uh, once that's done, there's no more Minotaurs that'll charge the gate, so just feel free to break the crystal here. And uh, there you go. So, to unlock this gate, there is a lever right here behind this candle. So, you can go ahead and do that, but we're not going to go out this gate right now. Also here, uh, there is a plate helmet, uh, just kind of on this bench here on the northwest side of the main room where the Minotaur is, well, where this gate was. You can put it on if you want, you're proficient in it, so it's not going to hurt anything. It's medium armor, anyway. Uh, again, it's just a plus one constitution save throw, it won't really make a difference, but you do whatever you want. Now, if you want a very minor ranged upgrade for Lazel, climb up this ladder here where we shot the Minotaur from, and then on this Skelly Bro, there's a heavy crossbow. It, we're going to get a much better one very shortly, but, you know, an upgrade is an upgrade, so right now she just had a crummy short bow, and uh, now she has a heavy crossbow that deals way more damage, so it, it's, it just helps. Now, in the Underdark is something you won't find anywhere else in the game, I believe, is the Chasm Creeper. Make sure you pick these up whenever you can because they are used for the growth potions, which just gives you one to four extra damage. From the Cell Unite outpost, you're going to go north down the stairs. You're in the room with the, the, the statue of the crystal. Go west and there's a window seal. What I want you to do is use your healer's Summon Quasit, Cheeky Quasit ability and unlink him from the party. And you're going to go out this window seal, and then he's going to go, or she is going to go down this, these knotted roots, and then go north, uh, I'm sorry, south-ish over here. And there are these petrified drows, and you're just going to auto-attack them and kill them. And the reason why we're using the, this is so it doesn't trigger the fight. And what happens is a, you get attacked by a giant monster, okay? And, um... <laughs> like, he unpetrifies these three guys, and then they fight you, and it's a real pain in the butt. You have to knock them out of charm and then fight the spectator. So, this is just- this just makes it way, way easier. Just kill all the petrified drows, and then we're gonna start the fight. And it's, again, like, I, we're just laming it at this point. On easier difficulties, you could have these guys, you know, they're not gonna- you're not gonna lose on easier difficulties with this overpowered party, but this is more of an honor mode strat, and it's, uh, it's a good one. Also, can he stop missing a petrified target? That's weird. I have 80% chance to hit it. Look at all those misses. That's weird. Why is this one so tanky? Anyway, what's- what's the deal with that? These guys don't really have any gear that we're gonna be missing, and- and yeah, they- they have a few story things and stuff, but it's nothing that we need, so I'm gonna- Position the cheeky quasi up here, and now we're going to approach. And uh, this is a totally skippable fight, and even in higher difficulties, you you wanna you wanna take it. Also, there's a petrified guy there. I don't think they revive that one. Also, there's random explosions sometimes. And yes, these little plants will explode and hurt your party. So be aware of that. Don't get knocked off the cliff. And here we go. There's the spectator. And yes, it does surprise you. Well, I guess he does revive that one, so I missed one. Well, I've never seen him revive that one, I guess because I always kill it before he gets a chance to. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to kill this spectator, and he drops a nice amulet, so I'm going to skip the fight. It's it's very simple. It's just tank and spank. It's really easy. For these guys, if you, want, if you don't want to kill them like I did, then all you got to do is hit them once, and it will break their charm. In this case, I'm going to have her not break it, apparently. But, um, yeah, everyone gets surprised, except for the quasi, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, I'll just f finish the fight real quick. So after the fight, the spectator drops the, uh, spectator eyes. It's just wounding ray. That's really the only useful thing. There's ray of fear. It's not, it's not that useful, but for your healer, it's the best DPS option you got right now. Uh, but that's, uh, we're, we're gonna be fixing that relatively soon. Once the fight is done, you're going to proceed west through the fart gas clouds. Uh, just walk through them. Uh, you can loot the skellies if you want. Uh, nothing on them. Backpack here. Uh, just some junk. Whatever. Send to camp. Now, the AI, and yeah, that does hurt. Whatever. But hey, <laughs> you know, we got protections. Uh, this cragged rock is really awkward for the AI to climb down because they see traps and they see gas. And they normally don't want to do it. 
So just separate your group and manually make them all run down it. It's, uh, <laughs> it'll be quicker this way than trying to get the AI to work for you. So there we go. And then after that happens, you want to heal up because there's another fight immediately. Keep everyone near the Cragged Rock and then make sure that they are stealth. And then what you want to do, again, keep them all back. Except for the quasi. Now, this used to work. You could send the quasi forward and trigger the fight. Uh, just as a sacrificial official lamb. Looks like they patched it. Yeah, of course they didn't. I mean, why would they, right? So send in your next tankiest character according to our AC. Aster we're not sending in Asterian. No, we're sending in our healer because uh, why not? And we don't have to stealth them, but uh, this is a bullet, bullet fight. Uh, th our, our healers are lowest DPS, so we're going to get knocked down. Turn-based mode, just turn that off. There's the fight, and uh, he's going to jump down there, putting these two in combat. Uh, the quasi can go slap his butt. There we go. The healer's prone. Everyone else is out of combat. You can relink them up. You can stealth, and uh, you can have a nice, powerful opener, especially since he is facing the wrong direction. Everyone should pass the stealth check. And uh, sometimes this thing runs away, and if it does, load game, because... It, we're not going out of our way to fight this thing, but it's another free XP bomb. It doesn't really drop anything super useful. It's just really good for XP. And the reason I had everyone ungrouped is because on honor mode, on tactician, when he uproots out of the ground, he could wipe your whole party if he crits. It sucks, and it's happened before. Uh, with warding bond, not so much, but on honor mode, it's a full party wipe, and you don't want to do that. So go ahead and just beat him up. It's just tank and spec, nothing special, no special techniques. Once the boulette is dead, you're going to save game, and we're going to separate Asterion because he's going to be solo for a little while. For quite a bit, actually. And so we're going to move Asterion away from the main group. We're going to climb down this cragged rock that is located well, approaching south. There we go. And we're going to shoot this torch stalk that is to the east. Go ahead and get rid of that. And then shoot this one that's over here as well. And then we're going to jump east across... Hello, game? Let me move. For whatever reason, I can't move. There we go. Uh, we're going to jump across these little platforms here. And down we go. There's a skeleton here. You can loot the Helmet of Autonomy, which you don't really need. It is just Wisdom Saving Throw. So it's better than uh, it's better than what uh, Shadowheart has. So we're just going to send that to camp and give it to Shadowheart for now. And now everyone has little dorky helmets. So, <laughs> all right, now for the other party members, you're going to take them and you're going to warp to the Selenite outpost so that they're nice and safe and that they don't get randomly exploded by things. And they're going to be chilling here for a while. So for Asterion, though, we're going to go ahead and save game. And there is Cragged Rock that leads down. Now, I will say that if you're playing something that, that's not in the sky, like a bleed build, you want to do your research on this area and sacrifice a party member because there's a permanent buff to get here that will help your bleed builds. But because we're playing Asterion, we're going to cheese this entire zone. Now, these enemies are only level 2 with very low HP. And we're going to solo all of them with just Asterion. And it's and the way we're going to do it is it's just amazing. Uh, to make this easier, I'm going to give uh, him the Crusher's Ring for a bit more move speed and haste helm. Just for now, I'll swap back after we're done. And uh, we're in stealth. And we're just going to control and left click all the living creatures to death. And there we go. And so I'm going to re-stealth every time I get a chance. And these guys are going to start investigating, especially this one climbing down the ladder. He thinks he's smart. He thinks he's, you know, cool. He's going to come arrest us or some shit. But uh, we're going to stealth. And here comes, oh, here comes everyone else. But, you know, I'm in stealth. That one's dead. We're going to just, again, and there's another way to lane this. We will eventually be put in combat. Just start spamming. We picked a fight. whoop de doo Who cares? All right. So it's our turn. We're going to dash. And watch this. This is so lame. We're going to go up to Cragged Rock. And that ends combat. And now we're going to stealth and go back down the Cragged Rock. And we're just going to start blasting. Look, they're all just right there. They think they're healing. They think they're cool. We're just going to control and left click spam them down. There we go. Well, that one dodged. So, again, you're just going to dash, rinse, and repeat. You're going to get initi initiative every single time on Asterion. That is what he is built for. And you're going to clear this entire place out with this method. It is so much faster than fighting normally and much less dangerous, especially on honor mode. And there we go. Just start blasting and you're just going to fry everybody. Also, sometimes if they're right here, you could shoot the water when you have lightning charges and electrify 
Electif uh, electrify, that works. All of them. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna keep doing this until they're all dead. So what we just did is we earned 750 experience and it's super quick and easy to do. And look at this, we, we like just hit level 4 when we came down here, sorta, of, kinda. Of. We're almost halfway to 5. It's super worth it. Most of the loot on these guys are worthless, but Pull Drip the Zealous, he has a blue weapon here called the Sickle of Bowl, which is 190. It's worth 190, so you might as well pick it up, but uh, these things are just throwing javelins. They're not really worth picking up. They're all cheap stuff. Some of them have crossbows. Uh, again, six, sil six gold, ten gold, who cares? Uh, there's Bowl over here. He's got, uh, he, he doesn't have much. I don't remember him having anything good. It's not in my notes. Uh, there's a chest over here with absolute garbage. It's randomly rolled. It's just, like, <laughs> nautical treasure, I guess. Uh, but, you know, Bowl's got a few little gems and some food and little packs. Again, there's some starfish and stuff. If you want to decorate a camp, I guess. Uh, again, there's, like, uh, copper ring clamshell. These things are worthless. And then up, uh, north... And west, there is a chest right over here, and I don't remember anything good in this chest. I think it's something that our builds don't use. But uh, you can go ahead and, and grab it if you want. But again, there's just the crossbows. Those are worth about 30 gold each. And we'll go ahead and open this bad boy up. 29 gold and 45 from the glass goblet. Not really worth coming over here for. But we're going to leave back up uh, west here through the craggy rock where we came down. And uh, we're going to continue yet an entire mission solo, and then we're going to go and stealth our way to a town, and that's what's coming up. Alright, so we still have that haste stuff on us because we're going to be using it. We're going to uh, jump back over the, uh, whatever these are, these little mushroom things, and we're heading west. We are heading west. If you want to shoot these little explosion doohickeys, these little torch stalks, you can. You don't, I mean, you don't have to. It, it's... They're just minor and minor inconvenience. There we go. And we're going to continue west. And let's try to change the camera here. Through this big rocky doorway. Just straight west, kind of southwest, I guess. You're going to get to this room. And uh, as soon as you get like close to right here, it's going to put you in turn-based mode. You can use dash and get behind cover. In turn-based mode. These are turrets. They'll chew you up in honor, in honor mode. These things hurt, even with... Um, Warding bond, so be careful, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna enter turn base mode, and then you're gonna use your dash, or uh, you can use dash, and you can use cunning dash. And look at our move speed, it's 45 meters. So we can just run straight up to this front door here. And uh, the haste helm doesn't really help here unless they shoot you and put you in combat, which, um, that's weird. That's not supposed to happen. That's a glitch. And we're just going to run right up to the front doors here west. We're going to end uh, turn base mode and we're going to, again, get right behind this little window here. We're going to jump through the window and immediately go into turn based mode. So here we go. And we're, we might take a shot here. Alright, so there's a turret right there. We're going to, again, use dash. Use cunning dash. And we're going to run to this doorway to the south and open it. And then we're going to run through the doorway and we're going to close it. And then we're good. We don't have to worry about the turrets now. And yes, there used to be a chest in this area that uh, was called the mundane chest, which used to be a cheat for lowering the weight of your uh, inventory. But they they patched it, so it's no longer in this guide. From here, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that you make a save, and you're gonna start jumping down here. And there we go. So we've jumped down one floor now. You will take damage because Asterian is not uh, keen on jumping. We're gonna pop open this door here. And uh, inside, it's safe. Don't worry, it's completely fine. Go, go ahead and loot the supply pack to the west. And this threadbare book, go ahead and read it. Read this threadbare book. And it's going to just give you some gibberish. Don't worry. And then we're going to proceed north and grab the tin mask spores. Go ahead and just grab all of them. Uh, they're they're kind of useful. It doesn't hurt to grab them. And then circle around the room here. And grab the Tongues of Madness. Alright, there we go. Tongues of Madness acquired. We're going to exit back out to this door here. And we're going to make a, a longer jump down below. Yeah, it's going to hurt, but it's okay. There we go. He's got, he's got, like, he's a rogue. Come on, rogues, you know, they're good at, like, jumping down things, right? So, we're going to proceed west. And uh, we can't shrink down. We're going to ignore that. 
You're gonna grab a Susser Bloom. You can grab either one, it doesn't matter. So go, go ahead and grab the Susser Bloom, and then we're going to proceed east to the locked door here. And I, I make a safety save here because I've, I've actually failed this for some reason, but because you can't guide yourself. You're, you're silenced in, in a way, right? So go ahead and roll it, and you got plenty of stuff to help you open it, so you should be all right. But um, there we go. Now that we're in, we're going to run up. And we got, you know, j just some stuff here. There's a hole you could have snuck through if you're tiny. You're going to go to this power generator and throw in the Susser Bloom and then hit Combine. And that's going to power the place up. Yippee, skippy. Walk up the stairs. And you can loot the place as you go if you want. You know, you can just grab whatever you want. This is a little wooden barrel there that I'm not able to click on for some reason. Come on now, get over there. Yeah, you'll take that, why not? Go ahead and go up the stairs. Up the stairs. And then you're going to click this ascend button three times. So one, two, and three. There we go. So we're on a, we're on a different floor now. You can feel free to loot this floor. And um, <laughs> that book I had you read earlier was actually the wrong book, and it could put us in danger. So we're just gonna I, I'll I'll talk you through it. Okay, my, I I read my notes wrong. Yeah, feel free to loot this room. This button is a doggy treat button. You don't have a collar, so you can't you can't really use it. But um, if you want some uh, Lazell storyline, you can pick up these ciphers and read this torn out paper on this table. It's, you don't really need to though. But The Roads to Darkness, this is the book you want to read. So we're going to read that. Again, more gibberish, blah, blah, blah. And there we go. All right. And then, again, there's uh, there's just stuff to loot. And there's just things to plunder. Might as well go ahead and just grab them all there. Uh, ooh, uh, Ward Fang, very nice. Very nice. And then we're going to go... We're going to save first. And then we're going to go up another floor. All right, so hit the ascend button, and we're going to be approached by a construct named Bernard. So we read those books, and you're going to have a few choices here. The first one I had you read actually gets you in trouble and gets you attacked. We don't want to do that. So you want to see, or I'm sorry, you want to say, Are, or art thou friend at rescue from my lonely wake? Choice number one. And he's going to, he's just going to, don't, don't bother saying anything. Don't say this line, he'll attack you, okay? Do not say, how can I trust? He will be, he'll just attack you. All right, so if you go east now, there is a note on the table called uh, Patched Parchment. Go ahead and read that. There we go, blah, blah, blah. Talk to Bernard again. And then say, these empty sheets are all that's left of you. He'll give you a greater healing potion. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Very nice. All right, and now to the north, just from this table, there's there's a random stool called Stool of Hill Giant Strength. Go ahead and pop that bad boy up and then attack it. Booyah. And now you'll have the Club of Hill Giant Strength. This will set your strength to 19. This this is really useful as a weapon swap so you can jump further. Uh, you, you can give this to Asterion if you want. For now, like, I, I give it to the healer because the healer can make better use of it because they're a melee attacker. Uh, and the ranged weapon is not quite there yet. So again, I just keep this as utility It's just nice to have when you don't have those hill giant strength elixirs around And yeah, there's more to do here But the loot sucks and we don't need it and you may be thinking but it's there's a really good heal staff I saw a guide on YouTube that staff does not stack with our passive bless which there's no reason to waste your turn order manually casting bless. It's not worth it. We're going to get a sword that kind of AOE bless. It stacks bless on top of bless. I'll explain more later. But for now, we're going to teleport Asterion back to the Cell Unite outpost. Which it's a little hard to click. So just click it on the waypoint list on the right side. He is still soloing, by the way. These guys are still chilling. They're just having a little picnic. They're chatting. They're like, I don't know about this vampire guy. He's kind of creepy. So, as Asterion, uh, you definitely want to make a safety save. Now, if you're playing on honor mode, make sure you're tapping your shift button and checking sight cones. You don't want to run into a Minotaur. But, this character is way faster than the Minotaurs, and you can, you can stealth kill them. Now, what you want to do is, once you exit this little barricade, you're going to go uh, southwest here, and you're going to curve down this way, and you're going to avoid these tin masks. 
But uh, if you want, you could technically, as soon as they puff up, you can enter turn based mode and loot the spores. You don't need them for anything. They're not really. We're not going to use them. Uh, it's just neat to have. And also grab the chasm creepers along the way. You can grab everything if you want. If you're that kind of player, I'm not going to judge you. And then we're going to uh, shoot the torch stalks. Just go ahead and start blasting. Go ahead and jump across. There we go. Shoot. Just shoot them. Now, you could try to cross this. All it does is make you lose control of your character for two turns. It's not going to hurt you unless you start wandering aimlessly into the torch stalks. That's why we killed them. Now, uh, all you got to do here is, uh, hey, look, there's some uh, mushroom peeps. Just walk up to them. They're okay. And we're just going to tell them, tell the truth of the parasite. You don't need to do any perception, uh, persuasion checks. You don't need to do any of that stuff. They're going to let you in. You're cool now with them. You're a cool dude. You're a cool guy. Simply continue north here, and hey, look, you got the waypoint. Go ahead and uh, grab grab your party. Switch back to your healer, who's chilling. And then teleport back, or teleport everyone into the Myconid colony. You are now all linked up, and we already did the quest that we need. Once you've made a save, if you're on honor mode, this is, you may not get this in honor mode. That's okay, it's not that powerful, but it's it can be powerful when used correctly. You're going to curve around to the east here and there is a guy named Blurg. What a name. So you're gonna to talk to Blurg and just uh, talk to him about this society of brilliance, choice number one. And then uh, tell him a mind flare infected me with a tadpole. Explain the whole story. He's gonna bring out his friend Omelum. And then you're gonna list, don't fight this guy. He's very useful. All right, relax and let him search your mind. There we go. Can you extract the tadpole? That doesn't sound ideal. Tell Omolum about the strange mind flare ship you are on. Thanks for all the information. Bypass? What kind of alchemy are we talking about? Now you get to say, I think I already have what you're looking for. That's why we went to that tower for. We got the... Uh, <laughs> The tongue and the spores. Alright, so we're going to drink the potion. Make sure that you talk to the, this guy with your healer. You want your healer to get this permanent buff, okay? Drink the potion. You're going to have to pass some checks. You're going to draw on your willpower and resist if you're playing the healer. If you're pl not playing the healer, good luck, okay? So there we go. And also, add your bonuses. So you're going to add resistance from... Asterian, and you're gonna add bless from I guess yourself. It's fine. Whatever. It doesn't matter and that's gonna increase We got 10 to 16. We need a 10. Let's go got 19 pretty good. There we, we did it We're gonna need to pass another one, but you're a cleric hopefully and this one gives you advantage So call to your god for protection and there we go. We, we did it. We got the perma buff All right I felt it grow inside. It doesn't matter what you pick from here. I will do all this tadpole still lodged in my brain. Now, what you want to do now is, how about I tell you more about that nautiloid? Every last detail. You can infinitely try this and do a performance check. And then you can add, uh, I believe thaumaturgy is, is advantage. That one's nice. Uh, so yeah, we'll just do thaumaturgy because it's free. And there we go. We got advantage. And then we'll do guidance from either of the other two party members. So, again, if you don't pass this, you can just walk away, talk to them again, and try again and again and again until you pass it. So there we go. So we just got a free ring. Not a big deal. All right. So there we go. We also got the Guild Artisan Inspiration. That's extra bonus XP. We got the Quest Completion XP. Where are we at on levels? Well, you can see that doing quests is not as good as smashing through boss monsters. So here, here's the power that your healer received. This is why I prefer on healer. It's called Survival Instinct. And what it does is for, I think it's two or three turns, if someone reaches zero HP that you cast this on, they will come back to life and heal a little bit. And uh, yeah, they receive the buffs from all your heals. So it's really nice. All right, there's lots of good stuff to buy from Omelum. So we're going to talk to him. I greet you. And then, uh, let's see, let me see your wares. If you don't do those quests, you can't see his wares. I know, it sucks. Now, let's assume that uh, the Gale exploit got fixed. The Pearl of Power Amulet, it's really useful if you don't want a shorter long rest. So I recommend buying it. I put it on Gale, it works great. Boots of Stormy Clamor, you're going to buy this for your Radiant Evasion Tank. 
Right now, that would be Lazel. Later, it will be Minthara if you choose to use her. And then we also have the Ring of Salving. This is best in slot for your healer. So we got three items, and we're going to go ahead and buy those. You don't need to buy any of this other stuff. Well, actually, yes, you need to buy all the Void Bulbs. They're very cheap. This whole stack costs 20 gold, and we're going to one-shot bosses with these things. So buy them. And I know we looted some from the start of the game, but in case you didn't, this is your <laughs> redemption arc. So this costs 237, which we have plenty of gold. Look at that. 237, and now we got it. So go ahead and equip those items. So here we go. Open the right menu. We got uh, Ring of Salving. Our healer's stacked on rings. Lazel can take off those smelly alien boots and, uh, you know, sell them on Craigslist or whatever. <laughs> All right, send those to camp, and we're gonna we're gonna send this ring of mind shielding to camp. I really wish this had roleplay usage. I have not found anything in the game that ring of mind shielding actually helps you with. I I wish there was something. Also, I've been doing all the lock picking with gloves of archery instead of gloves of power, but we're gonna get better gloves shortly for that anyway. From here, now that you've done everything, save always safety save, and you're going to go west. Just kind of follow the little dirt path along here. And you're gonna see, I believe it's a dwarf woman. I think she's a dwarf. She might be halfling. I'm not really. I'm, what, let's see, what is she? She is a gold dwarf. There we go. Her name is Dar Dareth Bone Cloak. Uh, interesting name. So go ahead and talk to her. She's gonna complain about her husband, whatever. Show me your wares. Don't bother. And, uh, you know, there, there's some okay things here. Like, um, she usually sells some interesting ingredients. Drow Poison, very useful for Asterion. I'm going to go ahead and buy that. Elixir of Hill Giant Strength, buy that. Elixir of Heroism. These are all really good items that will, you know, serve you later. Invis Potion, absolutely. And um, what we're mainly looking for is Caustic Band. This is a plus two damage ring for Asterion. Uh, also, this Amulet of Restoration. This is a free mass heal cast, which we're going to use for pre-buffs without wasting spell slots before big fights. For Honor Mode, for easier difficulties, you can skip this if you want. Um, also, as far as ingredients go, she's got Warg Fang, some, again, these are random. Smoke Powder Bombs are always useful, we're gonna buy those, absolutely buy those. Uh, let's see, Pegasus Feather, that's Elixir of Heroism ingredients. Uh, Hill Giant Finger, um, we want the Cloud one. You can't get that till level 6, so we'll come back later. You absolutely, if you're murder hoboing or playing an evil run, or like some sort of, you know, extinction run, or whatever they call it where you kill everybody, don't kill her until after level 6, because this is your goal to get 27 strength in Act 1, and I'm telling you, it's worth doing. So she wants 564, we got that, and uh, 564, go ahead and just, there we go. And now we're going to equip all of her stuff, I'm not going to talk to her about her problems, you know, to, to me she's just a vendor. We're going to put that Caustic Band uh, right here on Asterion, and we're going to give back Crusher's Ring to Lazel. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Drow Poison to Asterion there. Uh, Invis Potion's fine. All this other stuff is, is fine for now. And yeah, go ahead and make a safety save, of course. So if you've been watching the video point by point and following along, you're good to go. But if you skipped up to this point for whatever reason, you need to buy an antidote from her, which is right here. It's usually the first thing she, she sells. Go ahead and buy this antidote. All right. Because there is a uh, halfling or a gnome, I forget, I don't, I don't know what she is, she is a gnome, and uh, <laughs> they all look the same, and we're going to cure her of her ailments, so we're going to walk right up here, this is uh, southeast up here, and there's this, uh, her name's Thula, go ahead and talk to her, and then what's wrong with you, and then uh, give her an antitoxin, there you go. You could also cast Lester Restoration on her, that works. This is the cheap and quick method, so there you go. Slurp it up, lady. Why are you helping me? And uh, just be nice to her. How can I pass by? You were in pain. You're in no condition to help anyone. All right, I'll free your people if I can. And then she gives you some really powerful boots. Very broken boots. These boots can stack and stack and stack and stack. So you're going to give these to shadow heart and now everyone has a nice new pair of uh what do the kids call boots these days i don't know <laughs> um <laughs> anyway boots of speed a super amazing ability everyone is now big <laughs> big energy on movement we're gonna give that haste helm back to lazelle as well and safety save 
By the way, if you're playing on honor mode, check on Gale every once in a while. Because if they're going to patch this, they're going to patch it with Gale first. So make sure he's nice and healthy. He's got the constitution for it. And uh, if you want at this point, you can go ahead and just open the whole camp menu. O uh, open Gale here and just give him the uh, Pearl of Power so you don't lose it. It's uh, There you go. Now it's in his inventory, nice and secure. While you are in camp, I want you to grab three of those oil barrels. Or let's do two oil barrels and a nautiloid tank. Uh, whatever. I, I think I think this this will be fine. And let's check our weight. Make sure we're not overweight. We got. Uh, oh, I just I just I didn't pick up the other two. Okay, that's why. That's uh. Come on, inventory. Stretch out for me. And pick those up. Make sure we are not overburdened. We're close to being overburdened, but we're not. You you definitely don't want to. If you if you're having over if you're having weight problems, offload your food to the camp to Gale to anybody else. Because a lot of, like, there's a lot of weight in this pack. This is 10 pounds. You know, these potatoes are a pound. Wow, only a pound, really? 11? Bullcrap! How small are these potatoes? 11 potatoes are, like, 11 pounds in real life. Any, any, anyway, anyway. So, it's time to destroy the hag. Okay, we're gonna go to the Riverside Tea House. And, uh, we're fully buffed. We're fully healed. We are... We're, we're big movement having... It's time to go inside, and, you know, before you go in, you can loot her tea house. She's got a lot of good stuff, potions and, and things, and uh, you, you might read in some guides that uh, her all her potions are bad and, and no. no like, everything in here is, like, fine. Like, there's a potion of greater healing. Why would you not loot that, okay? Just go ahead and clean out the place. If you're pressed for time, in the south corner here, there's a wooden chest. I already looted it, but it has a speed potion, so grab that. I also want to mention... If you decided to get the Hag's Eye, you cannot get the Invisibility Seeing Eye later. That's why in my guide, I'm not telling you to get that eyeball. Anyway, we're going to walk through the fireplace here, which is uh, northwest. And it's a little weird. It's a little awkward to walk through sometimes. You just hold left click and manually control your character with your mouse. I, don't, I assume in controller, you just use the control stick. But once you're in the overgrown tunnel, we're going to ignore all the poor souls that are you know, having ADHD issues and stuff. And we're just going to turn to the uh, southwest here, and there's a there's a gnarled door. Also, if you're playing a goody two-shoes build, you need to put on a uh, temporary, like, non-lethal. But uh, it doesn't matter what you tell this door, just in conversation, and then hold left-click and walk through it. Again, it's a free, it's just a door you can walk through. So, I like to stealth everyone here and just use a Sterian to peg these guys down, but if you're playing a good playthrough, knock them out, but they're they're pretty much screwed anyway. In my eyes, in my roleplay opinion, you should still kill them to put them out of their misery, but that's just me. I'm not going to really talk about the storyline crap, but I like to stealth everyone in and just start blasting with a Sterian because, again, you can just sometimes completely knock out a per- you can just completely eliminate a whole person. These guys aren't too dangerous, and it's very RNG. Maybe in honor mode they might pose a threat, but you should be able to take them at this point. Uh, there's one called Vengeance, and you want to watch out for that one. It looks like I only got one shot, but the others aren't in combat. So now they're going to stop patrolling around, and uh, you can just kind of, you know, put each one of your characters and assign them to a specific one here. And so I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to move uh, <laughs> everyone around. So let's see. This one over here needs <laughs> needs a spotter, bro. Also, shovel got put into combat for whatever reason. But yeah, we can just kind of mosey on over there. And now everyone's ready to gank. So Asterian took his turn. We're going to dash because he is now in combat. Check sight lines and hide. Again, this, it's it's an easy fight. Uh, shovel can't do much, so we're just gonna run him up. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And just turn. Lazelle is, uh, we don't want to use any of his, her special powers here, like Action Surge, which we used earlier, uh, or Speed Potions. We're going to save that for later. So, let's one shot. Yeah, there we go. And, um, you want at least one of their masks, uh, which I guess I can't loot it right now until the fight's over. Oh, uh, she just, it's like, not her turn anymore, for whatever reason. Uh, Shovel got another turn somehow, but okay, whatever, just attack, why not? And then, Shadow Hearts here. I'm gonna punch her in the back and <laughs> got that bonus attack. It, my game's being a little weird with the, with the turn order, but uh, just finish up the fight. 
So you want to loot one of these masks. Don't put it on. Just loot it. And, uh, you know, clean out any other kind of loot that they might have. I don't know why I'm in sneak mode. But uh, once you're done looting, I'll loot those two, send them to camp, because, you know, it's just, it's just good sales. We're going to proceed north. No, no, no. We're going to proceed west, and we're going to jump over this waterfall. I'll go ahead and send that to camp. And uh, through this waterfall, there's some fart gas, and on easier difficulties, we're just going to run through it. I'll show you that in a sec. So if you wanted to do this legitimately, you would find the, uh, they're, they're like little vents, and you would throw random junk items on the vents. And uh, that would stop the noxious fumes. But we're super protective, we're immune to poison. Uh, shovel here might die, and that's fine. You can resummon them next time we uh, do a short rest. It's not a big deal. Uh, but essentially, I like to separate the party, and then take Asterion, because he's going to see most of the traps. And right over here on the west, we're just going to click right under this big tree branch down below. And yes, he's going to get, he's going to explode. He's going to get poisoned. He's going to, yeah, he's going to cause a bunch of fires and just stuff's going to go crazy. It happens. Go ahead and take another character and uh, do the same thing. Lazelle, you can actually just have her jump over all the fart clouds. <laughs> so now that Lazelle's doing the gauntlet and it's fine, we can just heal afterwards. Go ahead and click her over there. And then our healer is last. Shovel might not make the trip. But this is the fastest way to clear this. It is the easiest. And uh, no one's getting too hurt. But again, on honor mode, you, you can't, you're going to have to be careful here. Because, you know, it, it could just get real bad real quick with the low health pulls. Make sure you heal everyone up. And, um, oh, I haven't taught you how to heal yet, like, in, with a legitimate way. For, so for your healer, use the throw command. Grab your cheapest potion. Never throw the actual bottle at anyone. Always smash it on the ground. And what this is going to do is heal at least three to four targets within the AoE circle. And because you're a healer, you're going to buff them. So here you go. And that's going to give them blessed for two turns. So again, that's the optimal way to heal and buff people at the same time. So after you make your safety save, put everyone into stealth. Take Asterion. And you're going to snipe on the southwest side. You're going to just shoot an arrow at this standing torch. And that's going to darken it. There we go. No more light there. And what you're going to do is separate. Okay, put them back into stealth. <laughs> and we're going to kind of inch over here. Now, there's a sight line right here where we can't walk here because uh, Marina, is, I think that's her name, is, is over there. S uh, separate the party. Lazel, our hippity hoppity frog lady, alien. And we're just going to hippity-hoppity down here on the northwest side. And we're going to do this a little quickly. So don't enter turn-based mode because it, it messes up the AI for whatever reason. And uh, we're going to jump up here, hit the control orb, and we're going to jump back very, very quickly. So again, we're still in stealth. Just use your jumps. And hopefully Marina doesn't turn around and see us and act. Okay, our, our hiding failed, but she didn't react and report us. <laughs> I'm reporting you getting banned. So after that is done, relink the party and make another safety save because we're going to cheese. There, there's many different ways to cheese this fight. And uh, on honor mode, you may not get this. It's actually really difficult to get this done. But we're not going to kill the hag. We're going to wound her and make her give us both rewards. So the hag is right here on like this little wooden pallet bridge thing. And she's facing towards the control panel. Uh, but that little corner we jumped into, she she can't see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put barrels behind her. And there's a few cheeses you can do. There's actually a few things you can do. If you don't want to use barrel cheese, you can cast a silence bubble here and start the fight. And hopefully she doesn't walk out of the silence bubble and uh, basically duplicate herself. If she does, I can tell you how to find the legit one using the combat turn order. But... Uh, what you're going to do now is you're going to take your... Okay, she saw us for some reason. That happens. So I'm going to explain how to find her if she splits. On the left side of the turn order, it will always be the real one. So just click on it, and this is the real one. And if you want to verify that, hit her, and she's going to say, Bloody clever clogs. So let's see if we get it. Okay, well, you got to actually hit her, bro. So much <laughs> let's see. Let's get her to say the line. Say the line, Bart. <laughs> Save the line. I'm going to load game anyway. It doesn't matter if I miss all these. Really, I'm going to miss every attack. Come on, uh, bro. <laughs> Real, I'm going to miss every attack, and we're not going to hear the line. That's, gonna, that's stupid. 
Uh, go ahead, just jump up here and slash her, bro. I missed every attack. Anyway, um, and when she splits again and pretends to be Mayrina, it will always be the one on the left of turn order that is the real one. So that's why I have you save, Scum. If you're in honor mode, just do the fight. I'm sorry, it's a tough fight in honor mode. You might want to skip the hag entirely, but the rewards are too good. I, I would, like, if you have... I'm going to show you why later. They're, it's super cheesable, especially in honor mode. Oh, and I figured out why she saw us, because uh, Shovel wasn't stealthing. Apparently, the hirelings don't stealth until you manually tell them to. But what you're going to do is you're going to stack barrels, but not too many. All right, depending on your difficulty, stack the barrels. Which we can just throw them like that. It's fine. And that Nautiloid tank, this shouldn't kill her. And when we blow this, she should be critical. <laughs> Uh, not the YouTuber critical, of course. <laughs> That's about it. See ya. Um, <laughs> okay, and, uh, you know, just use a fire spell and, uh, blow it up and see what- Sometimes it might kill her. You, you just load game if that happens. But let's see how badly we hurt her. And yes, Shovel might die here. Whatever, it's fine. There we go. Alright. And, uh, she's 32 out of 78. That's- that's alright. Let's see where she splits. There's the real one right there. That's the real one. What you want to do is wound her to low HP, but don't kill her. It's very important that you don't kill her. I'm in her sight lines, uh, and we can we can attempt to hide. It's probably not going to work. Nope. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Poor shovel. All right, and with the movement speed, we could we could actually get there if we jump. Like I, I'm pretty sure we can get there if we jump. So let's jump over the fire, and then yeah, we can move next to her. If we crit, she dies. You. Here's the thing. When the way her surrender works, if she is in a silence bubble, she can't surrender. Her surrender starts on her turn. Her surrender is towards the closest player, and you want that to be Lazel. Lazel is the highest chance character to have this succeed because she is Gith Yankee. If you are a Gith Yankee main, have your character be that instead. Uh, but that really makes you not able to use some of the weapons and stuff later in the game. Anyway, that's why we go elf. I'll talk about that later. But for now, let's see if we don't kill her with this swing. And uh, you have a few <laughs> options to not kill. Like, if she's low HP, you can't swing on her with your super sword and lazel. You have to shoot her with your ranged attack. So let's see what happens. And miss. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. We have action surge. I'm not dealing with this. And we're going to try again. <laughs> okay. We're going to potion of speed. I don't have bonus action because I jumped. That's fine. Whatever. It happens. Uh, so uh, we have boots of speed. We can click heals as a bonus action. And now we can run up to her and punch and kick. So let's do that and try to get her wounded. So we're going to punch. There we go. And she has 24. Yeah, see, that's that's the real one. Bloody clever clogs. That means we found the right one. And uh, we don't have any more actions with her, but I could potion a speed. Because I, well, I don't have bonus actions, so I can't drink the potion. Since I use the click heals. And our characters are very resistant to this. If you're, if you're still worried, you could cast... Protection against Fey or good and evil, and you'll have advantage and stuff. Uh, we could try shooting her with crossbow here. Oh, actually, we do have a ray of uh, wounding ray, so that's gonna hurt. There we go. Four. Okay, it didn't hurt. She's uh, very resistant to that. She's not wounded enough. All right, so there we go. Which? Let's see. Is it this one? It might be that one. Yeah, these are the ones that just appeared. So, left turn order is the one up top here. Okay, well, it would help if I didn't miss. I should have also charged my shot. Whatever. You get the idea? Just wound her until you get the dialogue. I'm going to skip ahead. Well, I accidentally killed her with a crit, so this is tip number two now. Let's pop her. Let's see if, uh... <laughs> okay, she just died, so... Maybe we have to take away a barrel this time. Okay, so now I have the hag wounded down to 9 HP. That's more than enough for her to surrender. Uh, what you want to do is with your remaining characters is just attack the duplicate so that they're uh, they're just cleared out. And then you want to position Lazel as close to the hag as possible. And I'll show you what dialogue choices to make. So um, we want to make sure that the... Uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and just kill that illusion. And this is the real one right down here below the, the knotted roots. As soon as her her turn starts, she will then do her surrender action. Sometimes the only way uh, and then, again, you don't have to actually kill the illusions, just hit them with anything. You can just throw water on them or something, and they'll they'll laugh and disappear. 
But uh, after Mayrina, there she goes. Now she's going to surrender. And we're going to say, go on. And then we're going to... If you have Lazel do this, you're going to use Fighter Intimidation. Um, otherwise, you need to use Deception. My reinforcements are nearly here. Uh, this one gives you, uh, I believe, advantage. So this is why you want to use this one if you're a fighter. And there you go. And if your main character is a fighter for whatever reason, there you go. It is slightly difficult to pass, but, um, you know, it's worth it. Reload if you don't. The rewards are too good. And I <laughs> gotta reload. Or you can take, like, this is the one time I would say use inspiration. It's You're going to lose 50 to 250 XP by doing this. Uh, but you can make up, oh my god, I'm reloading. Well, third time is the charm. That's what they say, isn't it? There we go, we got it. All right. So, she's going to uh, rip off her hair. And we get the girl. <laughs> Best of luck, auntie. So... Uh, for the build planning, I have it set to strength because this frees up an elixir slot, but if you don't care about being tankier and more evasive on your radiant evasion tank, that's literally why you have them as a tank, then you could just have them drink the cloud giant elixir instead and go constitution or whatever you want, but I'm going strength and I'm saving Auntie Ethel's hair plus one to strength, bonus forever permanent by the way. For Minthara, if you are using Lazelle as your evasion tank, then you can give it to Lazelle, but I'm not using her, so. So, afterwards, talk to Mayrina, and she's going to be very upset. Try to be nice to her, because you do see her later in the game, and, um, you know, you can be mean if you want. The, the rewards aren't anything that we're going to use, but there we go. Just skip through her dialogue, and that's 20 XP. I don't recommend killing her because, again, she does show up later in the game. But what you're going to do now is go north and open this door. And there's a few things in here that you want to loot that are very, very good. All right, so, again, Potion of Speed. If you used one in the fight, you got one back. The Everseeing Eye, we're going to go ahead and give that to Lazelle. And that just gives her an ability to, to protect herself or someone else from phase and evil and whatnot. It's not super useful. It's good up till about Act 2 and we won't be using it much. Bitter Divorce. There is a wand here on the table called Bitter Divorce. Pick that up. Very important. All right. And then don't drink or touch any of these potions on this table. They sound, they have cool names. Don't drink them. Those can be really, really bad for your characters. But feel free to loot everything else. There's another speed potion in the basket here. Again, speed potions are really, really good. And then a bunch of rings you can just sell later. Send those to camp. And then there's the Staff of Crones. We can just, again, something we can sell. Not uh, super useful. So, Staff of Crones in that camp. Uh, up in the north end, there is a mushroom circle. You're going to go ahead and take that now. And uh, you can't really mess this up, so you don't have to safety save. But we're going to walk up here. And uh, we're going to get a very powerful summon. Repeatable summon. So, I found a wand. I think I can resurrect your husband. Point the wand towards the coffin. This creature is bound to this wand. How useful. And don't worry, I have the wand. I'll make use of him. And now, go ahead and put this in your hot bar. Because this is called Second Marriage. This thing is insanely, hyper, massively, super useful. You can now infinitely summon a zombie. From very large range, mind you. Like, look how far this bad boy can be summoned from. This thing is a very good target dummy. This thing triggers on hit effects. This thing triggers on kill effects. So, for instance, Asterion's bow charges when he shoots. Well, you can just shoot the zombie, if I can hit him, and get some lightning charges. Now we're charged up with lightning. And we can just summon him over and over and over, and then we can shoot, like, a water puddle and electrify the water. There's an insane amount of utility that this zombie has, and he is infinite. This zombie summon is going to be your healer's primary attack in every fight for a little while. And this zombie can run through traps and blow them all up for you. This zombie can scout ahead. This zombie can be infinitely summoned if you're far enough away to have infinite attack turns against bosses. Uh, because uh, you just summon him every single time and have him attack the boss, resummon him from outside of combat. But sometimes if you can do that, it's faster to just use a staring to shoot. The zombie is going to serve you the entire game, and you will never be surprised by an ambush ever again thanks to this guy. 
Now that the hag dungeon is done, we're going to get some camp supplies possibly. They might have patched this by the time you're watching this video, but we're going to teleport to the goblin camp. And we're going to go uh, look at Minthara's body and uh, just grab the, the supplies. They're, uh, again, I don't know if this will be patched by the time you read this. This is not pivotal to anything. This is just extra stuff for free, and it's a lot. So there's no reason not to grab it. I mean, camp supplies, you usually only find one or two on a vendor. But uh, by doing this method, we're just going to go, again, north in this little shattered sanctum. And then we're going to curve around to the right here. And I hate when the camera, like, gets stuck underground. But, yeah. So she's still knocked out, of course. <laughs> also funny that there's just a chest so much of blood around. So we're going to go check her body. And, uh, again, there could be anywhere from 14 to 20 plus camp supplies. It's like a random number, but uh, we're about to do a long rest, so we're, we want to make sure that we grab them before we do that. And here we go. Let's see what we got. Six. So we got a really low amount, but hey, it's still free. It's still free. What you're going to do now is you're going to travel to the Emerald Grove Environs and go ahead and make a safety save just in case. And because uh, we don't have any more fog cloud charges on Asterion... If you're playing on an easier mode, you could just respec them and get those back and continue on. But I highly recommend for everyone else playing on Tactician to long rest here. Because on Tactician, you're going to be out of healing spells and everything's going to be all... You know, like, you're going to be out of superiority die and you're just going to be, like, struggling for spell slots at this point. So I highly recommend a long rest. So let's walk you through how to long rest. We're going to click the button in the bottom right and then click long rest. There we go. And uh, we're gonna get some cutscenes. The Carlac and Will will fight. You wanna, you wanna be nice. You wanna just be on everyone's side, right? Most of these are choice dialogue number one. But uh, just convince them that they're not evil, and everyone will approve. Yay! There you go. And then just talk to them. Whatever. Blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, talk to Will, and then it's uh, time for bed. And there's a lot to do in the morning. to a pantomime. Oh boy, yes, yes, we know. All right, and then you can talk to everyone else too, get their little thought on things. But there's not a whole lot you can do. So we're going to go to bed now and then just auto-select. Sometimes it'll be more than 40. Just keep mashing auto-select until it picks uh, whatever. And don't be afraid to use your camp supplies. We're going to have in infinite, basically. And uh, here we go. Uh, sometimes stuff happens, but if you follow my guide exactly, Scratch should show up. And that's all that happens. So we're going to talk to Scratch now. And you're going to pet him. Go ahead and pet him. Because everyone approves. And then pet him again. And there you go. And if you're a role player, there's a ball over here uh, in Gale's camp. So you can grab the ball. And you can throw it. And Scratch will fetch it. So that, that's a thing you can do. But now it's time to talk to Volo, and if you're squeamish, look away, turn the volume down. Do but we're going to have him do an operation. We're going to lay on the table and tell him to do it. He's going to stab our eyeballs out, and we get a magic eye. All right, there we go. All is well. Yay. So there you go. Now we have the sea invisibility power forever. It does change your eye a little bit, but it's it's hardly noticeable. I mean, look, we st we just ha it's just a little bit lighter colored. So yeah, we look like kind of a doofus now. I mean, whatever, who cares? Uh, I would rather be able to see invisible people. It's super useful later on. Now, anytime Gale has this crap over his head, uh, you know, be wary that you might have to feed him. Uh, but uh, he's just gonna tell us what's going on. My condition likes being ignored. As so little as I we're gonna do. give him a magic artifact, which uh, we don't really have one, do we? Um, <laughs> Uh, well, we're going to replace the glove soon. Um, normally, you wouldn't use this, but um, I didn't make a safety save, so he might run off. I'm going to attempt it. I'm not conveying the urgency Let's see. The <laughs> yeah, he's going to run off. I'm not giving you anything now or ever. Yeah, he leaves permanently. That's why you always talk to him with a magic item, but he only eats three throughout the whole playthrough. I just wanted to show you the bad thing. If he leaves, you, you can't camp cast anymore. Now that it's a new day, you've lost your camp buff, so go ahead and talk to Lazelle and have her chill in the camp. She'll give it the usual chuck. Chuck. <laughs> and uh, then get Gale back in and buff everyone just as we did before. Now, one other neat trick you can also do with Gale is uh, you have the boots um, that give you boots of aid and comfort. You can swap those to Gale real quick and then have Gale just cast an AoE healing spell. 
That's gonna give everyone three additional HP. I know it's not much, but it is gonna keep you alive. Alright, once uh, we are done at the camp, everyone's buffed up. Make sure you safety save, of course, and then click leave camp. Now we're ready to go get some very powerful items. And again, if you want to save Scum Shadow Heart's uh, persuasion here, let's talk to her and see how you go. See how you do. So we're going to now head, uh, what is this, northwest into the Druid Grove here. And we saved a girl earlier from being bitten by a snake, which would kill her. And we're going to cash in on those rewards now, and uh, we have to do this in a very specific order, otherwise you can screw it up. And remember when I told you never to talk to the tiefling children? Well, we're going to talk to them in a very, you know, like I said, a specific order, so that we can skip an entire quest line involving harpies and saving other kids. And it's going to save you a lot of time, and those, the harpies aren't really worth doing anyway. Uh, the XP they, they give, uh, if you want to hear the song, I guess, it's the only reason really to do it. But, um, <laughs> it, again, this will save a lot of time. So, here's the order that you're going to do things. Not having ever talked to Donnie or these two kids, you're going to come right down here to Arabella, who's going to be like, Oh, you saved me from, you know, you saved my daughter, whatever. So, just click on Arabella and skip her dialogue and do option number one. And they'll give you a little worthless amulet, whatever. So now you're going to come up here to Donnie, and you're not going to click on him yet. You're going to do a safety save. Now, the order that I'm having you do things in, you might have to do them in a different order. I'll tell you why later, depending on a patch. But we're going to safety save at Donnie. We're going to talk to him. He's going to grunt. And we're going to click turn around and see what he's looking at. So he disappears, and then we're going to do an investigation check. If you fail this check, you gotta reload. And if you're on uh, honor mode, I'm sorry. Oh, jeez, I fail every roll for this video. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not doing it on purpose. All right, third time's the charm. <laughs> oh, boy. So now we can enter this concealed hatch hideout. So here we go, and this is the dialogue choices you're gonna do. You're gonna talk to Maul here. And the reason we didn't talk to the other kids is you can mess up the relationship with the kids, meaning they won't offer you this quest. So we're gonna talk to them. Well. Look who's come to visit. Happy to help. I thought you might need help with something. I do, as a matter of fact. Revenge. They want you to steal the statue. And then I'll see what I can do. There we go. And then just leave. Don't talk to him anymore after that. You got the quest. You're going to separate Asterion. He is your thief character after all. And we're going to safety save, of course, of course. So this next part, it's a little cheesy. And you might not be able to do this in the order I'm doing it in if there's a patch, but I'm going to tell you how to do it anyway. So at this point, you're going to steal the idol, which can possibly, depending on a patch, make the entire camp hostile and close the druid grove. If that happens, load game, and you're going to kill Kaga first and then do this step. Once you kill Kaga and you steal the statue, they won't freak out anymore. But here's how you're going to steal the statue. We're going to walk right up the little staircase and get right next to the statue. We're going to use our trusty fog cloud ability. And we're going to stealth into turn based mode. Which you can see here I didn't enter stealth. So now we're in stealth and I got detected. Wait, the fog cloud cast it up there. I'm not in the fog cloud. You need the fog cloud to be cast around here. So I got to load game. <laughs> Okay, so this time we're going to make sure we don't cast the fog cloud on this little area, but down here instead, so that we're in it. Alright, and there we go. So we're going to stealth, we're going to turn base mode, we're going to yoink it. Which, uh, it's a little awkward. Get in that fog cloud. You're going to end combat and go to camp immediately. So, watch how I do this. In turn, camp, camp. There we go. We successfully stole it. We can unstealth. We're in our camp. We're going to open tab menu, go to Asterion's uh, inventory, and find the statue. Where, where is it? There it is. Idol of Sylvanas, and we're going to give it back to the main character. There we go. And then we're going to warp Asterion to the Emerald Grove environs. And yes, we do need to do this next step. We're going to run him all the way back, which... I guess he didn't have to transfer the item, right? But, um... We're going to go ahead and just click on our healer here and uh, talk to... He, he, Maul runs around the place, so we're going to talk to him and we're going to give him the idol. So, there we go. I had a feeling you'd be and then, uh, the idol's all yours. 
See in Baldur's Gate. And he gives you, this is a, such a good ring. Ring of protection. Armor class plus one. Saving throw plus one. You're gonna pop that bad boy for now on Shadowheart. And putting our armor class at 18. And uh, yeah. We're gonna borrow this for some skill checks later in the game. So that's why we get it. But Asterion is not happy because there's, a, there's something we gotta steal. There's another theft that must occur. We're getting that idol back. Now, you could just buy it for, like, 800 gold. But why would you spend 800 gold on that? We're gonna get it for free. It's literally a kid. And he won't even know we took it, and he'll never know we took it. And you'll never tell him, either. Because it messes stuff up later. But, uh... <laughs> we're gonna go back down into the hidey hole. Make a safety save, and... Maul, he likes to run off by himself sometimes. He, he patrols around, and so it's really easy to steal it from him. Uh, Asterion is a very powerful thief at this point. Also, there's one thing I forgot to do as Asterion in my camp, and that was feed off of Will. So I'll, I'll go to camp and do that real quick. Um, because, again, it makes doing the stealing pickpocket check easier. Again, don't bite Karlak. She, uh, she's too spicy. Will, he, uh, even in demon form, he is totally fine. To drink the blood of. He's the only pure blood in the camp, I guess. I hope that was an honest and mistake. I'm frozen for some reason. So, there we go. We're good. Uh, game's just calculating stuff. Doing dice rolls behind the scenes. Okay. So, there's Maul. You want to wait for him to walk around and wander off. So, right now, he's just kind of staring. But he will go off by himself where the other kids aren't looking. And, uh, you can see right now, he's, he's still got sight cones behind him. So, right, right here, like... This one maybe works, so I'm going to do a little safety save, of course, of course. And uh, stealth into turn-based combat mode so he doesn't walk away. And yoink the statue. So uh, we failed, which uh, sucks, so we got to load. Because it, it'll piss them off, they're going to run away and stuff. And yeah, it just, it, uh, you, you don't want to piss the kids off. They're valuable later on in the story, and you want them on your side. So, again, just save scum it until you get that statue back. And you may be wondering, why, who cares about the statue, right? The, the guards aren't going to attack you. And it is a permanent aura buff. Uh, it's, not, it's not the most important thing to get. So, you don't have... Oh, he's already wandering again. So, again, we're just going to stalk, stalk him until... He, go, he wanders all over the place. So, he's got many spots where he goes off by himself. But right here is not one of them. We're in Melee's eyeline cone. He, he likes to go up here and kind of gaze at the chasm. So we'll just wait for him to do that. And I'll cut to it. Now, as soon as Asterion steals it, make sure you warp everyone out back to camp. Because they're going to be like, oh, I've been pickpocketed, blah, 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 blah. And then they're going to talk to you. And you're going to pass dialogue checks. And it's just really annoying. And then they'll never trust you ever again. So just as soon as you get it, warp everyone out. And here's what this cool thing does. Uh, let's see. Where is it? There it is. Uh, so I keep this in the healer's inventory. But um, essentially what it does is it gives you this buff. Proficiency in nature and animal handling. And you get this the rest of the game. It is an aura. So it's only working whenever you're near your party members. And uh, hold on. Let's see. Like So so we're walking up to Asterion. And there he, got, he gets the buff. And then if we walk away... He no longer gets the buff, so it's uh, it's a pretty big circle, but uh, it, again, it just makes the game easier, and it's a perma buff, so you need this. But we are not done in the Druid Grove. We need to teleport to Emerald Grove and Virons, and the reason we do this is we don't want to be in in the area where Maul was at because again, he's gonna be like, "Oh, I've been pickpocketed," and you're gonna have to go through a bunch of bullcrap. It is uh, why who's oh Asterion's still in sneaky mode? No Asterion, bad. Hit, his, hit him on the nose of the newspaper. <laughs> That's animal handling for you. Oh, I'm so cruel. Okay, so let's uh, run back now, and we're, we're going to kill Kaga. And in your playthrough, you may not want to kill Kaga, but it's not an evil action. It's uh, if you're if you're doing an if you're playing an evil playthrough, you still want to kill her because the amulet that she gives is best in slot, and the only other chance you can get to this amulet for Asterion is in Act 3, and I don't want to wait to Act 3 to get this. I'm just going to kill her now, and then solve the goblin problem, and then the druid grove is basically done, and the kid that's uh, at the harpies is just going to get eaten. You know, you got to feed the harpies. They're, you know, they're music. You know, they don't, they're not singing that stuff for free. <laughs> anyway, so to get to Kaga, we're going to get back to this middle circle. You can see that uh, no one's upset. 
if a patch happens and they're all upset and Kaga's like, we gotta close the gates or whatever, then you have to kill her first and then do what I did. But you have to get the quest from Maul first before you kill Kaga. Because if you kill Kaga and then you try to get the quest from the kid, he won't give it to you. The quest does not exist, so that's why we did it in that order. So, from here, you're going to separate your group and make a safety save. Because before we fight Kaga, there's one little thing we're going to do. And, it, and if this gets patched, it's not a big deal. Your characters are more than strong enough to fight the fight anyway. You're going to take Lazel and you're going to improvise weapon one of the rats that are near Kaga. This is Kaga, by the way. And you're just going to drag them back up here so no one can see it. And you can throw the rat on the ground, or you can cancel it and kill it. I'm going to cancel it in her turn-based mode and kill the rat. And, uh, spoilers, the rat is actually a shadow druid. And I did not kill it, but that's okay. The other rats have already run away. They cheated time somehow. And, uh, this person will run away too. If I were to, like, switch to Shadow Heart and then attack this person... I mean, you can kill him for XP, I guess. Why not? We'll, we'll just kill him for XP. Screw it. Oh, I have another bonus attack I can use here, so we'll just hit her again. Boop. And there we go. 75 experience. You don't have to kill him, though. The loot sucks. And we dragged him up here so no one could see us commit murder. Let's get going. And, uh, yes, where's the damn loot? There, can't reach... Oh, I'm in turn-based mode. Okay, yeah. I can totally reach that. Again, the loot's no good. Don't worry about the loot. So now that that's done, we're going to separate the party, and we're going to put the healer over here. We're going to put Asterion up top. We're going to put Lazel on this side, and we're going to put Shadowheart on this side. Do not position characters near this cliff. They will die. They can get shoved off in this fight. That's why we're <laughs> we're uh, premeditating murder here. Okay. So we got the archer up there. There we go. Uh, a shovel. A shovel's fine, you know, over here. Just make sure that no one's on this ledge. We're going to summon the zombie zombie. Just right over here. There we go. Safety save time. And then we'll use one of these characters to talk to Kaga. And we've already done the quest to uncover that she's, uh, you know... I know the truth. You mean to take the grove for the Shadow Druids. You're gonna see the cutscene where the rats come out and transform into the... Dwarves or whatever they are. And then Kaga's a Shadow Druid. It, she means to convert the circle. And then you're going to select. You seem intent on forcing me to take your life. So be it. So you'll notice that the three shadow druids that would join this fight and be very annoying and transform into beasts and prolong the fight, they're gone. They're not here. So that's why we threw the rat in the corner uh, so that we don't have to fight them. And uh, also everyone's in perfect position to uh, just DPS down Kaga. Also, this guy's hostile and sometimes there's a hostile guy in here. But if he is not available when the fight starts, you can end the fight and he's just completely unaware. None of their loot is any good except for Kaga's anyway. So it's up to you how you want to proceed and do the fight. I like to kill the little baby ad first. But um, Asterion's a big hitter. So I, I definitely want to hit her uh, with a charged up hit here and critical miss. Of course, this, is, this video is cursed. Oh, and uh, I just want to mention for Lazel's combat... Your boots of stormy clamor when you inflict a condition, you can inflict a condition by shoving people with your bonus action. So feel free to shove people, and when it's well, of course I fail the roll, but when it succeeds, they get reverberation, and so that's always fun. Once the fight is over, you can loot Kaga, and she has this wonderful amulet called the Broodmother's Revenge. Anytime Asterion gets healed, he's gonna get a 1 to 6 poison damage buff. That does not count as a weapon coding, by the way. So you can stack them uh, for 10 turns. And, yeah. And she has a good berry, which teaches you how this stuff works. So we're going to make a good berry summoner maybe later. It's not super important right now, but give that to Asterion. And a good berry, it's a food item for camp, but also it's a heal item. So when you eat the good berry, you heal 1 to 4, whoop de doo But it, uh, it procs. Your Broodmother's Revenge. Remember those uh, gruels that we got earlier? Which, it looks like the game used the gruels on the camp scene. Whoops. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, we, we could just summon infinite good berries anyway by using a, a hireling or making Will be the good berry, you know, crafter. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Druids can craft these. And you'll have plenty of party members later to make most of these. So, you're going to load up Asterion with good berries 
He's going to get an extra 1 to 6 bonus damage anytime he goes on a killing spree. Everything is good. So it's time to make a good berry crafter. We're just going to pick Will. He was the closest guy. It doesn't matter who you pick. And uh, we're going to take Will over here and go to Withers and do the usual respec nonsense. And uh, yeah, so... Hello, Actually, Withers, yeah, to help me change my class. And then you're going to pick Druid. And then just have, like, Wisdom and Charisma. It doesn't matter. Uh, also, Medicine, it, again, it doesn't really matter, but that's just... This, he's just a crafter, right? And then continue to level him up as Druid. At level 2, you will pick Circle of the Land. The cantrip does not matter at all. And then you can just prepare the spell Goodberry. And then there you go. The circle of the land choice doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna pick forest again. These these don't matter. Like he's just gonna make berries. That's all he's his spell slots do. And uh, again, your your cantrip doesn't matter at all. For your level four feet skill and ability improvement, you can uh, you know make these two even. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna use them for anything, and it doesn't help make you good berries. So, there we go, we leveled them up, it's time to make some good berries, good berries are a level 1 spell, and, um, again, it, you can you upcast it, just, just use all of your spell slots, there we go, just pump those berries out, and then give them to Asterion. And I'm gonna skip this. Once you have spell slots, use your natural recovery charges to give yourself more spells, and then cast more good berries. And you can see here that I have, uh, how many have I casted so far? 36 good berries, and we just uh, give that to Asterion, and now he has 36 times he can enhance his damage for completely free. Also, Will, you don't need potions. Uh, you're just a camp caster now, and I'll take that res scroll. Thank you very much. All right, and you're all set. With Asterion leading the way, you're going to, from camp, teleport to the Joaquin's Rest. And this time you're going to travel to the east from the waypoint. Which uh, you can just go through the door if you want, or you can go out to the road. So let, yeah, let's go out to, from the road. So uh, we're going to head south and then east, and we're going to travel along. And I recommend just kind of separating from the group, because we're going to do a little bit of solo action here. Or, well, the group can follow for a little bit. They don't have to be too far behind. But uh, there's going to be some hyenas up ahead that we saw earlier in our adventure. And now it's time to take care of them. Also, yeah, there's hyenas up there too. And uh, gnolls. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and separate here. That's that's good. And we're going to use... Uh, we're going to eat a good berry. Get that poison buff. There we go. And we're going to start blasting. We're just going to start blasting the, the hyenas. So there we go. Take them all out. And uh, we just won't initiate combat because uh, we're also going to stealth. <laughs> so these two hatched, actually. And they're going to run and tell their friends. But we're going to kill them. And we're going to basically one-shot them. Well, that one took two hits. But yeah, they're all dead. Now, hyenas are amazing because uh, they have hyena ears. Which you absolutely want to loot every single time that you can. I'm just going to send these to camp because I'm greedy. Hyena ears are how you make potions of speed, which uh, give you an extra action in combat. They're basically a haste potion. Very, very good stuff, so always, always, always loot hyenas and gnolls, because they will have ears. Very valuable. Now, here's a dead caravan agent, and uh, wizardbane oil, just a sword. We're going to read the note. You don't have to read this note. I didn't send it. Well, I don't have to read the note, so whatever. My bad. Misclick. From here... We're going to go up and kill these bad boys. So, I already cleared this entire camp without having to initiate combat. So, I'm going to save. And you could fight them normally, but this is just... It's just way faster to just control and left-click spam them down. So, I'm going to do that now. Once that pack of hyenas and gnolls are dead, you are directly going to travel north. And you're going to see, like, a little stone here. And you want Lazel or one of your melees, it could be Shadowheart, to lead the way. So I'm actually going to use Shadowheart for this one. But uh, you want to make a safety save because uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going to go on. And this fight can be diff This fight can actually be very difficult on honor mode. So we're going to save. But um, we're going to go ahead and pick Shadowheart. And we're going to walk her right up here. There should be a uh, Knoll scrying on the stone. So... 
I am... I need to go over here, actually. So I'm on the wrong side. And we want to approach from the south side. So we don't want to approach from over here. We want to approach from over here. So... <laughs> There are some dudes in a cave throwing fire firebombs at these gnolls, and by approaching Flind here, who is the gnoll warlord, we're going to convince him to be on our team and get a boatload of XP for it. So I'm just going to take Shadowheart and then click her right here. I'm not going to stealth or anything, I'm just going to run up to it. And uh, Flynn's going to run up here, and uh, when we get close and start combat, they're going to have a little mind discussion. It may, you may have to wait till Flynn's next turn, but whoever is closest to Flynn will be the one doing the talking. So don't bother attacking Flynn. Attack everything else, and don't put yourself at disadvantage, of course. Uh, and I'll, sh I'll cut to that part. So here's the discussion of what happens when you're near Flynn. And he's not silenced. Make sure he's not in silence for whatever reason. So what you want to do is you want to search her mind for the source of the voice. And then... You want to do, you, you are of the same pack. Command her to devour the other gnolls. And then it's, it's a two roll, whatever. I didn't use my bonuses, who cares? Because we're in the middle of combat. There we go. Now this XP number, it's it varies wildly and randomly. I've seen as low as 255 and as high as like 340. I don't know what the cause is, but I will say that anything Flynn kills, you will not gain XP for. Uh, and if they kill Flynn, you don't get XP for that either. But uh, it, it makes this fight absolutely doable on the higher difficulty levels. Of course, if you're playing on easy mode, you're more than powerful enough to just wipe this whole group, no problem. Also, uh, if you're tempted, do not summon the ogres for this fight. You want these humans in this cave alive. So, uh, <laughs> uh, just reload unless you're in honor mode and you have to summon the ogres to save you. But, um... You definitely don't need to. So if you end the fight uh, with Flynn in your control, you can try to make her killer uh, eat herself. Um, or you can just fight her normally. It doesn't matter. Um, I would say just fight her normally for the XP because if you get her to, to eat herself, it's a hard roll, especially with Lazelle, because uh, she's not a wisdom character. Uh, I don't think you get XP for it. Now, after the fight, make sure that you loot Flynn. Also, these guys are just like, blah, blah, blah. You want to just talk to them. Mention uh, that uh, Eltgard's a long way. Where's that? Uh, Joaquin's rest has been burned to the ground. What's in? Uh, don't bother about asking about the cargo, because we already know what's in it. I mean, you may not, but it's fine. Uh, you don't need to read his thoughts or anything. There you go. Everything's Gucci. So that's your in and a nice quest reward. And so we're going to grab the Shattered Flail. And for now, we're going to give this to Lazel. It's not something we're going to really use except for one fight. And then, of course, loot the tadpole. Very important to loot the tadpole. And again, loot all the knoll hunters here. Make sure you grab all the ears. Very important. Once you're done looting, we are going to then transport fast travel to camp. This way, it technically passes a little bit of time. And then we're going to uh, travel to the Zinterim hideout. And once we get there, we will be welcomed with open arms and rewarded and access to a secret vendor of sorts. Uh, with some really good stuff. Some very game-breaking stuff. So there we go. Blah, blah, blah. Skip, skip, skip. We're let in immediately. We got uh, the bonus XP. We got the inspired XP. Assuming you didn't spend any of your inspiration points. There we go. Uh, none of the traps are going to attack us. And this a is a massive loot cavern. This is an absolute... Great place to loot everything, which we're going to do, but not yet. We're, we've got a few things that we need to do here before we um, commit mass murder, which is a good action, believe it or not. But we're going to climb up here, and we're going to talk to Zeres. There we go. Talk to Zeres. All right, she gave us some gold. Bubble, what are you planning to do? And then we got Harold, which... We're going to accept, and Herald is uh, something we might use in Act 3 for Asterion for specific fights. Uh, until then, we're going to hold on to it. It's not the best DPS choice, but it is the best... It, there's a debuff build with Asterion that I tend to use sometimes in Act 3, and Herald is key to that. So we're going to hold on to that till Act 3. We're not going to see it again. But now that we're friends with Zeres, we can go down here and we can talk to uh, Brem who has some really, really good stuff, and I'm just going to show you what he's got, but we're not going to buy it. 
Okay? <laughs> anyway, just say no thanks, I want to trade. And you get access to his secret shop now. And uh, there's a few items here. The Gloves of Thievery. This is going to be best in slot for non-combat Asterian. This gives you advantage on, on lockpicking and disarming. It's, it's great. It's amazing. Next up is the Titan String Bow. This will go to your healer and uh, combine it with the Cloud of Giant Strength Elixir. You're going to deal massive, massive damage from here on out. And this is why I have you make a healer that's an elf so that you're already proficient in this weapon. Then we have Giant Breaker. This will go on your Radiant uh, Evasion Tank as their ranged weapon. This gives them reeling, which is... This is one of the easiest ranged weapons in the game to cause a ranged condition on a target. And that's why we're using this over Herald for our Evasion Tank. And we're going to, you know, take everything else too because there's some okay stuff here, but we're not... That's the main three things that we're going to use. It looks like he's got some nice potions. And so you know the drill. We're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take the backpack and we're going to sell it. We're going to give it to him for free. And we're going to open that bad boy up and stuff everything that we want to take inside of it. Because we're going to kill everyone down here. Yeah, I know. They, they're not good people. They deserve to die. Uh, again, this is committing a good action. If you're evil, it's technically committing an evil action. Because the the one good deed that you're going to do, you can choose not to do if you want. But it you miss a lot of story stuff in Act 3 if you do. But uh, for this, you know, we're just going to grab all the the good lootable stuff here. And I don't care about the dies. You could take them if you want. Well, you know, I did this the slow way. I should have just done the shift method. And there we go. We put all, everything we want in his inventory. Pleasure. And, uh, yes, pleasure. Okay, now we're going to make a safety save. So at this point, what I recommend that you do is that you kill everyone in the Zinterim basement. And there is a lot of things to loot, which I'll go over in a bit. But there's one character, if you're a good person, if you're playing a good playthrough, do not kill Oscar Fevras down here. He's the painter guy. Don't kill him. Kill everyone except him. Now, you have to be careful because if you just decide to attack... These guys, are their AI is programmed to utilize the explosive smoke powder barrels scattered all over the place, right? So you definitely, definitely don't want that to happen because we want to loot those. Those things are insanely valuable and strong, allowing us to defeat lots of stupid things later on in the game. So you want all of those. But in the back of the cave, the great thing about this zone is that it's segmented, right? So if I attack these people up here... Uh, if I do it stealthily and quickly enough, uh, you could abuse a fog cloud if you want, or you can have Lazel drink a, uh, one of those strength potions that we have somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, the potion of heal giant strength. If you happen to have one, she can pick these humans up, and you can use the improvised weapon to reposition them privately and then kill them off one by one. Or, if that's patched, which I don't think it will be, you can use command approach to, to move them around into private areas and then kill them off. None of these characters have a flag where if they are attacked, it makes the entire zone hostile as of the recording of this video. I recommend that you start at the back of the cave because this button here arms the traps. And if you are hostile, they will run and arm the traps, making this whole place very volatile. Also, sometimes, but not always, the wolves will not react to you killing the humans. Uh, but sometimes they will. I don't understand the AI behind it, but go ahead and kill everyone in here except Oscar. And if you're evil, you can kill Oscar, but you still lose out on a lot of story in Act 3. Once you've cleared out all the, uh, the Zentarim, you're gonna free Oscar here, and don't give him money for his trip, he just spends it on booze. Wait, so, uh, wait. you're not a prisoner wizard. anymore. Uh, I am so Benji. And you can talk to him a bit. But... He's going to talk about his life and then say, I've got nothing to give. And then he'll mosey on along to Act 3. You'll see him there. Now, this place is full of riches and really good stuff. So take your time and you want to loot every single smoke powder barrel. Check every crate, every dead body. There is uh, <laughs> there's some interesting loot in the back of the cave in those locked areas as well. I'll catch up with you once everything's looted. So what is so special about Gloves of Thievery and what it is is they give advantage on the slot of hand checks. And you may not be wondering, well, what does advantage mean? It means you get to roll twice. So 
it's not exactly a 50% increase in success. It's the math is a little weird, but it lets you roll two dice and uh, essentially it picks the higher result. So if you slow it down, it's going to pick the five and then it's going to add all your bonuses, which clearly gave us above, you know, 10. So it just it just makes things so much smoother. You can now lockpick everything in the game. <laughs> it, it's that easy. Now, if you care about Karlak, you can find an Infernal Iron in here. Uh, the Even if you don't use Karlak, you can get some okay stuff in Act 2 with it and some stuff in Act 3, but it's nothing we use in our builds. So once you've looted everything in here, uh, towards the back where these cages are, if you go to the west wall, this is an illusionary wall. If your people fail a perception check, you can hold left click and walk through it anyway. Uh, or you can put on the uh, whispering mask to see it automatically. And what this is going to do, and you should have looted one of the keys from the dead bodies to uh, unlock the elevator winch. This is going to take you back down to the Underdark, and it's going to take you to a little treasure trove area. And you want to loot everything here as well. This is a lot of food and just treasures and more gold. And just loot at all the boxes. But don't come too far over to this ledge and do not go down in this net. Not yet. Now what you're going to do is, after you've looted everything, you're going to proceed here to the south. And there will be a minotaur. So just take them out. And there's a bunch of mines under here. So they're going to charge into the mines, but uh, you are you have very powerful ranged weapons now at this point in the game. These Minotaurs, they're going to jump up and fight you in the higher difficulties, but you can take them out. You got, you know, your characters are strong enough to easily win this fight. This is just extra bonus XP. But until then, you know, make them come to you. There's no reason to go down to them. There's mines down here, so just blast and blast and blast away. And uh, I... Uh, Let's see, I still don't have a ranged weapon for uh, <laughs> Shadowheart, but we will get one soon, I promise you that. Now, I just want to mention that the Titan String Bow that you got earlier that goes to your healer is being massively damage boosted by your Club of Hill Giant Strength. So, on your healer, you're now using ranged attack when you don't have the zombie. Well, when, when the zombie's already out, you will be using ranged attack as your DPS. Now, don't forget to loot the Minotaurs. If the rope netting burned, you can jump down with Lazel uh, because they do have some okay loot. Uh, again, nothing that we're really using for our builds, but hey, loot is loot. You know, you got to respect it. Now that that is done, what you're going to do is warp to Joaquin's Rest once again, and we're going to travel deep east and then north, and we're just going to finish up Karlak's little problem real quick because, again, uh... Having just having Karlak in your party as like a buff bot or whatever or storage or anything is infinitely more useful than not having her, even if you don't plan to use her. And when you want to proceed to Act 2 or Act 1.5, as I call it, um, she can kind of lock you in until she permanently leaves, and it's just annoying. Also, depending on how your Flind fight went, you may not be level 5 yet, and so this will ensure that you hit level 5. So we're just going to go, oh, not that way, we're going to continue along east for a little a little bit, and um, that's the back way into the cave where the shipment was. You don't need to bother with that. There's just a big rock that'll roll over you and kill you in honor mode. <laughs> I saw a streamer die here. One, their, their run ended here. They got all the way to the end of Act 1, and they went in that cave, and the rock squished them, and <laughs> the game was over. Oh, man. Anyway, so you're going to travel southeast here, uh, east, southeast, whatever, and uh, you're just going to confront the paladins. Now, these guys are these guys are just straight up evil. There is a vendor among them, but there's no reason to use them. There's nothing special that they have or give. Um, but yeah, these were those dudes earlier that we encountered at the <laughs> near the start of the game that, were, that I told you not to attack, that they would have better gear later. Well, here they are. You don't even need to initiate dialogue with them if you don't want to. Just start swinging, and uh, with your melee weapon, of course. And they're pretty. They're they're not that strong. They, I think he just straight up died from that. And so that's the main guy gone. <laughs> uh, good stuff. All right, get him. <laughs> oh boy. And there's only three of them. Wow. This is this is like the best start. <laughs> We're getting lucky now. And the sooner you kill them, the more stuff that they'll have on them, because they won't be dumping it all on your characters. 
But to, in this other room, there is one more person to kill, and that would be the vendor. So there we go. Oh, I can't believe I missed that. So much for the luck. And yeah, I could have hid there, but I mean, dude, this person's hitbox is in the door. Like, <laughs> let's go shut the door. Okay, now. Oh wait, she doesn't have an action anyway. Yeah, they're in. They're in the room here. And they'll run in again. They're easy to deal with. They're, there's there's no threat to these these characters. They're they're puny. And can we stop missing, please? <laughs> can we stop not like barely killing them? All right, just go ahead and uh, let's see, Quasi. Go ahead and yeah, kill that one. There we go, 40 XP. And I don't. I'm not even gonna charge my boots. I'm just gonna blast. I'm just gonna shoot. And there we go, it's over. Now you can talk to Carlac and be like, yeah, we took care of those paladins for you, wink wink. And then she's like, oh, bloody mate. Oh, freaking love ya. <laughs> and uh, give you a smooch. Uh, wherever you want. You know, you, you get one anywhere smooch. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, loot them, and then it's time to level up to five, and let me just take care of these things here. Now, I will say, there's a bunch of loot in a basement in this area, but it all sucks, and it's a, it's trapped, it's it's a big hunk and chunk and waste of time. Uh, but yeah, loot everything outside, though, because uh, that's pretty good, and uh, let's get the levels going. All right, level five time, and if you're still not level five for some reason, you can go to the goblin camp and kill a few goblins in a secluded area, uh, that uh, or the blighted village and kill some goblins. That works too, uh, but you should be five in all my testing. Every time I've done this, we're at level five on every difficulty I've done it for. So for your healer, there's nothing to do. You just gain spirit guardians, which you won't really need. Uh, it's just a kind of a oh crap, I need more damage around me spell. For Shadow Heart, you're going to learn the feat Tavern Brawler, and you're going to put your level to Monk, not Cleric. So we're now level 4 Monk, level 1 Cleric. We go to Feet, we go down here to Tavern Brawler. And it doesn't matter what point you put this in. You put it in Constitution, you can put it into Strength. This th There's nothing that this does, because... Uh, for those that don't know, for D&D &D 5, and I believe Baldur's Gate, you only get... Uh, you get ability score point, whatever, uh, every two, so even numbers, so 16, 18, 20, 22, 14, 16, 18, etc. So just put it wherever you want, it, it, it makes no difference. Now what Tavern Brawler just did is gave us a lot more melee damage with our punches, so uh, yeah, really good, it's a pretty powerful thing here. And then for Asterion, we're going to level Rogue to 4, and we get another feat for him, well we get a feat for him. And he's going to go Ability Improvement plus 2 to Dexterity, so he now has 18 Dexterity. So that is another plus 1 to those Sleight of Hand checks, Stealth checks, and Ranged Damage. He's getting stronger by the minute, folks. And for Lazel, she is Default Fighter, so she's level 5, she gains extra attack. Now she can swing twice, we just doubled our DPS. Look at her, she's just big, beefy, just... Massive. Also, she has Misty Step, by the way. She can teleport in front of people and really, really mess them up. It is. It's over. So, from here, you're going to now teleport to Joaquin's Rest. And uh, it's time to get revenge. You know, remember those bullies that beat up... Uh, <laughs> the, those bullies that beat up Lazelle earlier in the game? You know, we stole that sword. Well, it's time to just... Just delete them from the from living. So, <laughs> we're going to go west from Joaquin's Rest to the Mountain Pass... And uh, we're, we're strong enough now to fight these guys. And you could actually try to lame them here. Like, you can set up your party and stuff. But I usually just sit up on the ledge and snipe them. And uh, they're going to misty step all up here and start jacking you up and fighting. And you could push them off. And I recommend that you summon the ogres here because it'll just speed up the fight. Because these guys, like, you just, the ogres just make it easier. Especially on honor mode. So this is how I like to open the fight. I'm going to eat a good berry, go into stealth. And start blasting with Asterion. And yeah, ready to parry sucks. Like, it's it's kind of annoying. But we're getting those lightning charges and, well, we did one damage. I know, it sucks. And uh, now, I'm going to select the healer. It's not his turn, but we can go ahead and sound the horn. So whenever it is his turn, it should automatically do that. And so Asterion, we're going to dash, check sight lines, back off a bit, and hide so we get advantage on our next attack. 
Now, these guys all have, uh, every turn they get something called parry, which protects them from 10 damage. It sucks. It sucks a lot. Also, uh, your Quasit might die here, but you can always resummon him. He's not, like, permadead or anything. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't really do much other than just kind of run him up here and have him chill. So, uh, yeah, we're going to summon the Ogres, and hopefully they pop up up here. So that way they just chill and throw rocks and spells instead of down there trying to swing their club, because... The ogres will die if they engage in melee combat with these characters. But if they engage in range combat, they won't die. So we'll see what happens. Most of the time when I'm up here, the ogres join me up here. They don't they don't come down. But when these guys, they jump up here and start trying to shoot at you and stuff. Well, we have Lazo with double attacks. There we go. Sound the horns. So swing and swing. And he's just straight up dead. And that's powerful. All right, here comes the ogres. They're coming in. Eat your fill, lads. Get the Yankee meat. It's on the menu, boys. <laughs> All right, and uh, yes, I know that um, Shadowheart here does not have a good ranged option. She would be the only one I would recommend that you kind of run down and start punching people because uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't have to click heals there. I kind of wasted my turn, but uh, yeah, we can, start, we can start fighting. There we go. And uh, the healer, you got a zombie you can summon, of course, get that zombie out, and then the rest of the turn, I should have summoned it before we started fighting, oops, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, heal whoever needs healing, shoot everyone else, it's that simple, easy fight. And then when the ogres uh, proposition you for extending the bargain, of course, just pay them the 500, we're gonna get it back, they're like a little bank. And uh, we definitely want to kill them at some point because they have a very nice helmet for our healer. Once the Gith Yinky Patrol is defeated, you're going to teleport now to the Blighted Village. And we're going to go down to the well, which is right next to the waypoint. It is west, so just click on this well. There we go. And just throw a coin down the well and then climb down the bucket rope. There we are. You're going to travel... What is this? West? You're just going to travel west. You can kill the things along the way. And uh, you're whenever the, the game will autosave before you get to a spider boss. And we're going to one-shot the spider boss in a very creative and very useful way, which I'll uh, skip ahead to. So once you've noticed the game autosaves and you're pretty far west, make sure that you grab... Whoa, what happened there? Everyone went dark. Uh, game's lagging a bit. Okay, so give Lazelle a Void Bulb. And then separate her from the party. And we're going to sneak her up here before the big boss spider renders in, which is going to be directly west, usually over here. And so we're going to stealth up, and, and where is, there she is. Okay, and we're just going to use throw and throw a void uh, orb. If, if you're on uh, honor mode, this probably won't work because it's a low percent chance to succeed. Throw that void bulb, and you're aiming to suck the spider boss down the hole. Of course, if it doesn't work, which it didn't there, then you just simply load. Uh, but on honor mode, you're going to have to fight. And it's an annoying fight, but everyone is more than capable of beating her. Um, but you're going to have a bit of a trouble moving the corpse down that hole, and you'll see why in a bit, why we want to throw the spider down the pit. It's very useful for us for a next fight. And here we go. Throw a void bulb, and you want to aim it so that it gets sucked into the hole. So that looks pretty good. Let's see if it saves. And there we go. See you later, spider. <laughs> so that instantly killed it, right? And uh, Lazel is more than capable of just running up and chopping these spiders to death. So, again, she has the move speed for it. They're going to teleport around and spit on her, but she has two swings of her super powerful sword. She's got the giant breaker. Uh, these things are, like, even on Tactician, she can solo these. On Honor Mode, you want your full party because, again, if they crit, you're just dead. But, um, <laughs> you know, if your party's separate, it's not game over. So you could technically just Withers resurrect her and skip the fight entirely if you want. You could also just run away and then flee from combat. But, hey, it's free XP just to kill them. And, uh, again, they're just puny little level 3 spiders. We're level 5, and we're way over geared for our level anyway. As you can see, if we don't miss, don't miss Lazelle. There we go. That's a one-shot run-up. The heroic music is playing. They're dead. She's the spider slayer. Now, once the spiders are dead, and again, we're using Lazelle for this, you want to go towards the west here, and there is a dark amethyst, and that's what we want to grab. 
So go go on, climb down. Don't be shy. It's his vines. Man, I wish I was uh, I had some vines in real life to climb. But yeah, just uh, Gith Yankee hop. I mean, don't use the, the Gith Yankee power, but just hop on over. Grab this Dark Amethyst and transfer it to your healer. Now, uh, don't use it yet. Don't, no, no, no. We're not going to use it yet. Not, not yet. Okay, relink your party up. And uh, we're going to teleport to the Myconid colony uh, in the Underdark. So there we go. Let's see. Just sent Lazel. That's fine. Everyone, oh, nope. There's everybody. Very cool. Make a safety save because everything is going according to plan. We're going to walk up this little mushroomy path and we're going to talk to Sovereign Spall. And you have to do this little next bit kind of, not not this part, but coming up, you have to do something exactly right to get a certain buff. So we're going to skip the dialogue. And uh, sure, I can handle those Dwegar nearby. And then don't don't worry about the rest of what he says. You get a very useful haste spore grenade. I would save that for when you really need it because it's super good. And you can haste multiple people. Of course, use it before level 12 because your cleric is going to have haste. Now you're going to travel southwest and you're going to talk to Sovereign Glut. Who's this big old boy over here. And we're going to uh, just, 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 you know, tell him whatever. You know, fill your heart with memories of the treasured places. Join me. Are you sure it's going to be dangerous? Very well, you may join me. There we go. Now we have another party member. And this one is very useful. So now we're going to backtrack, uh, you know, wrapping around the east here. And then we're going to go southeast down the path where we originally came to this place. You know, all these little mushroom guard peoples, right? It's a little makeshift mushroom kingdom, you know? <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Uh, and uh, Glut's a little slow. He, he's a little shy. He's a little shy guy. <laughs> Another Mario reference. Oh my god. And we're going to continue now southeast. All right. And uh, yeah, don't worry about the, the you know people scared about the mushrooms. It's okay. You're going to go east, and we're going to go up this little pathway here. And we're gonna wrap around. Just follow how it wraps around. And then, when you come to this part, again, you can only continue wrapping around. And hey, look, it's a spider that we pushed down the hole with one little harmless cheap item. Go ahead and loot the old, loot the old gal, right? Now select Sovereign Glut, and he has the ability called Animating Spores. You can see where this is going. Toilets! And now we have a spider pet. And this is the coolest thing ever. Okay, so now that we have the spider pet, what we're going to do is we're going to travel in this area here that's southwest, but we have to loop back around. It's kind of annoying, okay? And the spider is awkward to control, but the spider has ethereal jaunt, which is just misty step infinite. So just jaunt down here, and there we go. And you're going to have to constantly check on this spider to make sure that it's pathing correctly. Uh, because a lot of times it won't. It, uh, it'll it get stuck on things, and you want this spider close. This thing does a decent amount of damage, it's got a decent amount of health, and it's especially in honor mode, it's going to make the next fight super ridiculously easy, though you may not always have it for honor mode. That's the problem, right? Okay, and so we're going to travel down this way southwest, and uh, you can loot the bodies if you want. I'm going to skip ahead to when we're closer to southwest. So when you are around at this point at X65, Y-172, negative make a safety save. And let me kind of explain what's going to happen up ahead. So I'm going to make sure everyone enters stealth. Make sure all your followers are entering stealth. That glute is in stealth. The spider is stealthing. And, uh, yeah, get everyone, like, moving forward here. And uh, it's a little awkward to move with the spider. But once your party's moving, it should follow. If not, you're just going to misty step it. So, right here, there's an ambush that's set up and ready to go. And the enemy is located right here at this blood puddle. There's also an enemy inside this hut. And there's a bunch of enemies here on the sides and down below. And, but the main guy is here at the blood puddle. If you kill him quick enough, he will not raise the dead on you. And this can be a tough fight. Uh, it, I mean, if you're on honor mode, I would summon ogres. 
But, uh, you know, we have the spider, so we're, we're, we're pretty good here. I'm gonna unstealth the spider and try to just try to get it moving forward. It's uh, it's a little awkward to to control the spider sometimes. So I like to open with the spider. We want the spider dead at some point because Glute is he's not gonna be our friend for too long. So I just ethereal jaunts right here on the blood puddle and that starts combat. So there we go for the spider. Well, it used to, I guess. Um. Now, he, he, the guy is invisible, and our cleric has the sea invisibility of, you know, eyeballs. So we're going to get him a little closer, and there we go. Oh, okay, there's one on the ledge. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll just move the spider then. I guess he's unawares that um, we can see him, so there we go. And now we can just open with 8 to 28 damage or 9 to 36. Uh, it's up to you. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go for the kill here. And, uh, okay, of course it missed. Of course! Anyway, it's a pretty standard fight. Uh, you can't see them until they become uninvisible or you move your cleric close enough to see them. But uh, th these corpses will get revived and stuff. It's just a, it's a slog, but you'll get through it. Once the fight is over, uh, take Lazel and slay the giant spider. It shouldn't fight back. And uh, then talk to Glut. I would also make a safety save just in case things get weird or you attack the wrong target. But here we go. Just slay the spider. Let's kill it. There we go. Spider's down once again. No loot this time. And now we talk to Sovereign Glut. He's going to want to backstab his teammates. And uh, basically, here's the thing. If you if you want to do it, that's fine. You will get an amulet that helps with intimidation. If you, if you don't, you get a persuasion amulet, which is way more useful. And you get a spore buff, which we're going to use. And I'm going to recommend the spore buff. So um, I'll have no part of this. And then Glut will want to fight us because, like, dude, he's surrounded. Like, what an idiot, right? He's got 90 HP, but, like, there's four of us and then the little imp. So what's what's he going to do? Anyway, just kill him and loot him. So after the fight and once you're done looting, go make sure you climb down to the bottom level here. And then southeast, there's the waypoint. So now, make a safety save, of course. And we're going to teleport back to the Myconid colony. And you have to do the dialogue exactly as I tell you, otherwise you don't get the spore buff. And it's very important you get the spore buff for what we're about to do, even in honor mode. So, Sovereign Spa, talk to him. And uh, we're going to say that um, the Durugar is slain, the rod has been purged. Do not, do not ever say I have slain the creature called Glut. It was scheming to slaughter your circle. Just say the Durugar is slain. There we go. Now that we've done that, we get a pretty powerful buff. Now, say, consider it done, I will bring Nier's head to you. Alright, so now we just received, on our main character, the Bliss Spores buff. Make sure you talk to him with your main character. And we're gonna, we're gonna use that. That is a plus 1d6 roll. Attack rolls, ability checks, saving throws, until we rest. Uh, from up here, you're going to go northwest, and you're going to go down to this blue tentacly curtain thing and you're just gonna walk inside it for some bonus XP uh, and that's there's a reward in here for killing those Dwegar so we're gonna walk inside and well, 80 XP there we go little reward and uh, you can just loot whatever you want there's a helmet that lets you go and viz there's some scrolls and stuff just dig through whatever it is that you want uh, I'm not playing a frost build so I'm not gonna make the frost uh, staff but there we go, like, which is, that's part, this icy metal, that's what that is. Uh, these are all pretty good, though. Send that to camp, send this to this area, etc., etc. So, I'm just gonna, you know, take care of that. I don't really need this. And I'm gonna make a safety save here, because the next thing we need, sorry, I keep hiccuping. The next thing that we need to do is a very challenging roll. So, I am, uh, gonna cut this. So, first things first, we are going to equip the Ring of Protection to your healer character. Then, on our healer character, we are going to read the Necromancy of Thay. Alright. Now, we're going to place the ameth Amethyst in the slot on the book's cover. Then, open the book. The book lifts, shift. Saving throw time. Now, we're going to add every bonus possibly we can, except Elixir of Heroism. 
So we're going to have someone cla we're going to have uh, Shadowheart cast Bless, we're going to have Asterion cast Resistance, and then we are going to cast Beacon of Hope. And there we go. So this is pretty easily easy to pass. We, we we pretty much have everything we need. The next one's a lot harder, so turn another page. Any more bonuses we can add? No. Um, I mean, you could, but there's no reason to. Like, we got plenty here. 13 to 24, we need a 15. We get two rolls. We got it. All right, and this is mostly because of Bliss Spores. Very powerful stuff. All right, but we still have to do another one. Urge your hand to turn another page. All right. And uh, again, this one's a 20, and we have 13 to 24, so we can still fail this. But we didn't. We did it. We passed all three rolls. And the book slams shut, and we get a permanent buff that you can actually trade in later if you want. I don't know why I switched to Lazel there. Uh, so, uh, let me show you what that is. And here it is. It is... Forbidden Knowledge. From, from the Necromancy of Thay, you gain a plus one bonus to Wisdom Saving Throws and Ability Checks. And later we can either turn that in for a plus two permanent stat boost, or sacrifice two stats for two stats. Uh, that'll be for the Act 3 part of the guide, but this is a very powerful buff. And we still have the Bliss Spore buff, and we're going to go do another challenging roll with it to get a buff weapon that our Cleric will use for a little while until the middle of Act 2. Next up, we are going to teleport to the, uh, Selu Knight Outpost, and then we're going to exit it north. Takes a little bit for them to get moving. And we uh, want the healer also to do this one, uh, since he has the <laughs> Bliss Spores buff. So he will be the one. And we're going to go north, and we're going to curve around. And right over here, there's a sword uh, just west, as soon as you exit this little outpost here. There is a sword stuck in a stone. Oh boy. It's not Excalibur, but hey, it's still pretty good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab that, and we're going to click on it. There we go. And it's going to have us do a strength or a religion check. And so uh, this would be 6 and then 5 and then minus 1. And this one is 3 and then 1 and 6. So uh, the strength check, a little bit harder to pass. But hey, look at all this stuff we can do. So let's do guidance. Don't waste your elixirs on this. Uh, we got this. We got the club also helping us out to grab this out. And uh, it looks like I failed. So we're just going to load game. Because uh, if you continue, you're just going to huff and puff. You can try the religion check, I guess. It's a 15. And <laughs> failed that. Did we fail every roll in this stream? Well, second time's the charm on this one. All right, well, technically third, right? And then there we go. He yoinked it out. And then we got the Fal Falar Al... I don't know how to say this, okay? But uh, it's an okay sword. And uh, it doesn't give you 19 strength. So you want to wear the club when you're shooting. But if it's a really tough fight, you switch to this sword, okay? And then it has an ability, which is uh, called Sing or Shriek. So, Melody. The sword hums in anticipation, ready to sing or shriek. And uh, what that does is it's just an AoE bless. But the great thing about it is that it stacks with your passive. When you heal everybody, they get blessed. And then when you have the sword Sing, they get blessed on top of it. And so it's like a double bless. It's really powerful stuff. Uh, the, the Shriek is not that useful, it just makes enemies have disadvantage on attacks, which you're gonna have plenty of that later on anyway. And you may be wondering, but I don't want a weapon swap, that's so stupid, I hate that playstyle. And the answer is, when we hit level 6, we're gonna have potions that give us 27 strength, meaning, uh, this stick only becomes a stat stick for people that don't drink the potion so they can jump further in certain situations. And you will almost always be using this up until Middle Act 2, where we get a Charisma Sword, which is even better than what we currently are using. Also, I want to point out that we're going to have gloves that increase our dex in just a little while. And uh, this is a finesse weapon, even though it's a long sword. And so it's going to benefit from that bonus dex. It's going to benefit from the bonus strength. So you have strong melee, strong ranged. Uh, and you're a healer, and you're a summoner, and you're a buffer, a debuffer, and a tank all at once. Now, the next section is eventually going to lock you in where you, can, you can't long rest without story alterations. So if you're playing on honor mode, you're going to want to long rest and get all your everything healed, all your spell slots back. Because you've probably used up a bunch of those in the Dwaygar fight. For everyone else, though... Um, 
just at this point in the game, we're going to be shopping around a bit. So go ahead and hit up the Mike and Id colony, and we're going to check all the vendors. Now, you'll notice Omelum is no longer here, but you can talk to Blurg, and in dialogue, you can have Omelum come back. Come back. Uh, but, uh, yeah, can I talk to Omelum again? But we just want to trade, and we just want to look for some good deals. You want a vendor all the junk in your camp so go ahead and grab all of that that you can you also just want to buy everything that is useful like this pegasus feather these are useful for later and you know more in-game stuff uh it for if you're low on potions make sure like you have scrolls of fly any anything good that you think is really really good go ahead and buy it now uh also uh there is certain ammo types that we want we want arrows we want the rolling thunder arrows which you know i'll just go ahead and show you uh, like, where is it at? It, they look like this. Arrow of Roaring Thunder. These push enemies by 5 meters. Pretty good for what's about to happen, especially for Honor Mode. You want every character to have a few of these for the possible next fight that you might have. If you want to kill a Fire Elemental, you're going to need a bunch of Arrows of Ice, and you're going to need some Arrows of Ill Matter for all your characters. Uh, also, you want to hit up every vendor and buy those uh, elixirs of giant strength and invisibility potions. Let me just go ahead and um, pay the man real quick because he's like, hurry up, there's a line foreman. <laughs> it's a retail joke. So once you're done hitting up every vendor currently in the game that you haven't slain, you want to spread your items out very evenly. Uh, not just like healing potions and stuff, but... Uh, arrows of ice, you want at least two on every character. I would say four on Lazelle. She can shoot twice. Everyone needs arrow of ill mater. Everyone needs arrow of roaring thunder. Now, if you get really unlucky with shop rolls, I would say just grab Carlac and level her up once near a shop vendor and then check their inventory again. Uh, also, after selling almost everything that I've looted so far in the game, I'm at 8.8k gold. And remember, the 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 ogres have another like two thousand one point five to two k on them that we will claim back here later. But um, the strategy is going to change very much depending on if you're playing on honor mode or even tactician or explore. So once you're done vendoring, make sure you save, and then you're going to go to Underdark Beach. And if you're playing on honor mode, you're going to want to try to sweet talk. Uh, the Dwaygar that board your ship. If not, you want to kill them, but you don't want to knock one particular guy off the boat because it will screw you over some really good drops that you will be using for quite a while. So we're going to click on the boat here, and we're going to sail into the darkness. There we go. And then the Dwaygar right up next to you as you're sailing. So... You definitely want to try to talk your way out of this on honor mode. You don't want to fight this. I also should have mentioned on honor mode, keep one character somewhere in the world. You don't want to four-man this. This is a game wipe on honor mode. They will push you off the ship and kill you. And no matter how strong you are, over-leveled you are at this point in honor mode, and no matter how buffed you are, you can't swim. So... Keep one of your characters just randomly in the world to use Withers to revive if things go south. Uh, so, again, try to talk your way through it if you're on honor mode. But for the, everyone else, we're just going to fight. But do not, do not do this one. Do not push him into the water. You lose his whole inventory. This guy is a vendor. This guy is a shop vendor. So we're just going to attack him because I'm not on honor mode. And here's how the fight's going to go. These guys are going to try to push you into the water. Uh, but we're going to also push them into the water. But we're not going to push Corsair Greymon. We want to kill him on the boat. So don't ever use anything that can possibly knock him off the boat. If that happens, load game. Now, for everyone else, all these other enemies, don't jump up on their boat and try to fight them. They will just shove you off and you die. What you want to do is use ranged attack. And everyone but Shadowheart has a ranged attack at the moment. And you, those arrows of roaring thunder is what you're going to use to knock them off. And you can see the blue lines is where they will be flying if you shoot an arrow at a certain point. If I shoot an arrow here, it should kill two of them if they don't make saves. So let's see what happens. And, well, we killed one, so that's that's an instant death. These guys don't have any good loot anyway, so feel free to just, uh, you know, uh, knock them off. Uh, it's Corsair Greymon is the one that you don't want to knock off once again. So just beat them up as fast as possible. And also, when you summon uh, the zombie on their boat, 
the zombie like takes priority because it's low HP. They I don't know why it has the highest threat level, but they will <laughs> target the zombie instead of you, and they they will shove it into the water instead. So uh, you can make them waste their turns that way. But uh, you got to be careful here also. And if you're some sort of purist, uh, and you're, the whoever has Lovia Tar's love gets shoved off the boat. Well, you're losing that buff forever, and, uh, yep, time to load game. <laughs> now, Shadowheart doesn't have a ranged, uh, you know, insta-kill, except she does. Remember earlier on at the start of the game, we got Thorn Whip? Well, guess what? You can Thorn Whip people into the water, and, uh, there you go. That's a free kill. Now, as far as Lazelle, remember, we learned pushing attack, and you can do that from range, and remember, she can shoot twice now. So here we go, we're just gonna knock this person off the boat, possibly, except, well, they resisted. And uh, we're gonna try that again, 80% chance, and still resisted. But hey, we're still dealing lots of damage. So once they're dead, make sure to loot Corsair Greymon, which um, I've already done. Uh, and you're gonna get a few items here. The Bow of the Banshee is going to go on Shadow Heart, and that is finally she has a range and also a crowd control that inflicts Frightened. Uh, this item will become redundant in Act 3 whenever we use Asterion for opening fears. Uh, but other than that, uh, we do have another item, the Shining Staver of Skulls. For now, we're going to give it to Asterion, but later, it is one of the main weapons we will be using on our Radiant Evasion Tank. But there is a fight that requires everyone use bludgeon weapons, and we're going to be switching Lazelle for that uh, Shattered Flail here. But for now, there's still other things to kill with her Super Sword. So once everything's dead, there is a chest over here you can loot and you want to loot the bodies. Just have Lazelle do it because she can hop very easily between the ships. And uh, afterwards, click this little rudder here to continue forward. So we're going to continue the journey across the lake which will land us in Grimforge, and it's like a little town of Dwegars, or however you pronounce it. And uh, essentially, you can kill them here. I highly recommend that we eventually do kill all of them, or you can, you know, just talk your way through it. Uh, so I can just say, let me through. I'm not here to make trouble. Now, he's, this person's going to say that we owe them money. Obviously, we don't, so... She's just test. She's it's a shit test. Okay, I'm not giving you a single coin. And uh, there we go. So now we're in, and uh, they're still neutral, so we can come back and kill them later. And the reason we're gonna kill them all is because not only are they evil, but uh, if you're evil, it's still worth killing. The the experience is too good. The gear is so so. But um, from here we're going to proceed south, and we get the waypoint. And there's actually a lot to do here, but there's not a lot to gain from doing most of it. So we're going to be skipping a lot of things and only doing the things that really benefit our character and make them more powerful. So continue south, looping around southeast here. You're going to get to this main kind of hallway here with lots of Dwaygars walking around. But there's one particular place that you want to go and you're going to separate the party and take Lazel because she's our best jumper. And right here on this like golden plate dome bowl thingy we're going to uh jump here to this ledge there we go and yeah there's loot you can grab it if you want it, it's 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 an okay amount of stuff you're gonna continue south just climbing up here and again grabbing just the random loot so there's a scroll of fly that's really nice uh that normally isn't there again that's random loot uh and yeah, again you can use slow fall or, or fly if you so desire but uh, you know, maybe on uh, the highest difficulty levels you might. Uh, we're going to send that to camp, pick that up. Now, what we're going to do, uh, she's going to notice that they're dark justiciars, or however you pronounce it, but it, she doesn't care. Lazelle doesn't care. That's why we're so. If you brought Shadowheart, she's going to start whinging and complaining and spurging out. So we're going to jump across this big gap here and take a big hit to our HP, but it's fine. Uh, we can handle it because we only actually take half damage from falls. Right here is the Splint Mold Heavy. Make sure you pick this up. We're going to pick that up. Again, continue looting as you go. Uh, nothing too good. We're going to continue south here, and we're going to curve around west. Just grabbing the stuff as we go. And there's the waypoint. So we're going to run up and grab that waypoint now. And then we're going to switch to our party who is waiting on the other side, who can't make the jump, group them up, and teleport them to the forge. 
And there's a lot to do here at the forge, and we're going to do it in the most optimal and safest way. Though there is one boss, if you're on easier difficulties, I'm going to show you how to kill him in like one to two turns. And if not, you're going to need to collect a lot of stupid useless junk to throw down at him. And we'll go over that in a bit. Now we're going to have Asterion, Asterion, however you pronounce it, take the lead, and we're going to go southwest, and we can see some red enemy outlines. Again, push the button above tab, that's the tilde key, the grave key. Also, there's normally one over here, that's weird. Um, but there's one also hidden behind the walls here, and so we're just going to stealth the whole party. And this is a pretty easy fight. These guys, oh, there he is, now we can see him. Uh, this is actually a pretty easy fight, but um, they, di they just hit hard. They just hit really hard. So I'm going to do the old control and left click method. And Asterion's just going to pop them a bunch of times. Maybe the game lets me move. I'm f I am literally frozen. Okay, well, whatever. It didn't work. So I'm just going to kill these. Once they're killed, go ahead and loot everything. And if you're playing honor mode and you really want to cheese uh, the next boss we're going to do, then pick up everything, including the dead bodies of enemies on everyone that you can, including these heavy 10-pound mace like molds. We're not going to use these, but again, if you're in honor mode, we're going to just throw a bunch of junk at a boss and kill him with throw damage. Afterwards, just pick Lazelle and have her curve around. She's going to do a little bit of solo work here. We're going to curve around towards the west but going down this little slope here and we're going to go mine some mithril ore yep and uh, this is pretty simple just don't step in the lava and though you are resistant to everything so lava is not the biggest deal i didn't use lazel i grabbed my main character which is fine it doesn't really matter lazel is just better at jumping so we smack we attacked the mithril vein we grabbed the mithril ore on the ground and then we're just gonna head back. You can uh, you can actually just teleport back, but uh, we're gonna bring the party right here actually uh, on this ledge. And this is optional. This is completely optional. But down below there is a fire elemental, a lava elemental. I'm sorry. And um, if you want to kill this, it's bonus XP. You don't have to kill it. He is not a hostile creature. And to kill this, you're going to stealth everybody. You're going to use Asterion. And you're going to stealth shoot it as much as possible before combat starts to try to drain its health. Now, everyone's going to have to kind of like reposition here to do this. But just sit here and start blasting. And once combat starts, he will be slightly weakened. Now, he does heal himself and that's, that does happen, but just keep at it. Eventually, you're going to start combat with his health possibly, you know, reduced. Maybe not. Eventually, he's going to detect us and start combat. And there we go. So right now we just started combat with this creature and he's got 45 out of 66 HP. No one else is in combat, by the way. So now is the best time to shoot him with some attacks of our own. So what's going to happen is when the lava elemental gets his turn, he's going to fully heal. If he is not standing on lava, he will summon lava under himself and then fully heal. To prevent this, you are going to shoot the target with a arrow of ill matter, which we got earlier. So we shoot, this only lasts for one turn, so we're going to have Lazel do her opener here and pop them. Okay, so we hit him with Arrow of Ill Matter, now she gets another attack, and we're going to attack with Arrow of Ice, because he is weak to ice attacks. So this will deal double damage, which is decent. So, and now we're just going to repeat with everyone else, we're going to just shoot him with Arrow of Ice. And this kills the elemental, this will get you um, some, there we go, 150 XP. He, it doesn't have any good loot at all, so don't worry about the loot. I'm going to unstealth everybody. Next up, you're going to separate the group and have Lazel jump down. Now, on higher difficulties, you can't do this without fly or feather fall, but on lower difficulties, you can. We're just going to take a crap load of fall damage, and this might kill Gale. So we, we got to go pick Gale up, okay, because this can one-shot Gale sometimes. If you, if you forgot to level him up or give him constitution... So we took 31 fall damage, and now she's, you know, got to pick herself up. But uh, there's some loot down here. Nothing too special from the skeleton. Uh, just a bone. But we want to grab this adamantine chest. We're going to pick it up, and then we're just going to warp back to the top here. And uh, that saves you a whole lot of trouble of having to navigate through there. Let's link everyone back up. And then we're going to throw the chest on the ground here. Have a sterian. Let's see what kind of gloves he's got on. He's got the thievery. Oh, yeah. We could have did more damage with the archery gloves on that elemental. But, you know, I'm going to safety save because everything's going smoothly. 
And we're gonna lock pick here real quick. And uh, here's how you want to do this. Let's see. Add guidance. Yeah, it's a little hard to long pick, but we we got <laughs> we got so many bonuses. It's actually not that hard for us. So there we go. Inside the chest, we're gonna grab the gold. I'll grab the scroll. I'm going to send this to Shadowheart, and it's gonna trigger a cutscene. This is why we safety saved. She has to make a a, 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 a wisdom saving roll. So we're going to use Monk and Wisdom, or you can use Cleric of Shar Wisdom. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Both are the exact same thing. So I'm just going to use number five and give her guidance. So we should pass this. No problem. And there we go. If you don't pass it, it's it, it's more inconvenient to use the rest of the game until you do the quest in Act 3. So there we go. You can talk to it if you want. I'm going to go ahead and talk to it. And then I'm going to equip the amulet. And there we go. So now this amulet will restore her key. You get shatter. Now, if you cast shatter from this amulet... You have to sometimes make that same uh, wisdom saving throw that we did. And if you fail it, uh, I forget, I think it makes your character hysterical for two turns. But then every roll after that is a 15 instead of a 10. So you don't want to really use Shatter. You won't need to. She's going to be a DPS monster at level 6 anyway. So uh, again, just put this on for the key restoration for now and for the quest. Now I went to camp to check on Gale. He is wounded. So again, all you have to do is uh, just uh, beat yourself up a tiny little bit and that'll trigger his heal. So I'm just gonna pop out the old skeleton and that's gonna be our slap buddy. So there we go, four damage, four damage to Gale and he should puff out his chest as he normally does and heal. And uh, well, if he doesn't, you can always just heal Gale. We have an, we have plenty of healers to do so. But uh, you, you do want him to be fully healed before we do the next boss fight, which we don't have a boss fight yet, but do top off Gale if he's not self-healing for some reason. And if you're playing in higher difficulty levels and you don't want to spare your own spell slots or you don't want to use your own potions or whatever, just have Gale heal himself, have someone else and can't be a cleric and heal him. There's an infinite number of ways for Gale to heal. Also, maybe he didn't self-heal because he needs to level up, which I'm just gonna, you know, just whatever, it doesn't matter, just pick anything. And uh, Gale, Gale can just top himself off with his own spells. From the waypoint, you're going to go southwest. That's right. And no, I'm sorry. We're just going to go straight east. Or southeast. Okay, we're going southeast towards this big forge-looking thing. But we're going to stop right up here on top of the ledge. And we're going to stealth everybody. Of course, of course. And as your healer, you're going to use that second marriage wand and cast a zombie as far down below as possible out in the open. Kind of like this. Alright, so what's going to happen now is the zombie's going to get jumped by magma methods. And you're just going to let them kill the zombie. Just let them full kill the zombie. For those who don't know, the zombie has an ability where when his HP is reduced to zero from non-radiant damage, he gets one turn where he is he gets one extra HP. So they have to take all his health and then they have to take the extra bonus health. So now that he's full dead, and they're not in combat anymore, we're going to use a good old Asterion here. And I'm going to snack on a good berry so I get that bonus dipped in poison. And we're just going to control and... Oh, I, I took his weapon off because I did the thing with Gale. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and switch to ranged here and just start blasting. These things have 8 HP on the easier difficulties, but Gale can just blast them the hell down. Now... Normally, if you don't fail the stealth check when they emerge like this, you can essentially kill all of them uh, without ever entering combat, but these things are so low and you have height advantage, all your characters can just start shooting and blasting them down. If you want to AoE, you can use your frost arrows that you bought earlier. You won't need them again for quite a while. It's a very easy fight, but if you jump down here normally, this is a really difficult fight. After the fight is over, you just come right over here to the northeast. We're going to run over and then mine this mithril vein and that'll be the second mithril and there's from what i've researched i've looked at every article i've searched far and wide i haven't found any other mithril ore in the game other than the two that we've already mined and these are going to give us some very powerful armors that are going to easily carry us uh to act two and then even into act three for one of our characters now if you are doing honor mode there's a boss fight coming up, and I want you to pick up all these dead magma methods, and you could loot them if you want. They have a gemstone worth, you know, a little bit in this, but oil of combustion, I haven't really found a good use for it over the other throwing weapons in the game. 
So the way I'm going to show, I'm going to show you two ways to beat this boss: the extremely safe honor mode way, and then the easy way, the fast way. And no, I'm not going to teach you the proper way to kill this boss. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll mention it, but I'm not going to really. It's not the focus. If you think, oh, I know how to kill this boss. No, 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 we're not going to use the Crucible to kill the boss. We're going to just smash him down in one to two turns quicker. So before we can fight the boss, you will need a Splint Mold, or you will need a Mold, which we have the Splint Mold, the heavy one. And we have the Mithril Ore. So what we're going to do is I'm going to separate the party here. And then uh, once once you do this, I'm going to go over the Honor Mode and then the Regular Mode. And so that we go to the Mold Chamber. We're going to open that bad boy up. There it goes. And then we're going to put in the splint mold and insert it. There we go. Then we're going to click on the crucible here. And we are going to load up the mithril ore. Insert that. And now we're all set. For honor mode, this is how you would do it. You would take Shadow Heart, And you're going to run her over. Uh, just kind of over here where she can at least look over the ledge. You're going to uh, do a dash. And then you're going to click heals, and then you're going to enter turn based mode. You're going to shoot an arrow, and a, there's a button down here called the platform control. So you're going to shoot that button, and she's going to move a bit. There we go. So we've shot the button, and now we're going to haul butt all the way back to this platform. And then we're going to jump over, and then in turn, or in con or turn based mode. This is going to lower the the whole thing majig downwards. And then you're going to, well, let's stealth. We're going to shoot a range attack at the lava valve. There we go. That's going to summon the boss. Well, yeah, that should. It's coming. All right, so we have now summoned the boss. And now, because it's in melt mode, we're going to kite it over this way with some, with some shots, which you can use, you know, a Starion for if you want. But uh, essentially, it can't really do much to you up here. And all you do is, it's going to run down here through the lava, and when it walks through lava, it is melting, or superheated. And because it's superheated, it takes extra damage uh, to blunt weapons, which, when you throw random objects, those are blunt weapons. That's corpses, you can, you know, infinitely summon that zombie and throw it down there. The zombie can also punch for blunt damage. Uh, you don't, like, shooting arrows, yes, you can just shoot arrows and kill this to death. But look, it does very little damage. Right? And on honor mode, it's going to have way more health. It's going to take forever to arrow it down. So you just want to throw a bunch of junk down there. Corpses, bodies, just random blunt objects, heavy objects, you know, anything you could pick up and find. Uh, <laughs> anything you don't want to sell, basically. And then that'll kill the boss. You simply uh, just jump down there with the character, take some fall damage, loot the stuff. Uh, you can send it back up and, and you're good to go. And that's honor mode. Now, for everyone else on the easier difficulties, we're just going to, once you put uh, the stuff in the mold and the crucible, you come over here to the forge lever, and this big hammer will slam down, and there it is. So normally, the way you defeat the boss is you kite him, which is an MMORPG term, meaning to lure, like a, like a flying, you're flying a kite. Uh, you're going to lure the boss onto the crucible after it's superheated, and then you're going to pull the lever or shoot it with an arrow, and that's going to slam the hammer down, smashing the boss. Now, that takes two hits to kill the boss, but that takes forever because he's got he's very slow, especially running through lava. It will take multiple turns of him doing stuff uh, to your party to get him to the Crucible, and it's just a real pain in the butt. It's uh, it's slow, it's tedious, it's, it's not the safest. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to bash him to death, okay? We have Blunt Weapon, Blunt Weapon, Blunt Weapon, and now we take Lazelle's Shattered Flail. We're taking off her sword. Yes, that's right. We are taking her super powerful mega, mega sword off and putting on the shattered flail. And Lazel's going to be our top mean green DPS machine. And you're, we're going to position everyone right here in the front of the gate. As you should. And Shadowheart is also a big mega beefy super DPS in this fight as well. And we're going to position her there. We're going to take Asterion, who, uh, you know, he's melee also. He is also a melee character. There we go. Main character. Put him, you know, wherever. Summon a zombie. It's okay. You can summon him in the lava. Uh, if you want, you could summon a spirit weapon using your cleric spells. You can summon the Quasit, who, again, it, it, the Quasit is not a blunt damage dealer, but this is more than enough to deal with the boss. And so I'm going to make a safety save, of course. And then we are going to shoot 
uh, the lava valve and get started here. And we're just going to go all out and use every ability we can. Now, on your healer, I could have also pre-buffed by making the sword that we looted earlier seeing. Uh, I could also, you know, pre-heal so everyone gets a bless so we can all hit, have a higher chance to hit. There's a lot you can do, but you don't really need to do it. And so the boss starts the battle super heated and melting. And all we're going to do is just beat the hell out of it. So I'm going to just melee attack it with a stair, and there we go. And then he's got a bonus action, so we're going to chug the potion of speed. And then we're going to hit it again. Missed, that's fine, whatever. It is now... Uh, what is this? Uh, this is Shadow Heart's turn. Run up and punch it. Walk through the lava, who cares? Boom, there we go. Lots and lots of damage. Now, Shadow Heart... Uh, if you use your speed potion, you can't use your bonus actions, which are way better. So I'm going to try to topple it. This is this is multiple hits here. Look at this damage. It's now prone, so it just lost its turn. And then I'm going to walk her. I can't walk her out of the lava, so she's just going to burn a bit. That's okay. And uh, now Lazel uh, is going to fight. And it's prone, so it's, uh, yeah, she gets an attack. And then she gets another attack. And it missed. Oh, wow, to a prone target. We're going to action surge. And then we're going to attack. Now, if you're on Tactician, you don't get the bonus action. I know. And then she missed. And then we're going to potion of speed. Uh, which, um, there we go. There it is. And then we're going to attack. And if I would stop missing, it would be dead. It would, it would be totally, like, okay, the game, yeah, there's the miss. It took a while to calculate. And, uh, <laughs> let's get her out of the lava. So that's her turn. And then the healer here, he's got the 19 strength club. I'm gonna hit him. There you go. And then we're going to potion of speed as well. And it, again, it, it depends on how how often you're hitting here. And now he's gonna stand up. He's gonna AOE or he's gonna attack someone. None of this is lethal. We're super protected. Uh, we're high armored. And uh, yeah, he's just missing. And then Quake, what do you do? Oh no. Now our zombie died, but that's okay. Because it's Shadow Heart's turn again, and she just does so much damage. And look at that, it's about to die. So, and I, yes, this is on the easier difficulties, but hey, even on the harder ones, you still got this. So that is way, way faster, what we just did. Group everyone up and get them out of the damn lava. All right, there we go. So the fight is over. And now this cool thing, it has a helmet that prevents you from getting crit. And Hunter's Mark, I haven't really found a good use for Hunter's Mark. Why is it only letting me examine it? Excuse me? Oh, it's because my character's stunned and lethargic from the speed potions. There we go. Now we can send it to camp. Okay. Moving in. So, now that it's down here, I recommend you just park everyone on a platform to do this next part because we're going to loot some splint mails. So I separated the group. I'm going to slam the forge lever down. There we go. And, uh... We get our prize! We get the Adamantine Splint Armor. There it is. Yoink that. We got some XP. We're a guild artisan, so we get a bonus XP. Remember earlier in the video I told you to go artisan? Very good stuff. Put another Mithril Ore in there. And then we gotta do the process all over again. Pour the lava. And I could've shot this instead of walking over to it. And then we, you know, run over to this. If we step in lava, we step in lava. It happens. But no, we're quick enough. And there we go. There's the lava. Pull the lever once again, and then we get the second adamantine split armor. Let's do a little Super Mario jump across the lava here. Grab the splint armor, dip our toes into the hot beefy lava. I don't know why it's beefy. Uh, and now we have two really good armors. We're going to put that one on the healer, and the other one on Shadow Heart. And now everyone has armor. Look at the armor classes. This is 21, 22, 19, 17. We can actually cast a spell. Our clerics have a spell, a concentration spell. Uh, what is, what's it called? It's called Shield of Faith. That's another two armor class that we can be getting. And there's a few things we can get to increase the armor class even more so. But this is more than enough on non-honor mode to just never get hit. Also, the Adamantine Splint Armor reduces all damage taken by two. And later on, we can give one of these when we replace it. Because we're going to replace one for the Healer in Act 2 and then one for Shadow Heart in Act 3. We can give this to uh, Gale, and he will take less damage when he's doing the Warding Bond shenanigans. And there we go. That is the Grim Forge, all wrapped up, done, nice, tidy, and easy. Now it's time to warp back to the Grim Forge, and there's a few things that we're gonna do here. Most of that, most of this involves murder. Now the next thing can be a little difficult on Honor Mode, so I'm gonna give you a little tip. So for Honor Mode, you're actually gonna teleport to the Ancient Forge, and from here. 
you're actually going to jump from this ledge that's to the west of the waypoint, and you're going to jump everyone up here. Now, you might not be able to jump uh, a Starion, but you can buff his jumping in many different ways. And this will put you on a ledge right up here, and you're going to shoot everyone except the gnomes until they're dead. And it's going to start a big fight. You're going to kill the spellcasters first, and then the ranged people, and then the melees. The melees will just stand there and look at you while you kill them. It's, it's the way to cheese the fight. On easier difficulties, we don't need to do that, and we would rather have Lazel in there slashing people to death. Make sure that you don't forget to put her main sword back on, because this mace, we don't need it. Uh, there we go. And we can actually send the mace to camp now, because we're not going to use it anymore in the playthrough. But for everyone else not in honor mode, you're going to warp to the Underdark Grim Forge. And what you're going to do first is you're going to run up and around this corner, and there is a vendor called Stone Mason Kith. And wouldn't you know it, you're going to give him a backpack and stuff all his valuables into it, just like we did before. And you don't need to bother with his dialogue because we're going to get the reward for it anyway. So just immediately click that trade button and then give him the backpack, which you got to drag it over there and then give it to him. And then now that he has the backpack, you're going to slide everything. And oh, he's got a nice little bloodlust elixir there. That's very cool. Very useful. And again, everything you want, uh, you know, just pile it in. I am doing this wrong. There we go. Do it like that. All those in there too. Take the is that a tomato? Yes, it is. There's the infernal alloy. That that was the reward for doing his dialogue checks. We can skip that. Who cares? We don't we don't need it. So now this guy is ready to be slain and taken for all of his loot. Now, when you attack the Dwegar, Durgar, whatever they're called in this zone, it only aggro's people in the immediate vicinity. It does not aggro the entire camp. So you can kill everyone in sight here. And then when you mosey on over here, these guys are still neutral. They don't care that you killed their buddies. They just don't care. Uh, another thing that you can do for a little bit of XP, which is all right, is you come down here, and this is the this is where the boats are. You're going to travel south. This is Spider Bros. And you're going to take Shadow Heart, and she has Ritual Spell animal, Speak with Animals. And then just uh, convince the spiders to leave. You can, you can use many different methods. Just talk to the spiders. I'm doing a safety save in case you fail. In case I fail. And, uh, yeah, just, just talk to them. And you can just use religion, you can be... Again, you can just... This is very easy, it doesn't matter what you pick. Now, that gave me 210 experience and 160. It's just a big... Look at the combat log here, it's, uh... It's, it's a bunch, it's like 40, 40, 40, 50... Uh, again, it adds up a lot. And I actually failed one of the dialogue choices, and I still got another chance to succeed, so it's really easy. Just free XP. Now, there's a lot you can do here, but we almost need none of it at all. Uh, so, uh, you can actually poison these two by going to this, uh, stained cask and playing out their dialogue. The, the little gnome here will get them a drink and then they'll die. You don't get XP if you do it that way. You just want to slay them all. These guys are juicy inexperience points. Make sure that you kill everything in the camp but the gnomes. So, the best grenade in the game is beyond these doors. There's also some slimes to fight. For me, it's not worth getting the... It's a, it's one throwable grenade in an exploding barrel that deals extra damage. It's not worth all the trouble going to get that one item. I have not found a single use in the game for it. I'm going to have you skip this one. You just don't need it. Now, remember that musical instrument stuff you learned earlier? You can use that to lure NPCs into disastrous situations. So, for instance, you could sit here and you could do perform and just play whatever. And then these guys will just come over and they'll, like, cheer and stuff. So, while that character is playing, you get Lazel and you get behind them. And then you just, uh, you know, just shove them into the ocean or, or the water or whatever, right? And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna unlink everybody here. Let's get Asterion. Move him over. Let's get, uh, what is this, Shadowheart. Whatever. Remember, we have arrows that can explode people off ledges, which is always fun. So, you can just shoot an arrow and... Uh, there we go. Now you can knock these two into the water. And, you know, oh, that didn't work, but it's it's an option. One of the dead gnomes has an invisibility ring you can loot. I haven't found a real use for this um, because we just have potions. But it gives you XP to loot it, so you might as well grab it. Now, I do want to mention a safer way of killing the enemies besides just having Asterian stealth and spam arrows. Is take your lowest initiative character and just simply attack the enemy. 
they will say, oh, you, you've angered the guards, whatever, right? You attack someone. So you go to switch character, and then you go to another character with low initiative, and then you attack someone else. There we go. And, oh, you attack someone. Oh, no. Now you just switch to another character. Whichever one is easiest to kill with Lazelle, put her to the task. There we go. And then that'll start the fight. Then, of course, Hysterion gets initiative. And you can just finish off one of them, hopefully, usually. There we go. So that's, uh, well, really close. But we've got three more characters to get to act. Um, <laughs> uh, one of them being Shadowheart again. And again, like, this is just an easy way to take out small groups of enemies. I've got the Quazid out. I've got an Undead Archer out. And you can summon the zombie from the wand as well. And that would have killed this guy without them ever taking a turn. At some point while you're clearing all the mobs, there will be three chests somewhere around here on the west side, kind of southwest side of the uh, waypoint here. It's, they're actually mimics, and on one of them you'll have the gloves, the wondrous gloves. You can give this to Lazelle for now, it's not really that useful. But she doesn't have a, any gloves yet, and these just give her AC plus one, which makes her slightly harder to hit, just makes the game simple. Once you've slain all the Dwaygar, you can talk to the cave in here, and then I'll give you a little bit more XP. 30 right there. And then uh, just say, stay still, I'll do what I can. You don't need to use perception. And then what we'll do next is we're going to go to camp, and then we're going to pull out one of those smoke powder barrels that we got earlier. Here's our traveler's chest right next to the, the warp in point, and just extend the inventory there. Scroll down, we got plenty of barrels. Just grab one, leave camp. Maybe check on Gale. I think he'll be fine. And then we're just gonna drag out one of these smoke powder barrels and throw it right next to the the cave in here. The rubble, whatever you want to call it. We're gonna get some nice distance, have someone cast fire bolts or you know, conjure flame, whatever you want. That blows it open. And now we're just gonna chill for a bit here. And Make sure that your healer is in front, which, um, I didn't want to level up, so I'll skip that. I just wanted to take control of him. Uh, game? Why is it not letting me switch to the character? Still I don't want to- there we go, I'll use the Despite F keys. Everything. Uh, by the way, if you don't know F1 through 4 controls, uh, you can switch characters that way. So, we're going to, uh, you can't save this girl. You can give her a fire resist potion, you can move her. There's no way to save that girl. So say, stop, no more innocents will die today. <laughs> and then you're going to say, uh, cast Detect Thoughts. And uh, you should have this. Um, if not, you'll have to use one of these deceptions, but this is just easier. We have Bliss Spores and Guidance, so it should be a very easy roll. There we are. And then you're going to say, those Dwegar were thorns in our side, so I remove them. And then you're going to pick Wisdom, plant a thought in Nier's mind, the gnomes must be set free. And then we're going to fail that roll, of course. <laughs> no, you don't want to fail it. And here we are after that. The gnomes are set free. And there's a reason we're doing this. We're going to get, we're going to double dip in rewards here. All right, and then say, uh, what business is that exactly? And then say the general. He is a favorite of the absolute. And then say, I'll do it. Where can I find the general? Then say, if you survived, I'm sure I will. All right, I'll tell the general what happened here. And there we go. So what just happened was we got an, a gift from the absolute. And now you're going to make a safety save. And you're going to take your weakest creature, which for me is uh, the quasi, or your character, it doesn't matter, and attack near. He's going to, like, be bothered by it. And what happens is, when you start the fight with Nier, his health alters. So you can't just kill him before the fight actually officially begins. So that's why we use our weakest character, so it doesn't, uh, you know... It's been maxing our action economy. <laughs> and boy, double crit! Oh man, so we're going to kill Nier. He's very easy to kill. You don't have to worry about him. And uh, just, you know, just attack him down. There we go. And this is like one of the characters you literally can't just run up and snipe with um, Lazel. But hey, we killed him before he got a turn. So next up, I'm going to save. And then we're going to loot him. And this is going to cause a cutscene. And you're going to remove its head. I got to skip this for YouTube purposes. You don't need to drink any of these elixirs. You have the club. You have your natural strength. You have bliss spores and guidance. You should pass this very easily. And then uh, go ahead and collect his loot, a thousand gold. He's got uh, the Sword of Screams. Go ahead and give this one to Asterion for now. He will get something better very shortly, but hey, it, it's it's pretty good. 
the Mind Flayer Parasite Specimen, and of course these Nightwalker Boots. I'm just going to send them to camp. Don't bother looting the Broken La Moon Lantern. You can't do anything with it. I know it's a pretty color. Um, and then Dagger Plus One, I'm just going to sell that. Now, here's the a, 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 a way to mid-max some XP. And uh, this one's a little more personal. But uh, some of these gnomes have zero story use later on. There is one that does, this one right here. Lorita will help you in Act 3. But uh, we don't want her. We don't want her to see us kill her friends, and uh, well, well. So you know he's fine. It's uh, these two that I have beef with. So again, you don't have to do this. It's just 150 bonus XP. I'm gonna use improvised melee weapon and grab Beldron over here, and uh, go ahead and carry him to the cliffs, Sparta style. Here we go. Gonna cancel, and well, okay, maybe not. I guess I forgot to cancel. So I'll grab my healer. He's on the ground complaining about stuff. Come on, don't hop over the box. And then we're just gonna use throw. Not enough movement. Oh, I guess he's in turn-based mode. Okay, now we're just gonna throw him to his death. <laughs> and see you later. Whee! <laughs> and that's 75 XP. Next up is Lunkbug, and... Uh, we're gonna use Lazel because she's you know extra strong and stuff. Come here, lunk bug. All right. Yes. Yoink them. Grab them. Grab this dirty, dirty, nasty, sinful gnome. And improvise weapon. And then I'm gonna right click and cancel. And then I'm gonna throw into the cliffs. See you later. Join. <laughs> you can go <laughs> join Beldron down there. Have fun, you two. All right, so that takes care of them. That's 150 XP. They don't have any good loot or anything, and you could technically destroy Welso if you want. But uh, you know, he's to me, he's innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. Those other two guys are a little dirty. So we're gonna we're gonna leave these two be, especially Loretta. She helps us later. I just couldn't help it. I threw Welso into the lava, and uh, Loretta's a little mad. She's running over here, but um, you talk to her, and uh, she doesn't seem. Uh, she's just gonna run away now. Which is fine, it's whatever. She's uh, She'll help us later. So Asterion will equip sort of Screams, and then the Shining Staver of Skulls will go to Lazel, which will later go to Minthara, or whoever you decide to be your Radiant Evasion Tank. This is one of their weapons that they're going to use. From here, we're going to now warp to the Myconid Colony. Silly Night Outpost, there it is. And then we're going to turn in some quests. Oh, wrong, I'm sorry. I meant the Myconid Colony, I clicked the wrong thing. It doesn't matter, we got 120 XP there. And we're going to go up and talk to uh, Thula. We're also going to talk to Sovereign Spa and just, uh, you know, wrap up some stuff there. So let's talk no to Thula. To that just gave me XP. We and then you can talk to her a bit while we do in your turn. How much did that give? Uh, 25. Again, it's not a lot, but it's free. It only takes one click. So now we talk to Sovereign Spa. And then we say, uh, I have brought you Nier's head. There it is. And now we have this necklace, this invoice necklace. There we go. Accept that. And now we can tell him about Glut if you want. And then I have slain the creature called Glut. And there we go. I still have the Bliss Spores buff, by the way. Very cool. So that wraps up those quests. Now make a safety save next to Dareth Bone Cloak. Take your Cleric and level them up to six. They should be six by now. If not, go kill a few goblins and come back. <laughs> They're all over the first map. And again, there's nothing here to, that we need to do. But don't level your other characters up yet. So what we've done now is we've reset the vendor's inventory. I'm going to make the safety save. And we're going to talk to Dareth Bonecloak again. And there's uh, her new inventory. At level 6, uh, they have uh, like a higher tier of inventory. You're going to start getting better and better things. Like this purple worm toxin, which you should always buy when you see them on vendors. It's only 200 at this point. Uh, there's really not too much other things other than uh, a few ingredients that we definitely want to pick up. And uh, it does not look like uh, I see one, but it's not the hill giant finger. It's, it's, the, oh, here it is. Yeah, the cloud giant finger. Always buy this if you see it. So we're going to definitely buy that. And we need as many of these as we can get. And we're going to be leveling every single person up uh, and refreshing this person's inventory over and over and over again. Also Pegasus Feather. And uh, let's see, what else do we need? Don't care about Tadpole Elixir. Smoke Powder Bomb is decent. Let's see. Potion of Invis, of course. Battle Mage Power, no. Let's see. That, that still does the same effect, right? They never changed it. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see what else. 
But yeah, other than that, um, definitely pick that one up. And you have the money, you have the ingredients for all of these things. And uh, again, we're going to be emptying our inventory for quite a little while here. Uh, going to our camp and selling everything to her and refreshing her inventory. And we can even buy the... We don't really need these crappy ones because we're going to be getting these cloud giant fingers and making the better ones, which are completely break the early game. Anyway, I'm just going to uh, give her some gold. And we're, we're going to get this gold right back. So there we go. Then barter. And then leave. And go to camp. And we're going to drag everything that we've looted and sell all of it so that our camp chest is empty. And you don't need magic items anymore. Gale will no longer get hungry. That's about to be solved permanently. And no, we're not killing Gale or anything. But grab everything that you want to sell, which is everything you're not currently using, and don't sell the barrels, alright, don't sell your potions, and uh, I'll meet you back. Alright, I have cleaned her inventory, so I'm going to go to Lazelle and level her up now. Again, she is still default until deep into Act 2. Well, we'll just use Minthara by then. But uh, for the next feat, you will go with Great Weapon Master. And this thing gets her even more busted. It's another bonus attack. If you kill or crit something, uh, you can also hit harder and you, you get a plus 10, uh, but you take up minus 5 to attack rolls, which you can make up for with Bless and that sword that sings that we got earlier. It, it just really super powers her up. And again, don't level anyone else up uh, yet because, again, that resets uh, her inventory so that we can continue. Like, I completely emptied her out. She has no gold, and now she has gold again. And we scroll down, and then we get the... Um, uh, cloud giant stuff if she has them sometimes she won't but we have a whole camp full of hirelings and stuff that we can just respect over and over and over and get plenty of cloud giant fingers and we want to do this before we go to act two we want plenty and plenty and plenty of these for the completely most busted overpowered potion in the whole game for asterian you are now switching him over to cleric which will carry you until level 12 and at level 12 we get a massive, super-duper crazy ultra power spike that will allow him to attack 14 times from stealth, all crits, and apply 3-4 to four status abnormalities and deal insane, you know, multiple elemental and physical damage. All crits, by the way, but we can't do that until level 12, so in the meantime, we're going Cleric, which um, will power spike him more than leveling in any other class. So now that we leveled him up, that resets the inventory once again. We don't want to level up Shadowheart yet until we clean out the shopkeep. And there we go. Show me your wares. And the money is back. This time it's up to 2,000. Let's see what we got. See invisibility. Don't need that. We have that passively. Drought poison, always good. Invis potion. Uh, that is not holy water. Okay, let's see what herbs she's got. And scrolling down here. Uh, I don't really need a craft heal potion, smoke powder bomb, really good, warg fang, moss, no, no, what is that, oil, no, don't need the, the orch jelly slime, it's okay, don't really need it though, uh, see invisibility, don't need that, let's see, don't need malice, don't need the heart shaped rocks, another bad roll it looks like, um, <laughs> on this, we want those cloud fingers, but we're going to just reset and respec with withers over and over and over until we get it. So 193, we'll just start dumping your uh, your items here. There we go, 86. What's something really cheap we could give her, like a ring? I'm giving four. Oh boy. And uh, now we reset once again. So Shadow Heart, very simple. We're going to put her next level into Monk, so she is now level 1 Cleric, level 5 Monk. Not Cleric level 2. No, no, no. So make sure you click the Monk and put that to level 5. And this is a huge power spike because she gets extra attack. So she can punch. She can punch again. And then she can do her bonus double punch. So you, you can attack with her four times now. It is, uh, she's absolutely broken this early on with how much damage she's pumping out. You will get some XP for trading in large amounts of gold. It's not much, but again, Guild Arson, really useful. So I guess at some point Gale died. Maybe they patched it. Um, I don't know. I've never in all te my test runs, I've never had him die, kill clearing the Dwaygars. But you can you gotta check on him every once in a while. Uh, anyway, so here's a trick for camp supplies because right now I have a lot of camp supplies. So I'm going to give all of them to Gale, who uh, will 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 be able to uh, like that. Just saved me 60 uh, 60 what is that pounds or kilograms? I don't know what the measurement is of carry weight, and. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, we can, when we long rest, we can still use Gale's supply can supplies here. So, anyway, I've got Gale. I'm gonna go to the the vendor now, level him up, and again keep fishing for those items. If you're interested in the best healing potions, it's Key Rin here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there, even though it's a little pricey. It, we can easily afford everything in the game now, and there's there's ways to farm infinite money. And uh, if the uh, what is it, the weight <laughs> warding bomb thing ever gets fixed. Then Elixir of Universal Resistance is pretty dang good, too. Now, if you think this is tedious, I'm going to show you how to do it quick. So I'm just going to click Carlac here, hit Level Up, Mash Spacebar, uh, just choose whatever, hit Accept, Mash Spacebar until this screen pops up, hit Escape, switch to Main Character, talk to Dareth Bonecloak, hit Show Me Your Wares, toggle this twice, toggle Ingredients, let's see, we got Invis Pot, uh, yeah, that's it. Go to ingredients up top, and then just kind of look through. Let's see, Viridian Crystal, no. Mergrass, we need this for, those for suspensions. Uh, Define Bone Shard, no. Bone Cap. Yeah, so there we go. And then leave, and that only took, again, that took like a few seconds, right? The, the, the tedious part is uh, <laughs> respecting them and doing it, you know, six more times. Go, go back, go back again, talk, talk, toggle, toggle, consumes, uh, guy full movement, invis pot there, and then ingredients, there's goth eye, org, yes, let's see, here in here, bully with trumpet, I could buy the eye, but, uh, yeah, I'll do it for suspensions, why not, and, uh, if you want, if you want to know like a big list of stuff to buy, you just kind of have to know. But uh, I, I guess I could work something out. All right, so this one is quite a bit. So feel free to pause and uh, reference this over and over again. Here we go. So here's the consumables. I'm not going to list them out loud. I'm just going to slowly scroll it up through the screen here. Ingredients. So you need the cloud giant fingers. You need three of those to make the salt, and then you take the salt and a uh, sublime. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a suspension. You get, you make, uh, mo most of these things I'm listing, uh, below the Pegasus Feather are all suspension ingredients. You need three of those for any suspension. So it is, it is the Cloud Giant Salt and then a suspension, which, if you use three Murgrass to make a suspension, you take the salt and a suspension, and then you can make two potions out of that. So there you go. Once you run out of story characters to level up, you're going to do some hirelings, but we're going to make a hireling it will help us craft these potions very early on. So go ahead. I want to talk about hirelings. Very well. And then recruit a hireling for 100. And we're going to recruit the halfling, Brenna Brightsong. Because if she rolls a 1, she gets a, a do-over. And we're going to venture forth. So there we go. There's Brenna. Now, because she's level 1, we're going to go back to the vendor and do the usual buying. Once you're done shopping, go to Withers. And then you're going to respec into a wizard. So help me change my class, and there's a few things that you're going to do. You're going to make her a wizard. She is a bard by default. Cantrip spells don't really matter. Well, cantrips early on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, nothing there really worth picking. Uh, so abilities, you want her to be wisdom-based. So make sure that you crank up her wisdom to 16. And uh, you want medicine proficiency in this menu. So make sure that medicine is selected, not insight. That's all you really need to do for level 1, but just go ahead and crank anything else up that you feel like. Uh, I'm just going to do Charisma. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see, and then I guess Con. So there we go. As long as Wisdom is 16 and you have Medicine Proficiency, that's the first level in the Wizard done. Now, after you're done shopping, you're going to do Wizard again. That's level 2 Wizard. Here we are. And uh, you want to do Transmutation. There we go. Spells don't matter prepare spells does not matter and then continue shopping for her level three this is Brenna bright song of the hireling uh, you are going to make her a cleric so we're switching now level two levels into wizard one level into cleric the domain doesn't matter I use life because I can use her as a camp healer and prepare spells uh, none of this really matters right now uh, for cantrips, you can give her guidance. Uh, you, you, all your party members should have guidance, so you don't really have to do this. Also, if you're worried about all the money we're spending, because we're blowing a lot of money on ingredients and potions and consumables, don't worry. We're going to get all of this back 
With, and no, we're not killing Dareth. I'm going to show you how to not kill them and rob them of everything. So, again, her money is going to stack and stack and stack and stack as long as we do this. Next up, you're going to continue leveling the Hireling as a Cleric. So, next level. Right now, we are level 2 Wizard. We're going to be level 2 Cleric. Make sure that it's selected as Cleric. That's the one with the spiky mace ball thing. There we go. Her next level will also still be in Cleric. But this time, make sure that she has the prepared spell. Uh, where is it? Enhance ability, because that's going to help in our crafting. And then finally, for level 6, we are going to do the feat ability improvement plus 2 wisdom. And uh, cantrips, doesn't matter. Feet, uh, ability improvement, plus two wisdom. Boom, boom, there we go. And uh, yes, I know there's a way to use rogue for, for the medicine thing, but this gives you a slightly better dice roll and advantage, and using this specific hireling gives you, uh, if you roll a one, you, you get to re-roll it, so it, it, it's, it's just easier this way. Also, when swapping characters to respect them, make sure that you tell Brenna to wait for me in my camp. Do not say I have no more use for you. She will leave the party. And go back yeah. to the hireling pool. So, and uh, as far as who I'm going to respect, I'm just going to grab Karlac. Uh, that way I can just pickpocket after uh, every time we uh, respect. So, we go to Karlac, and then we go to Withers, and then we respect, and then we have Asterion get our gold back. Very simple uh, process. We're going to repeat this for a little while and get those ingredients, get those potions, get those consumables rolling. I also want to mention that the longer you do this, the more gold you're going to earn. Because the gold just even... I'm not spending this amount of gold. This vendor has 53,000 gold on them. And I've spent about 6,000 of my gold, okay? Uh, but yeah, you just keep doing this until as long as you can stand it. Also, I just want to note if you're, on, if you're playing a spellcaster build or you're on honor mode, I highly recommend uh, Potions of Flying and Superior Elixir of Arcane Cultivation. Restores level 3 spell slots, really useful stuff. But, uh, you know, as long as you can stand doing this, uh, the more powerful and easier the rest of the game becomes, because this is the part where things become truly, truly broken. And, um, yeah, you can craft all the best, just about every best potion in the game now at this point. Oh, forgot the warg thing there. Alright, it's time to get the gold and become mega super rich. Just note that once you do this, you're going to have to long rest before you can do the whole farm the inventory thing again. So you want to make sure you get as many ingredients and potions as you want. I recommend doing it for 30 minutes to an hour, but uh, you'll have other opportunities to do this later on throughout the game. But we're going to show me your wares. Go to barter, and we're going to, you know, give her the old backpack. There you go. Go ahead and just give that backpack to her. Stuff the gold in, and, uh, you know, whatever else you, you might want. You know, let's see. Uh, consumables here. Anything good? Whatever. Ingredients, you know, one last trip won't hurt. Looks like I've already cleaned her out. And uh, yeah, so there we go. We're going to go ahead and close the window, leave, and then we're going to do a safety save. Now, you're going to have that uh, transmutation wizard, Brenna Bright Song, with you, and she has the spell Fog Cloud. So, what we're also going to do is toggle passive mode. We don't want to kill Dareth. She is a vendor in Act 3, and we want her available, we want her alive. She won't like us as much after we do this to her, but she, she might not even know we did it to her. And uh, I don't have Lazelle with me, so I really should have swapped out Asterion for Lazelle, but um, we're just going to have to beat her up without Lazelle. She's got 19 HP on the easier difficulties. This will be harder on, um, what, what's we call it, honor mode? Wow, I've, I've been made, it's been a long time and I haven't had any sleep. So, uh, here we go, and... And then we're going to enter turn-based mode real quickly and just uh, beat her up. Now, we do have a very powerful Shadow Heart now. And Shadow Heart should be able to take her out. Look at split. There's the first hit. And yes, it did initiate combat, which is fine. But uh, the rest of the camp doesn't matter. She's still neutral to everyone else. Hit her over the head with a club. And uh, let's go with Starion here. Hit, him with the, hit her with the sword. There we go. So she is now knocked out. We're going to loot that bag. And uh, I can't steal. Well, I can open it. There we go. Now I can steal that. And then we just head to camp. And if she is knocked out, make sure she's knocked out and not dead. Because sometimes item or weapon procs can cause death. But yeah. Uh, now <laughs> Asterion is uh, clearly encumbered from all the money 
Uh, just the money alone is 60 pounds of money. Here you go, Brenna. Here's 60 pounds of money. You earned it, girl. <laughs> oh, man. So, there you go. Um, <laughs> we are now rich beyond measure. We have the ability to craft all the best potions in the game, which will completely break our characters. I mean, we're going to have 27 strength. We have infinite invises. We have infinite potions of speed and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. The best toxins. It's, uh, it's, it's only going to get crazier from here. This is a huge turning point in our power spike. So I'm going to mule over all the ingredients to Brenna because she's going to be, she, again, she's our alchemist. So I've opened her pack. I'm going to open my shopkeeper or, you know, my main character's pack and sort it. And then we're just going to drag it all in there. There we go. And, uh, you know, just check everyone else's inventories there. It looks like um, Asterion had some because he does little solo missions every once in a while. Sort that. And, yeah, just go ahead and... Dump it right in there. There we go. And then I'm going to start uh, teaching you how alchemy works. Let me just uh, move these potions over. We don't even actually need these potions. We can craft the best potions in the game now. But I just keep them around because they're really cheap, easy buffs. They're, they're free buffs. That's what they are. And I don't know. <laughs> there's so many scrolls. I don't know where my re res scrolls are. But there we go. And then I'm going to open this menu here because I know that Lazelle probably has some. There it is. Oh, that closed the inventory, too. That's going to complicate things. Okay, well, we'll just do it this way, then. Lazel, hand over your stuff to Shadowheart. There we go. And then close Lazel's menu. Open this up. Again, we got to be tidy with it. Put that in there. Sort it by type. And then er now that everything's sorted, we're going to switch to Brenna Bright Song. Uh, we can turn off the non-lethal. And she is going to cast... Uh, where is it at? It's the level 2-1. Uh, enhance ability on herself, and we're gonna do the wisdom one. Owl's wisdom. There we go. And now she has Owl's wisdom, and, and as long as she's in the party. And now we're going to come over to our main character and cast guidance on her. So that's an extra one d four. This is gonna give us about a sixty percent chance to, um, I believe, around sixty percent, uh, to get double potions. And now we uh, do a safety save, and then let's begin. Oh, and it helps to do turn-based mode, uh, which I forgot to mention, so we're just going to cast Guidance once again on Brenna. There we go. Now that we're on Brenna, we go turn-based mode, open the menu, and then open the alchemy. And then we're going to find the ingredient. We're going to find the uh, the giant fingers. Where are they at? They're in here somewhere. Let's see. I am, I am uh, cross-eyed right now. <laughs> All right, so I don't know what happened, but um, for whatever reason, it's not in the inventory, but it, it, it is, but the game isn't displaying it for some reason. Uh, but if you go to Alchemy and you go to Extract All Ingredients, and then just do that again, you'll see that uh, we clearly have the uh, Cloud Giant fingernails, which... Okay, if I go to Elixir now, and I go to Elixir of Cloud Giant, I have the ingredients to make this. So it it did I I don't know it, it's some sort of display bug but it is there so if that happens to you uh, you know just <laughs> I don't think we lost anything because it's still here but it did just basically kind of make everything a little bit more easier for you and uh, again I don't I don't know what's happening here with with that but uh, just some sort of bug they need to address anyway so with Brenner Bright Song uh, once we've extracted everything go to salts well no I'm sorry you go to elixirs. Normally, you would right-click the ingredient and then do it manually, but uh, there's no real reason to. So, at this point, you would save, and then we're going to craft one at a time, because we want the double craft. This is the Cloud Giant Strength, so we're going to hit Craft. And then we're going to see... Um, it says we succeeded a medicine check, so that means we got two of them. So, you'll notice when we go in the inventory, we now have two Elixir of Cloud Giant Strengths. Increase your strength to 27 until long rest. Uh, so this is insane. Your, your Titan String Bow will now deal insane damage. Uh, Shadow Heart and um, <laughs> Lazel will just beat everything up for maximum damage. You can throw fully grown armored, heavily armored men off cliffs. You could you could do the improvised melee weapon movement cheese on neutrals. The, the, <laughs> the possibilities are simply endless. So what you're gonna do now is every time you have a successful craft. You're going to save, and then you have, again, you can craft uh, plenty of bloodlusts, 
You put this on Asterion, and uh, it's just an extra, you know, move. Heroism is for late game when you want to be a tank. Uh, <laughs> um, so potions, potions, you got potions of flying, you got a supreme healing, you got invis. We got plenty of those from the shop anyway. Potion of speed, we can craft 30, or I'm sorry, we can craft uh, 22 of these. Um, but we already have a bunch that we, we bought uh, from the shop. So there you go. And then grenades. Well, you have haste spore grenades. There's uh, at least four there. Web grenades if you want to jump down to a lower level safely. There's, uh, you know, you got plenty of coatings now that you can use. Uh, <laughs> so the world is your oyster. Once you've crafted all the potions, take some time and divvy them up evenly between your party members. Don't forget, uh, I have Lazelle here too. You can see. I've got, she's got a Cloud Giant, she's got Flight, Invis, Heroism, Colossus, Bloodlust. Whatever we need for this situation, we're more than well prepared to deal with all of it. Once you're all done with your little crafting, uh, reassemble the party. So I'm going to have her wait in the camp. There we go. And then I'm going to go get Lazel. Where's Lazel? And we're going to go finish up the goblins. It's about darn time that we kill them, right? But we're going to kill them meticulously. Very meticulously. So, we're going to warp to the goblin camp. And remember, right now, the goblin camp is still nice and pristine and friendly. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you decide to, and you kill all the goblins in the Blighted Village, and all the goblins in this little area, and all the goblins in the entire camp, and everything else, you know, like this... Uh, <laughs> ogre and whatnot. You're gonna earn 1,337 experience, which is one seventh of our next level. It's uh, it's not a lot, but um, we're gonna level to seven in the crash, which we're gonna do next. Uh, also, the quest rewards for all this is about 400, so you're gonna get a thousand seven hundred XP if you decide to kill every single thing in here. Also. While we're here, let's uh, check out the vendor and uh, see uh, what she's got because we're all level 6 now. You you don't need to reset this lady's stuff, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to see what kind of consume she has. Now, she should almost always sell you an invis and an elixir of hill giant strength, which we're going to cheese. I'm going to buy this potion of speed. Why not? Pale mint, huh? Never seen. I don't think I've seen mint. And uh, where's my gold? Oh, I have to do it like that. Okay, yeah. So 150, easy, easy, easy. We got plenty. Of, remember, we have 59,000 back in camp. So you you need a potion and, and a hill giant strength for the next little cheese that we're going to do. But we're not going to do that cheese just yet because we're going to go meet and free housing. And the reason why we're freeing housing, because, okay, yeah, he frees himself if we never encounter him and we kill the goblin leaders. But by doing it this way, we get him in our camp early. Now, he, he can't be a party member till act two, but having him in our camp will give us bonus XP and, uh, you know, I like to get bonus XP. Now, the reason why I'm not doing killing every goblin is it, it takes a while. Even if you get a Sterian, you can one-shot a lot of these in the easier difficulties. It's just not something I really bother calculating. But what we're going to do now is we're going to clear this entire room, and we're all level 6. These guys are, like, level 2. So we're going to, yes, you're going to kill the children, I know. You're going to kill the wargs in here. You're going to kill everything, except for Haslin. I'll see you there. But once the fight is over, I do forward. believe the wargs have, uh, I think they have an item on them. I forget. It's nothing we use in our builds, but, uh, well, besides their, no, I guess not. Or no, it's a skeleton inside their cage. I, there's something in here. I remember, yeah, it's the war thing. So, uh, I mean, it just, it's just goblins have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Like, it's pointless, but hey, you might as well grab it. It's kind of cool. Anyway, we're going to talk to Housen. And uh, what you want to do is do not have him follow you, but if you did, there's a way to cheat it by having him invisible. He won't aggro immediately. Anyway, we're just going to have him chill out here. So uh, we're just going to exhaust his dialogue. And then there we go. How do I help? I'll deal this. You get to safety. He'll disagree. All right. Wait here until it's done. So what you're going to do now is separate your weakest character, which um, will be our healer character. Healer, Our healer is going to stay, and our three other party members are going to go assassinate Ragslin. And we're going to do this the cheesy way, because we have Invispot, we have 
uh, the the crappier hill giant strength elixirs. So again, we can get this done lickety split super quick. But there's one thing we got to do because we did a short rest earlier. We have to take out Minthara again because for whatever reason, Haslin didn't know we knocked her out yesterday, and so we got to knock her out again. And uh, and then Haslin will be happy. Now we're not gonna kill her. We're just gonna knock her out. And we took all of her weapons. Um, so she can't really fight back, though she she's, uh, I don't know, min minorly annoying. Now, remember, uh, if you want to kill her, you can, but she's a better evasion tank than Lazelle by a long shot. So I'm going to make a safety save, of course, just in case something gets goofed up. And we're going to put on the old safety thing here. And let's get our biggest hitter, Lazelle. Just give her a big old smack. And we missed. <laughs> Of course we miss. We always miss. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now, you gotta be careful with uh, Asterion, because he can one-shot her, and for whatever reason, I mean, if you use a ranged weapon, it could kill her, so that's a load game. So if you're on honor mode, uh, nope, that didn't kill her. Okay, good. Uh, but if you're on honor mode, I wouldn't shoot arrows at her at all. <laughs> but yeah, she's gonna heal, and she's gonna buff up, and she's gonna do a whole bunch of crap to us, but uh, no one's coming to help, so... And another miss, dude. All right, but uh, you know we're more than capable of beating her up with uh, with uh, oh what? What's her name? Shadowheart. Wow, I've been awake too long. I'm sorry that I'm forgetting names. She's knocked down. She's prone. That'll knock her out. Make sure that oh that killed her. Got a load game. It was the lightning st the lightning jolt that did the extra damage. So we don't want her dead. But I, I, I do want to point out that for whatever reason, okay, it doesn't work if she died. Sometimes when you knock her out, she'll have like a ton of supply packs, just like before. So I gotta, again, I gotta load. All right, so she is now knocked out. Let's see. Uh, nope, just one supply pack. Sometimes it bugs, but whatever. Anyway, the next course of action is to take Lazelle. And uh, where is that potion? We're going to give, yes, we're going to chug the Hill Giant Strength. I'm going to save before doing this because I always save. You know, very obsessive saver. So, Hill Giant Strength and Invis. And then I'm going to unlink her. And the reason we did this... Actually, I got to have Asterion unlock that door. I'm, I forgot. I, had, I didn't unlock the door in this playthrough. But she's got plenty of time. She's got like eight more turns. <laughs> uh, seven more turns of Invis. We just use the Invis so we don't trigger the cutscene. Because when you walk into this room... Uh, hold on. Yeah, just pick it real quick. We got to go fast. Yeah, unlock it. All right, get in there and move a steering out of the way Quickly now five turns of invis if you're not invis you will trigger the cutscene So what we're gonna do now is improvised weapon Grab Ragslin and then we're gonna drag him All the way in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it started because uh, I'm about to go uninvis which would trigger the cutscene It's funny that they <laughs> he's just being carried by an invisible lazel, right? And then we're gonna cancel and then I'm going to turn base mode, and I'm going to scoot him over this way. Now, don't throw him off the ledge. Do not throw this guy off the ledge. Yes, it insta-kills him, but you don't want to do that, okay? You absolutely do not want to do that. I could actually just kill him right here. Now, what what's going to happen is the entire everything is going to become hostile. Absolutely everything. And you don't want that. So, <laughs> we're going to teleport. We're going to warp these three characters to safety as soon as we kill them. And then we're going to use our healer to tell Haslin that the deed is done. And uh, <laughs> and, and that's going to clear the goblin camp without fighting all of these dudes. And the XP they get, again, if you kill every goblin on the map, it's 1,337 experience. So once Ragslin is dead, then the reason we I had you move him into here is because it gets you and your party out of range of the goblins... And all you have to do is move far enough away with uh, from them to flee combat. So you see, I just need to move two more meters away from them, which is like, there we go. I just moved two meters away. So I'm going to flee combat. There we go. So that ends combat. And then I can stealth as a Starian. I can go back. And uh, now, well, I guess that brought the whole party. But now I can go rob his little treasure hoard, which a Starian could have unlocked a long time ago. There's nothing good in there, but... I mean, you might as well grab it, but now also you can use Asterion to clear out all these pesky little crappy goblins. And uh, again, it, you know, to, how to use Asterion, right? You just 
you pop a good berry. I didn't mean to eat that many. A little <laughs> gluttonous. And then we just one-shot the... <laughs> and we're in stealth. So, <laughs> here comes the goblin guard. Oh no, he saw me. Well, I've... Uh, <laughs> he's surprised. Anyway, uh, if you want the treasure, you can go get it, and Asterion can just clear them all out. Especially if I just climbed up here and shot from the rafters, which I should have done. But um, I figured I would pass the stealth checks also. I can just melee this dude. Like, there you go, he's dead. And then I can just sprint, and then I can just run up here and hide. And then whoever this other one is that's like way over here won't be able to find me, and then combat will end. Or I could just be combat if I move three meters away from this guy. There's, like, he, he's gonna summon a companion, uh, but, uh, again, he doesn't know where I'm at, so I can just flee, well, if I move three more meters, but let's just do that. A better position. So, move three meters, and I didn't move three meters. Well, whatever, we can still just hide, so there we go. Anyway, you get the idea. Now, if you're doing anything with Carlac, or you just want all the craftable stuff in Act 2 and 3, which we don't need. You can take the Infernal Iron, but all you get is like Gloves of the Underdog. This is okay for Lazel for a bit, but I prefer the AC. Uh, we don't really use Spring Step Boots. We have plenty of, of, of gold. I don't even need to loot these anymore so, since we have infinite money and I don't feel like vendoring anymore. Uh, but I'll go ahead and take the gloves just in case. So when Minthara knocked out and Ragslin dead, we can now talk to Halzen, and he's like, they have to die. So we can tell all the leaders are dead, danger. the grove's safe, did you did it. Killing's never my first and then choice. I'm done my part, tell me about the moon grove. He turns into a little meeper rat, and he runs away, meep meep. And <laughs> go ahead and go to camp, and we're going to reunite the party. And again, this is the easiest, quickest way <laughs> out of the damn... Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, and there's Minthara, still knocked out, by the way. Uh, these guys never came back. What about Lazel? She's still there, too? Yeah, she's still just chilling, just making sure Minthara's breathing, I guess. Alright, so party is reunited. It's time to go and claim the rewards. We're going to go to uh, Emerald Grove Environs. Now, at this point, there's really nothing left to do in Act 1. Uh, sort of. So, at this point, if you have not... Fully used up or, or had your ogres die, summon them. You're more than strong enough to take back what is rightfully yours, and let's let's face it, they're ogres. They don't need to live, even if they're smart or intelligent. So what's funny is, like, the other ogres have an intelligence of, like, five, and then you have, uh... Oh, what's his name? He has an intelligence of 17. So he's gonna ask to taste our flesh, and then he'll be off. We're not even gonna give him the chance. Just click attack. And hit yes. Uh, no, we're not going to let them lick our and kiss our hands. It's gross. So just, uh, again, kill the ogres. Now remember, when Lazel gets a kill or a crit, you have this little thing here. Great weapon master bonus attack. So you can land another attack. And it's great. Attack of opportunity? Don't care. <laughs> These guys are too low level for us. Now, of course, you can't just chain and kill, 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 kill. It doesn't work that way. So now that the ogres are dead, they don't really have much. Well, not Frank and Chalk, at least, but Lump the Enlightened. He's got your money. Take it back, even though you're more than wealthy enough. And you're going to take the Warped Headband of Intellect. This sets your intelligence to 17. So we're going to give that to our healer, because that's going to let you pass intelligence skill checks easier. Now, also, uh, in just a little bit, we're going to get some gloves that are going to set our decks to 18, and then we're going to respec, and we're going to have... Wisdom, charisma, <laughs> uh, what? Man, I am, I am sorry. I'm constitution. All of this will be very high stats. And then if we chug the potion, uh, our strength will be 27 if we want. O otherwise, we have that club we can use to set it to 19. The sky is the limit. Things are looking up. So finally, we're going to head from the waypoint and we're going to go into the Druid Grove and get some rewards, get some quest, uh, you know, completions. And I just want to say that this is the last opportunity you get to kill all the goblins on the map for 1,337 experience. Because once the day passes, it's over and they will be gone. So, it's, uh, again, it's up to you. If you want to do any more vendoring or, or merchant stuff, now's the time to do it. So we're going to talk to Halzen and just exhaust his dialogue. So, it, it lets Zevlor talk. So... This is uh, this is somewhat important if you want to really min-max your healer, and boy is he bloody. 
Uh, make sure you say thank you. Don't say you can keep your coin. I don't care if you're playing a good playthrough. Say thank you. It's not All right. It's and he's going to give you a little baggy, yeah, little goodie bag. Now, first off, say we'll see you there. So this patched together sack, it's a little awkward to use, but you're going to open it. And this is Wapira's crown. So if you are in a, if you know you're going to be doing a lot of fights and not a lot of int checks, you're going to wear this helmet. Whenever you heal anyone else, it heals you, the wearer, for one to six health points. That's always going to be six in just a little bit. We're going to get an amulet to pair it with and the rest of our healing set, of course. And then, uh, you know, this stuff is like dirt. I don't even need it, so I'm just going to drop that. Uh, also, I don't need this old helmet anymore, so I'm going to drop that. But uh, <laughs> we have one, two, three, four, five, six tadpoles. And then uh, whoever killed uh, Ragslin has the seventh one. So you want to make sure that before you do anything else or proceed forward, that you have seven tadpoles. That's how many you should have. So now we have this one. The gift from the absolute. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tadpoles. We are all set to proceed forward. Make sure you have a safety save. If you want to do like the romancy stuff, if you want to shag one of your party members, you really want to make a safety save here. And uh, we're going to go up the ladder now. And then you're going to talk to Zevlor. Also, this would be the time that you do like uh, a genocide kind of thing where you just kill everybody if you're playing that. But uh, we're going to talk to Zevlor. To and camp. let's go there right away. Now, this is like a little camp party. There's nothing to gain here. There's nothing to do. If you want to play a loner, you just go straight to bed. If you want to shag a party member, talk to them. And when you fail the dialogue choices, load game, and then try again and try again and try again. Or you can kill everyone here, though your party won't like that. Everyone's going to disapprove. It's it's a real mess on genocide runs, I tell you what. But uh, you do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, I don't care about pixelated romance. I have a GF in real life. So I'm just going to go to bed and not talk to anybody. I don't care. I know Asterion wants some. Too bad, bro. The buzz of celebration, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Haslin's going to congratulate you on betting somebody <laughs> with his smug smile. And then uh, just exhaust all his dialogue. All right, so now you want to make a safety save. This is the next day. You've lost all your buffs. Don't don't rebuff. We're, we're going to pass another day. And so what you're going to do now is have Lazel come over to Haslin. And uh, go passive, uh, you know, toggle non-lethal, knock his butt out. This is this is 150 free XP. It, it does nothing wrong in the story. There you go, 150 XP. You can even take some of his stuff if you want, but he is a party member later. <laughs> so anyway, that's just how to get some free XP. And that's why we did the goblin camp in that specific order is for more XP. All right, so this is the last time you're going to do any kind of vendoring in this area so if you want to go uh you know to the myconid colony and farm more of those elixirs it's the next day the npc while she'll be slightly upset she's she won't be hostile uh so you can repeat that process and get more giant elixirs if you want and what a weird pathway also party members want to chat yeah see she's back up she's walking around she's all you know doing her thing there we go. Doesn't seem particularly fond of you. And you can smooth things over. All right, there you go. And then, again, one last little shopping trip. You could buy things if you want. I'm going to go ahead and buy that, of course. And Well, I'm just going to use the trade menu because that's a lot quicker. So trade. I'll buy one. Oh, we got potion of flying. Got that. Ingredients. Uh, go ahead and grab that. You know, just do do this with all the vendors before you leave. Now, this guide left a lot of side quests open that you could now go do. I just want to point that out. For the sake of my guide, I'm going to be skipping a lot of the side quests that I don't feel like is necessary, like getting the owl bear cub, um, getting uh, the... Uh, there's like a plant over here that lets sh uh, uh, Shadowheart remember her, one of her old friendships with a disgusting NPC. Uh, there's another, you know, there's a bunch of little things you can do around the map that are still needing to be done. If you want to, if you're a completionist, you can go do them now, but they don't give you any good loot or XP or anything that's actually worth doing. So I'm going to proceed forward. And to do that, I am going to travel to Joaquin's Rest. We've already cleared out that Gith Yankee patrol, and we did it earlier so that our XP would be higher for some of those harder fights. And we're just going to go and proceed here uh, west. Here's that big bloody battle we had. And we're just going to proceed west. 
to the Gith Yankee Crash. We're not going to Shadowlands. We're not going to Act 2. We're going to what I'm going to be calling Act 1.5. It's not quite Act 1. It's not quite Act 2. It's in between. And uh, you could technically come here earlier if you want, but it just wastes more long rests. It's not optimal. But now is the time to go there. And so I'm going to the Mountain Pass. This is going to pass the day along. And uh, this will change Will forever. That's the cutscene that we're going to have. Also, uh, if you're into romancing succubus demons, uh, uh, Mizora is romanceable in this game, if you're into that. But, bro, all the women in this game are old hags. I'm telling you. Ew, gross, right? Anyway, you can talk to her however the heck you want. I'm just going to, you know, there's really nothing you can do to save Will at this point. Even if you were to kill Carlac before you end the day, if you don't kill her before she joins, you, you can't change fate. Anyway, exhaust all the dialogue with everybody, and then uh, you'll be in Act 1.5 on the next day. Now, you're going to have the little dream sequence with the uh, dream visitor. Just be positive me. about everything. You Just be positive. And that way, less people will be resilient to the tadpoles, which is unlocking new powers. Oh, boy. Once you awaken, you'll want to make a safety save because you're going to have to do a lot of persuading, especially if you decide to have Lazel as a main character in your party. And uh, so what you're going to do first off is open your inventory and then consume the Mind Flayer Parasite specimens. And uh, I'm just going to put on the screen everything that you should choose early on. So at this point you want to open your mind to the tadpole so now every time you get a parasite you get a power level up essentially. And some stuff happens later that will reset them and let you respec kinda sorta and unlock some stuff passively but here's what you're going to use. So for your healer, favorable beginnings, transfuse health. Maybe not on easier difficulties. Shield of Thralls, don't really need it in easier difficulties. It's just might as well. And free cast. Much, much later. Uh, Radiant Orb Tank. This is Mithara or Lazella if you're into aliens. Favorable Beginnings. Whenever you get Mithara, pop it in. Concentrated Blast and Coal of the Week. And then later, you're going to do Psionic Blast or Psionic Overload, Stage Fright, Displacer Beast Shape, Force Tunnel, Displacer or Displace Black Hole. Much later, though, you could just use Void Orbs, though they're less reliant and they don't slow. Repulsor and Fly, and then once everyone else has everything that they need on this list, you're going to dump all the remaining Parasites into this character so that they have the highest number for Cold Week because they're the ones that are going to be hitting every single person on the screen constantly. Now, the Fog Cloud Rogue just needs Favorable Beginnings, Concentrated Blast, and Cold Week. The Monk will be using Favorable, favorable Beginnings, Concentrated Blast, Cold the Week, and then later, Psionic Overload, Stage Fright, and Displacer Beast. Now, if you follow the instructions properly earlier in the guide and you use those Illithid Wisdom Roll powers, this middle slot will be unlocked already. You don't have to waste a worm on it. So, there we go. So, this is uh, the healer. So, we're going to do Favorable Beginnings. We're going to go to Asterion. We're going to do Favorable Beginnings. We're going to go... Uh, you cannot do Shadow Heart yet, so we're going to talk about that. So we're going to walk over to Shadow Heart and make a safety save, and we have to convince her that Tadpole good. And, uh, you know, if you fail the roll, you can always try again another day, but we want to we want to get it right now. So we're going to be like, uh, these Illithid powers, what do you make of them? And then you want to say, Persuasion, the odds are stacked against us. Can we truly afford to ignore a potential advantage? And then I'm going to use Friends for the advantage. And let's go. Let's see if we get it. And we got it. And again, Favorable Beginnings gave us a plus five here. So there you go. And now, and now, besides all of our problems, we can now pop these into uh, Shadow Heart's little brain there. There you go, Worm. Dig in. Get all those memories. Yum, yum. So now we have four worms remaining. We are going to go to Asterion. We're going to get him Concentrated Blast, which we need to get, or we need to put it in there so we can get Cole of the Week. So this is just slightly more damage. This is basically an Execute. And then for Shadow Heart, we're doing the same thing. We're going to Cole, Concentrated Blast into Cole of the Week. Now, this will splash and hurt them if they are near enemies that die, but you have, they, they all have heals. Everyone's protected. It's It just speeds up fights immensely. And once we get Minthara, it's the same thing. Favorable beginnings, concentrated blast, into Cold of the Week, and then just look at this video for reference for the rest of the list. 
I might have the list available again on my Act 2 video, which will take a while to make, so make sure you subscribe at this point. I know, let's ask him to subscribe however many hours into the video. <laughs> Now, before we move out, exhaust everyone's dialogue. They're all going to be talking about stuff, so just mash through it. Now, if you are choosing to use Lazel in your party as the main tank, she requires two really difficult persuasion checks. Uh, so if you're on, uh, what is it, uh, honor mode, good luck with that, because she's very stubborn. So here we are in Act 1.5, Rosie Morn Monastery Trail. And uh, there's there's a little bit to do here. There's a, it's a big power spike for us, but we're gonna go ahead and start walking towards the north here, as we loot these random things. Nothing good in them, and uh, we're gonna curve around. We're gonna grab the waypoint first, and boom, 280 XP just for showing up here. Wait. And then we're just gonna tell Lazel we must get to the crash. There we go. So just that shuts her up. We're going to go west later, even though we can totally take this fight now, even on honor mode. This is an easy fight. We're all clerics. I'm going to spoil it. It's a bunch of undeads. We can just turn them and then smash them dead. But there's no reason. It's going to be even easier when we get a certain weapon in just a little bit. Anyway, so we're going to go down here and curve around uh, to talk to you, Lady Esther. And I'm not going to steal the egg for her. I'm not even going to talk to her. I don't need her money. <laughs> I'm, like, there's no good thing that happens doing this quest later on in the game. Let's just say that. Anyway, um, I, I think this, this character, though, is very based, okay? So I don't kill her, but if you want to, you can. Uh, anyway, um, so I'm just gonna, you know, talk to her, but I'm not gonna agree to do her quest. How much did you offer? And <laughs> I'm not gonna read this out loud, but, um... I'm curious in the comments if you made it this far. Do you think that violence is taught and not inherited, or do you think that some things are in our blood? I'm gonna go with number two, because I think it is. You know, that's, just, that's just how it is. Anyway, uh, let's see. Do you have any equipment worth trading? That's what we care about. So go ahead and open this menu. You got plenty of money. Go ahead and, uh, you know, buy whatever you would like. But there's a few things that we should buy. Well, mini targets. Oh, air of mini targets, very good. Chef's kiss on that one. Uh, so, a lot of people like this graceful cloth. I don't like it, so don't, I'm not going to get it. It's not part of my guide. Uh, Baneful striking. Uh, nah, that one's not good either. Cinder and sizzle, not really good. Winter's clutches. If, you, if you're a frost mage, best in slot, absolutely. Periapt of wound closure is our best in slot for heals. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely get that one. And that's really all that we got, or all that we need from her. So 228 down the hatch. There you go. Slap that bad boy on your healer. And where is it at? There it is. You can send this to camp. We don't need it anymore. And uh, where's that arrow of many targets? That's going to go to Asterion. Always give those to Asterion. We don't need to do any intelligence checks for a little while. So uh, you can put on the healing, healing crown if you'd like. And what we're going to do now... So we're going to head north, and also on your healer character, we're going to equip that Club of Hill Giant Strength once again. And again, we're continuing north here. Now, if you fail this skill check, it's not a big deal. It's just going to take you a little bit more time to manually walk down here. That's all. But with the, with the club, we should be able to pass it a little easier. There's a whole lot of things down here. Just use guidance. Don't chug potions for this. It's like, This just saves you time. Well, I guess we're walking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're just gonna walk down to this monastery. It's it's quick. It's a quick trip. I guarantee it. I'll I'll skip to I'll skip there. You, there's a little side quest and stuff along the way. Who cares? They don't really offer anything. So once you once the lift has has taken you down, or you manually walk through the traps. There was traps, by the way. Wink, wink. Uh, go ahead and curve down to the south, and then proceed northeast. And you're gonna get a waypoint. It's right up here. Here's the waypoint. Pointed directly north. There we go. We got the waypoint. So, this monastery, it's kind of big, but it's really simple. And I'm going to give you the simplest, straightest path to all the items we need and to get you there. But before we do that, it's time to go to camp. And it's time to have Gale buff us up because there's combat ahead. Now, you're going to do the same exact buffs as last time with Gale, so we're just gonna go over here and uh, tell Lazelle to take a chill pill. She's gonna say, Chuck! And uh, we'll get Gale in, get everyone buffed up the same exact way we did before. If they patch that thing where he heals himself and restores spell slots, well, 
just buff your main tanks. <laughs> you don't have to buff uh, Astarion. He is, you know, very slippery and ranged. Your healer is ranged. Just buff the two main. Uh, that would be Shadowheart and Lazel. And I just have to include this in the video. Chuck. Chuck. All right, so it's clearly not patched. I guess earlier in my playthrough, it just bugged out and Gale stopped self-healing. And if you're wondering why I'm shirtless, it's uh, because whenever <laughs> Asterion punches me with his armor on, he does zero damage. So that's that's why. And in case you skipped to this part of the video, here's the camp buffs. Uh, Gale will cast Warding Bond, protection for poison, long strider aid, upcasted, and swap healer boots to Gale, and then AoE heal for the three temp HP. Next up, Asterion will use Bite on Will. There we go, giving him happy. Then you'll use Will to craft good berries for Asterion. And again, this is so Asterion can proc his poison necklace pretty much at will. And so just cast a whole bunch. You don't need too many for this part of the game because this, this is Act 1.5. It's really short. I'm just going to craft 12. That's more than enough. Next up, grab Karlak, and you're going to go to Withers and respec her into a Transmutation Wizard. Now, this character is going to buff our move speed, not with Longstrider, but with something else. But, this character will also be used to skip certain parts of Act 2 and 3 later on, which, unfortunately, this guide is so long I have to break it up. But here are the spells that you will learn on Karlak, and that is Featherfall, Disguise Self, and Large Reduce, and Vis... You can read the screen, I've got them listed here, feel free to pause the video, but just level her up and uh, learn these skills. If you're curious about ability scores, just go Int, Wisdom, Charisma, because you don't. she doesn't need health or dex or any of that kind of stuff. And her skills don't really matter. Um, again, you can just put in Medicine, Religion. Uh, it, it, again, you're not going to use her for any of that kind of stuff. And remember, the subclass is Transmutation. Once you've leveled her up, you will have this ability somewhere down here. No, that's not it. Uh, let's see. It is... Which button is it in? It is the transmutation ability, which... Uh, it's right here. Class action. Transmuter stone. Uh, common abilities. Why is it not there? Anyway, I guess drag, drag this around a bit. There it is. Just drag it around until you see it, and then you're going to do the one for move speed. So, see in the dark? Nope. Uh, con constitution save throws now. You want movement speed. This will increase the holder's movement speed by 3 meters. Now, let's say you screw up and you click the wrong thing. Well, guess what? Featherfall is a ritual spell, which uh, you'll notice right now this is this is uh, take a long rest or cast a transmutation spell of level 1 or higher to make a new transmuter stone. So, to do that, just do Featherfall, cast it on yourself, which is free, and now you can uh, cast the correct one. So, we're, again, we're going to do the movement one. The movement stone is the best one we can possibly do. And Karlak is going to give that to our good friend Shadowheart as a nice little, you know, gift. You know, to treasure for until the next long rest. And now that increases Shadowheart's movement uh, speed by quite a bit, up to 15 meters. And that is before she uses her boots of speed or anything of the sort. Now, what you're going to do is dismiss Karlak back to the camp. And then you're going to go to Withers, and you're going to hire the wizard hireling and do the same thing over again. So stay behind in camp. There we go. That frees up a party member. So you're going to go to Withers, and you're going to hire the wizard. So here we go. I'd like to talk about hirelings, recruit a hireling. And uh, just pick whichever one's the wizard. I forget which one. That's the warlock. Barb, cleric, druid, fighter, monk, paladin, ranger, rogue, source. Oh, it's F Sir Fuzzalump. What a fun name. Anyway, so you're going to do the same exact thing with him now, except you're going to give the stone to Lazel, And later you'll be giving it to Minthara. Now remember, you can use this button in the bottom left for camp companions to access Lazel's inventory. Just click Lazel, drag the stone over, and now she has the movement speed. So both your melee fighters can move all over the battlefield, and everyone's super buffed and ready to fight. Except there is one last thing we need to do, and that is we need to secure Lazel's weapon. Now, this is a temporary one, but we're going to make it so she can't be disarmed in combat, which is a whole waste of her turn if it happens. Now, this time from Withers, you're going to pick the fighter. So that's the Barb, Cleric, Druid, Fighter. So you're going to grab Ven Verana Sunblossom. There we go. 
And you're going to turn her into an Eldritch Knight, which is level 3 fighter. So that's level 2, there we go. And then level 3 fighter, you're going to go subclass Eldritch Knight. None of the spells matter, so just pick anything. Once she's level 3, you don't need to level up any further. Just go ahead and um, sometimes if you exit out too fast, it cancels. Okay, yeah, we're, we're good. So now what you're going to do is you're going to open the menu and go to Lazelle and yoink her weapon off. And I'm just going to put it in Shadow Hearts inventory for a sec here. Close that, put it there, and then we're going to go to Weapon Bond. Well, there we go. And uh, hold on, I guess we got to equip it, so we'll go ahead and equip it. And then Weapon Bond, and then Cast on Self. Now you'll notice that the weapon says, um, at the very bottom, Bound Weapon. Now you simply just go open your inventory, open Lazelle's inventory, rather, and hand her weapon back. There you go. And it's still there, bound weapon. So even when I dismiss the hireling now, when I talk to the hireling, wait for me in my camp. There we go. We'll go get uh, Lazelle, who is uh, all the way across. So now we are in control of Lazelle. We're going to equip the sword. You'll notice that it still says bound weapon. And uh, don't don't ever throw the weapon. It it will only deal damage based on the weight of the sword, which is 2.7 pounds. Really, that's it. Uh, anyway, so if I were to throw the weapon or get disarmed, it just comes right back, and it's all automatically re-equipped. That doesn't happen with normal weapons. So this means the Gith Yankee's AI, because we're gonna be fighting Gith Yankee, won't be using disarming attack, and they're all fighters. There's a whole bunch of them. This is insanely valuable for the rest of the game. Uh, so yeah, everyone's buffed up, you got food, you, you, you can't drop your main weapon, and well, Shadowheart can't be disarmed, she's a monk, okay? If your healer or Asterion gets their main hand disarmed, well, they're bow users, so it's fine. Now, before you head out, it's time for your concentration buffs. So as the healer, you're going to be casting Shield of Faith on Shadowheart. And then Asterion will cast Shield of Faith on Lazel. This will increase their AC so that they don't get hit for the next fights. Then Lazelle from her amulet casts Protection of Good and Evil on herself, and then Shadowheart casts the same spell on herself as well, protecting you from the fiends we're about to fight. You can also have Shadowheart cast Speak with Animals on herself. We don't need it for Act 1.5, uh, but if you're doing the side quests, or you just want more flavor, or you just want more buffs on your, on your bar, because look at how ridiculous this is. Uh, and I misspelled Speak on, on the thing. Oh boy, that's embarrassing. But uh, yeah, there you go. Now it's fixed. So, it's just fun. Now it's time to have everyone drink their elixirs for the day. You gotta stay hydrated. So elixir of hill giant strength, the regular ones, not those plus 27s. That's for act two. And then El elixir of bloodlust on Asterion, but everyone else is getting buff. They're drinking their protein. And just to make sure you have the right gear equipped, let's go over it. So your healer will have the warped headband of intellect, the adamantine splint armor, Boots of Aid and Comfort on your main hand, Falar Aluv, the Glowing Shield, the Titan String Bow, the Spider's Lyre, which we won't be using here, Ring of Salving, Whispering Promise, Periapt of Wound Closure, Honestarian, right now he has Leather Helmet, he will get a helmet uh, in here, he's got uh, Hide Armor plus two, Gloves of Archery, though you will be swapping for Gloves of Thievery when I tell you to, Speedy Light Feet, the Sword of Screams, he will be getting an upgrade very shortly. Uh, Wood Woad Shield, no upgrades till uh, Act 2. Uh, the Broodmother's Revenge, the Smuggler's Ring, he will be getting an alternate ring to use for combat situations, though you'll keep this around for really hard to pick locks. Caustic Band, the Jolt Shooter, or Shadow Heart. The Helmet of Autonomy, uh, you don't have to wear this, this was optional, it doesn't really help here. Uh, she will not be received. I don't think she can- No, she will be swapping to Haste Helm later on in this act. Lazelle will get her own new helmet. Uh, Adamantine Splint Armor, the Sparkle Hands, Boots of Speed, the Safeguard Shield, the Bow of Banshee, which she won't be using much unless there's no other options, uh, the Ring of Protection, which the main character might wear. I forget. I don't know. It doesn't help. Never mind. And the Sentient Amulet. And then Lazelle has the Haste Helm. She'll be getting a new helmet shortly. Luminous Armor. Wondrous Gloves. Boots of Stormy Clamor. The Silver Sword of the Astral Plane. Giant Breaker. Crusher's Ring. And the Ever-Seeing Eye. Which you technically could take off because 
When you take it off, it won't break your concentration, and you've already casted it for the day. So if you wanted to use that amulet that shoots necrotic damage, but why would you waste that on Lazelle? She's a powerhouse. There's no reason to equip anything else. Here is everyone's stat pages. Our healer will be getting a new set of gloves also in this act. And here is everyone's uh, other stats like move speed and whatnot. Hello? So 12 meters, 12 meters for your range. 15 and 18. That, not, that does not count the haste helm. It goes to 21 on the haste helm or 22 or something ridiculous. And then if you click heals on Shadowheart, that's 30. If you sprint on any of these, it's a, it's a whole lot. The main character will have the perma buffs uh, from Act 1, which, well, favorable beginnings is your illithid power, forbidden knowledge from the Book of Thay. You also have Volos Estro's Eye, and uh, Awakened should be in here somewhere. Um, no, wait, no, we're getting that in this act. My bad. Now, the spell uh, Survival Instinct on your healer, that, that's not listed here, though, for notable features. And Shadowheart has the permanent condition Loviatar's love as long as she didn't die at any point in Act 1 and you follow this guide precisely. Now it's time to leave camp and I'm going to have you pretty much kill almost everything in this entire zone because it is huge for XP gain. We should get to level 7 before Act 2 which is a huge power spike. And uh, what we're going to do now from the waypoint you're going to climb the knotted roots and then you're going to jump over to the east. And you're going to fireball open this barricade, which uh, you could use whoever has fireball, but fireball just does the most damage to the barricade compared to any other ranged attack. From here, you're going to have Lazel and Shadowheart duo team up together. And why would you know? Uh, we're going to also have the healer get really close so that we can see invisibility. And that should do that. There you go. See invisibility. They fail their saves. We're going to have Lazel jump across this gap here and after all that buffing and all that preparation we're gonna beat up these level one cats i know right but no there's plenty of other enemies in this act anyway the cats are pissed and you only want to use your physical attacks on these cats these cats should not be able to hurt you and land any hits at all and you should be able to one shot them also i have it on passive mode so we definitely want to kill the cats i know i know we're cruel but uh, these are not nice kitties so there we go. We killed them, and then, uh, you know, that's three kills for Lazelle. You know, count them Goblin Slayer style. Move in, make all these other cats awkward and uncomfortable. Alright. And uh, if you want the other characters to fight, they can. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on. Like, yeah, Asterion could, could fight if he wants. But, uh, <laughs> again, the duo here is Shadowheart and Lazelle. So just take care of the cats. Now, if you are playing this part with a spellcaster and you're like, eh, I want to come cast spells. Well, these Grimishkas are allergic to magic and they weird things happen. They start casting a whole lot of crazy spells on you and you can turn ugly really fast. So, uh, not something you want to deal with. Also, the locked door here, you can smash it with Lazel 52 damage. Boy, she hits hard. And, uh, again, there's just some random stuff to loot if you want. And there's nothing too good other than what I point out. But if you want to loot this stuff, like it's just spell scrolls, who cares, right? Uh, so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, Asterion put on those gloves of thievery. Yes, sir. Separate himself from the party, and he's going to open the eastern door here. There we go. And then he's going to continue east down this hallway, then swivel north. Now, this is a big puzzle room. Here's how the game wants you to play it. They want you to grab and find all these ceremonial weapons. Also, that noise? There's a fight going on downstairs. And we skipped a cutscene, but there's some uh, gnomes that are getting killed by Gith Yankee. So that's pretty much all that's about. Anyway, this area wants you to collect these ceremonial weapons and put them on the pedestal to open a door. Well, we have Asterion, who's going to successfully make a perception check on this stone wall. Then we're going to pickpocket, or not pickpocket, we're going to lockpick the stone wall. It's a difficulty of 30. We should be able to do this. If you fail, oh, I got a crit success. Hey, first time for everything. If you fail, it eats one of your mini lockpicks. You have like 20 of them at this point. How many do I have on uh, Asterion now? Uh, lockpicks. 27. You get so many chances to do this. Anyway, inside the pouch, there is this Dawnmaster's Crest. Go ahead and loot it. You can read the note. There we go, we read the note, that gives you 30 XP, and now it's time to return to this room. We're basically done with most of the Citadel. If you really want to explore everything, you can. Actually, I'm just going to teleport him. No, I want him for combat, actually, so 
We're going to return to the room where everyone else is in, which is over here. They're just chilling. And while he runs back, we're going to link up everyone else. And then we're going to smash this barricade that is to the north in this next room here. And you don't have to bring everyone. You could just use Lazel. But actually, let's just use Lazel to smash the barricade because she's angry. Her crush mates are being buttheads. So as soon as you break this um, barricade, swivel the camera around. And boy, that's ragdolling hard. Climb the knotted roots. All right, that's going to put you on the roof here. And yeah, there was something there to dig up. It's just random loot. Who cares? Anyway, make sure that all your party members are up here before you continue. And uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna s come around this way, just like this. Now, you could you could leave with Shadow Heart here and try to be diplomatic about these uh, giant eagles. If you want to play a good guy, eagles are technically good. So you would talk to them with Shadow Heart and convince them that you know you're you're not you're not messing around. You're you're just chilling, okay? But they're good XP and, and Eagle Feathers make really good flight potions, so I'm going to kill them. They are going to die. I'm going to make a safety save. And uh, in this case, because I'm killing them, I'm going to stealth the party, including Shovel here, who is such a troublemaker. He doesn't stealth with everyone else. And then I'm going to uh, climb up here and start just blasting. I'm just going to start stealth shooting. And uh, where's my good berries? They they dropped off my hot bar. Let's put those on there. And then I'm just going to start control mass fast speed clicking. Try to kill the eagle as fast as possible. So that's two shots. Dead. Easy. And uh, only Asterian is in combat. That leaves Lazel uh, to jump over these vines. And get around. And what happens is this eagle will actually summon a bunch of eagles. Which do give XP and drops. So if you want to let him do that, that's fine. I don't care that much, so I'm just going to murder it, and uh, so now everyone's in combat. Once the eagles are dead, on I believe this crate, there is a greater healing potion. It's just useful if you're doing honor mode. I mean, we can craft even better potions, so for everyone else, there's really no need for it. But go ahead and check both crates. I'm pretty sure it's this one, even though most loot is random. This one has always had a healing potion. Yeah, it's got a couple of them. Very cool. So what you're going to do now is you're going to approach the easternmost ledge here where the eagle's nests are. And no, this is not a blue jay nest. There is a blue jay that's like, oh, the eagle stole my nest. Bro, a blue jay did not build this. Okay, that blue jay is a liar. You should just kill him. Any, well, animal cruelty, my bad. Uh, so, okay, Lazel, it's your turn. You are the jumping champion. Go ahead and jump on over. And we're going to proceed east with Lazel. And we're going to jump over here. There's a little chest, painted chest. Pop that bad boy open. We got the Holy Lance Helm. Now, this is a, uh, this is the, um, what is it? The, I am, I have no sleep. We're going to put on Lazel for now. But this is the Radiant Tank's main helmet. And boy, is it a huge DPS boost once you have the entire set going. The Haste Helm will be put on Asteria. No, I'm sorry. The Haste Helm will be put on Shadow Heart. And... And now the Helmet of Autonomy is on Asterion for whatever reason. Who, who cares? It's fine. Uh, I actually prefer Dex Saving Throw over Wisdom Saving Throw. So I'm actually just going to give him the regular Leather Helmet. And then that can go into the camp. From here, you're going to just teleport everyone back to the waypoint. There is nothing left to do. We have done the entire Monastery. I know that seems kind of silly, you know, that that's how it is. But uh, teleport everyone back. And uh, make a safety save, of course. Now, if you're playing some sort of low-level run, uh, yeah, you could have skipped those cats that we murdered earlier. But there's more things to murder. And we're going to travel east now from the waypoint. And it uh, looks like Shovel didn't get the memo to stop sneaking. So, again, you, you want Shovel Let's to, move. you know, be movable. Don't waste a step. We're going to go ahead and uh, continue east. There's the autosave. And you can go look at the dead gnome or whatever it is that's up here on to the north if you care. I don't remember it having anything. If you want to talk to him and speak with the dead, you could totally do that, I suppose. But it's a waste of time anyway. Anyway, to the west of the dead gnome is some broken windows. And we're going to climb in those broken windows. And here comes a kobold. Oh no, except they're all drunk. And he's going to pass out. So, there's a few ways to handle this. 
You know, we have Lazelle. They can just destroy it in one shot. There you go. It's dead. Uh, but these things are vulnerable to fire. And when you hit them with a fire spell, they explode. And they will explode all over the place. So, um, you know, you could just send Lazelle in and assassinate them all. Which is uh, what I'm going to do. But anyway, kill these kobolds. They're level 5. They have very low HP. And they give very good XP. Just clear them out. I forgot to mention uh, your prepared spells. So, uh, for your Cleric, Animate Dead, you can cast that and then you can swap it out. Uh, so in this case, I swap it out for Spart uh, Spirit Guardians. Here's the list. Uh, the reason I have Healing Ward on everyone is that gives you a ranged resurrection, sort of, kind of, to get someone back on their feet. You shouldn't need it unless you're on Honor Mode and you're just failing every roll or something. But uh, all of these are heavily useful. For the Monk, Creator Destroy Water, Command, Sanctuary, Shield of Faith. Asterion, Healing Word, Command, Shield of Faith, Creator Destroy Water, Sanctuary. The reason why everyone has Creator Destroy Water is in case you want to make an entire area lightning enchanted so it shocks everyone on the ground, that is how you would do it. Also, if you're wondering what that annoying noise is, well, some of these barrels have um, enemies in them that are just in there chugging the alcohol. So blow up the barrels and it's even more free XP. Once you've killed the kobolds, it's time to leave. Go back out the way you came in. And we're going in to the crush the easy and the fast and the smart way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go south and then we're going to curve back west. But instead of going up the stairs where we came, remember over here is where, like the waypoint is over here, right? We're going to go down this little, little dirt kind of rocky path this way, which is west and then south. And you gotta watch your AI companions. They might get stuck here sometimes. So just uh, just make sure that they're following. And then once we're all the way down, we're going to curve around east. Jump over the gap. There is a chest here with just random stuff. Let's give that to Asterion. I'll take the potion. And then we are going to go slightly east and then south down this knotted roots. And this is the part where the AI loves to get stuck on. They just don't come down sometimes. I don't know. Then we're going to jump the gap, which Asterion should be able to make. 95 XP because we sat, we found a hidden passage. Very cool. So my summons came, but no one else did. They're all just kind of chilling up there. So can't get there. Yes, you can, bro. What the hell? What does it mean he can't get there? Anyway, we're going to climb. We'll climb. We'll figure it out eventually. We, don't, we actually don't need everyone, you know, for this next part. Uh, but if, if they get stuck, we'll teleport them in later. It's fine. It looks like it's working. I don't know. I, I guess this little area needs work. It wasn't beta tested enough. Um, jump on over. And uh, let's get Lazel out of the jumping path so that the Sterian can make it down. Are you are you climbing down, bro? Or are, is he scared of climbing the vines? I don't get it. But we do need a Sterian for this part. Go ahead and jump over. And he still has the uh, Clothes of Thievery. Gonna go ahead and unlock this door now. So go ahead and pick it. Add the bonus. It's pretty easy. It's a D difficulty 10, difficulty class 10. We rolled 34. So at this point, safety save. Very important that you safety save. Reunite the party. Lazelle is now in, in, in the leader. She will be the face of your party for this next encounter. 120 XP for entering in the crash. So we're gonna just walk straight up to these uh, these other Gith Yankee. And if you don't use Lazelle, if you don't have her for some reason, like if you're doing a solo playthrough, this is like a difficulty 21 persuasion check. So I'm going to do a Gake Parasite has infected me. Your crush will offer me Sanctuary, as is Mandate. And there you go, we're in. Easy as that. That is free passage. I can switch over to your main character, who is the real face of your party, and everyone will be, you know, the usual Gith Yankee type, right? We're going to continue now, uh, kind of uh, northwest here. And uh, in approaches an NPC called Ajak near Jira. We want to talk to Ajak near Jira. Ugh, I'd heard this plane was and uh, care to trade? Fine. So there's a few ways to approach this. I'm going to highly recommend that you murder everyone in here. In the whole crash, kill them all, right? But if you don't want to do that, then here's what you buy, okay? You're going to buy the Gloves of Dexterity and put them on your healer. You're going to buy the Knife of the Undermountain King and give it to Asterion because 
for whatever reason, the organ rearranger where it reduces the number you need to roll a crit works for his bow weapon. I don't understand why. Now, because you're killing everyone in the camp, you can use the backpack trick. You know, you can go to barter and you can give her the backpack and then stuff everything in it. And then you'll have all this stuff, but we're already rich. If you look at our money, 68,000 gold. It's just easier to just buy it and then buy that. And then arrow of many targets. If the if this is these these are all random, by the way. So buy those. Why not? Arrow of dragon slaying. Don't need that until way later. Fiend slaying. Don't need that. Don't really need any of these other arrows. Uh, but the many targets one. Oh man, those are so good. Like all of the time. But yeah, not much else that we would really need from her. Uh, nothing really good. Nothing really special. Uh, and if you're wondering about Larithian's Wrath, this Razor Gale, it looks cool, but it's um, it's it's puny damage compared to what we have. Defender Flail is another good off, or I'm sorry, another good weapon for your healer because it's armor class plus one. Whenever the sword does not have the melody for the short rest, like if you use the melody and you haven't short rested, you can swap to Defender Flail. So I'm gonna buy that as well and give that to the healer. On your way. All right, so on your way then. So here's what we're doing. Knife of the Undermountain King goes to Asterion. So now this sort of screams useless. Send the camp, sell it later. Loves the Dexterity is now on our healer. Of course, I'm sending the arrows to Asterion. I'm keeping the flail in the inventory. And uh, yes, so that is inventory management done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go north here. And... Then we're going west, and we're going to go west, and waypoint discovered. So, we're, there's the waypoint. First things first, it's time to respec our healer, because we have a lot of stats not doing anything for us. So, we're going to go to camp, and then we're going to go to withers, which I haven't pickpocketed him in a while. He's got some gold on him uh, from all these little hireling thingamajigs we've been doing. And uh, I'll show you how to respec. So, you're going Cleric, but your stats are changing and your cantrips are changing. So, you're going with Guidance, Thaumaturgy, and Resistance. You have the Life Domain, as usual. Your Deity doesn't matter. Uh, I keep it at Saloon, so you can have Banter with Shadowheart. Strength and Dex are 8, Int is 8, Constitution 15, Wisdom 16 plus 1, and Charisma 17 plus 2. Now, at level 4, you pick another cantrip. I would pick Produce Flame just to have a Fire Source, because it's useful blowing things up then for feet if you want to be a chatty person who can pass more persuasion checks you pick ability improvement let me hide the text here and then you make charisma 18 and you make constitution 16 this is what i recommend for honor mode this is why i recommend for people that don't want to save scum and reload when they fail persuasion checks otherwise if you are purely combat and you don't care and you go down to sharpshooter which is going to give you a plus 10 to damage, including your strength potion that's going to give you a ton of, like, another plus 8 to damage. The dex gloves are, are another plus 4, 5 or something. I forget how much. So you're going to be shooting for, like, 30 damage a shot as a healer, <laughs> a, a tanky healer with summons. It's ridiculous. So uh, I'm going ability improvement, though. That's what I prefer because I just hate having to save scum and load game and load game and load game. And you've seen how much I've suffered. So there's the text on the screen again if you need it. Now, look at our healer stats. 21 Strength, 18 Dex, 16 Con, 17 Int, 16 Wisdom, 18 Charisma. You're passing everything, bro. You have, uh, <laughs> you're just, uh, you're just good at everything. Look, plus 5 Athletics, plus 4 all the Dex stuff, plus 3 all the Int stuff, plus 8 Nature and Religion, oh boy. Plus 8 on all the Wisdom stuff, except for Survival, plus 3, ew, gross. Plus 4 uh, Deception Intimidation, uh, which we can increase with an Amulet. Uh, for uh, persuasion plus nine to persuasion that's huge that's huge perception plus eight is also really nice for just like oh here's a trap oh here's a lever and if you ever want a dps test you have that zombie you can just bust out and then you can just uh, you can just try out your weapons so with a bow look at that that's 15 <laughs> that's another 13 there and um, I, we didn't take sharpshooter, but we could be doing 10 more damage, okay? So sharpshooter, you have to decide 17 there, 18 there. We already hit pretty darn hard. And, uh, you know, your melee is a finesse weapon, so it benefits. You know, we got 13 there, you know, another 11. Preferably you would use ranged, but uh, yeah, this poor zombie, we're just beating the heck out of him. <laughs> like, our character is quite good, and he's got more HP because he's got more constitution now. 
So, yeah, he's very, he's a healthy guy. Now it's time to proceed from the waypoint. We're going to go west. And then we're going to take this little southwest thing. So there's a little portrait here. That's when you know you want to go south, southwest. So we're going to run this way. And we're not committing mass murder just yet. We will soon, soonish, maybe, you know. It, it's up to you. It's just free XP. You might as well do it. And we're going to continue west. And don't worry, that's in one of those evil cats earlier that's in the box. So don't, oh, oh, oh we got to save the poor kid in the box. It's just one of those stupid evil magic cats. So we're going to go into the infirmary, and you're going to make a safety save. And if you are on... Uh, what, if you're on honor mode, well, if you get debuffed, you can undebuff it by using the tadpoles. I'll talk about that in a bit. Talk to G Gustel Stornagos, and then we're going to say, I've got a tadpole that needs removing. Can you help me? Then we're going to say, number two, longer than you'd expect Ceramorphosis to take. Then we'll say, and the Zethus is, and then we're going to click our, we have our main character for this. I have tried for days to try to get Lazelle to pass as a companion, and nothing I have done in the entire game available at this point will allow her to get these powers. Because that would make her better than Minthara if you could. And uh, if you get Minthara, you could come back here, but it's a real pain in the butt, so I'm giving this to the main character. And this allows our Illithid powers to become bonus actions. And it's a, qu it's a very tough thing to pass. So here's how you do it without pissing off Lazelle and making her leave forever, because that would suck. You're going to click on the Zathisk, and then you're going to stand back, I'm going first. She's going to get pissed, then you're going to say, you would still be hunting for this place without my guidance. And she approves, because she's weird. She's a weird alien creature girl. Anyway, we sit on the chair, you know, the dental chair, getting our implants ripped out. And we're going to say, just lie down on the device, there's no baller talking. Alright, and now it's going to torture us. You're going to do saving throw, follow the doctor's instructions. Which we have the head the headband of intellect on, so we have a plus four there. You're going to cast you're gonna have everyone cast everything they can, okay? So for your character, you're going to cast uh well you're gonna have uh what is this? Uh Shadow Heart cast Bless. And then you're gonna have uh oh, what's his name? Asterion cast resistance. There you go. You should pass this. There we go, we passed it. That's the easy part. Now we have wisdom saving throws. Hey, look, we're a wisdom character. Very cool, right? Here we go. Add bonus beacon of hope to give advantage. There we go. Now we have advantage. We have all the other buffs still applied. Forbidden knowledge plus one from that book of they. It helps. There we go. We passed it. Very good. And now we got to pass another one. But we're a cleric, so cleric saving throw. Pray for deliverance. Flood the creature with divine power. That also gives us um, advantage. So that's all we can do. It's an 18. We got plenty of stuff here. Let's go. And we did it. If you don't do it, load game. If you're on honor mode, I'll show you what to do next. All right. So stuff happens. I'm going to skip, skip, skip. Now, at this point, you're going to say the parasite lives. Yes. And thank goodness it saved me. So she's going to say... And it destroyed it since the Zathisk. We must resort to more traditional means. Wait here. Wait here, I will gather my tools. Now whatever you do, don't go AFK, don't leave the game running, save your game. She's gonna run out and shut the door. And you'll notice the door is locked, okay? And you can't see in here anymore. So what that means is, the traditional means is they're gonna kill you. The Zathisk is actually meant, the story spoiler, the Zethus is meant to purify you by killing you. If you're infected, you have some poor Githyanki hop on the chair, all hippity hoot, all skippy scop, and then you kill them. But we survived because we're the main character and we have plot armor. So while we're in this room, you're going to go ahead and yoink a Mind Flayer Parasite specimen off this table. And then on the southwest, you're going to yank out, or you're going to yank these other two Mind Flayer Parasite specimens. There we go. So we have taken them. Also, there's a Nautiloid tank you could take here, you know, and use it for blowing stuff up. Like, you could blow open this door if you have no lock picker. You know, the game gives you options to escape, right? Except, we're gonna game the game. Also, let's talk to Lazelle, blah blah blah. She's gonna call the doctor a traitor, so we, uh, you know, we, we're morally justified to kill her now. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the doctor doesn't realize we're a video game character. So, you just open your map, and then you just teleport to the waypoint, and then you're out of the locked room. You don't need to lockpick it, you don't need to smash it down, and these characters haven't gotten word yet that you need purifying, so 
You're free to run around and murder everybody now at this point. I mean everybody. To advance the story though, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we- No, I, no I'm gonna kill everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead where I kill everybody. When you kill Ad Jack near Jira, she will have something that wasn't for sale, and that is the Amulet of Branding. I'm sure this can be useful somewhere. I haven't found a use for it yet, but it basically creates vulnerability, which means double damage, on a target for three turns. I'm sure it's useful somewhere. Go ahead and take it. Maybe we'll find a use for it by the time I make the second and third video. Also, if you're wondering what we're going to use these tadpoles for we just got, they're for Minthara. Once you've cleared the Githyanki in the classroom, which is to the north, kind of in the middle, you'll find a dead uh, youth of Varl, and what you're going to do is read the Orpheus Prince of the Comet Part 2. Go ahead and just read that, then close it, and that's 95 free experience. Alright, so once you've cleared out the captain's quarters, and well, everything else there is to clear, I also went and grabbed the egg and gave it to Lazelle. If you keep the egg to the end of the game, you get a bonus scene, I believe, if that's still in the game. Anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to loot Kithrak Therizin, and she's got the Gith Shard. So go ahead and grab that, and then throw it in the Gith Yankee Barrier Disruptor, and that's how you proceed forward. There we go. So now we're going to proceed forward. Now, I would suggest healing before going to this next part, but... They shouldn't be hostile, and we're not going to fight them yet. We're not, like, I know I've had you just genocide the entire crash, but these guys we're going to hold off on for just a bit, and we're going to attack them after we do a few other important things. Go ahead and open the double doors, and don't talk to any of them. Just run into the loot room and grab what you want, and there's another loot room over here, and once you get to this part, I'm going to show you what to do with these statues. Now, this puzzle is quite simple. If you talk to the plaque, it'll tell you which direction to face the statue. So, it'll say... The rising bountiful sun. Well, the sun, at least in my dimension, planet Earth, the sun rises in the east. So, we're going to click the statue until we have it facing east. As you can see, east is down on our map. So, we're going to rotate it until it's facing east. So, there we go. This one says uh, it faces the, the setting sun or whatever, which would be west. But, this one is stuck, and there's a few ways to unstick it. Uh, you need to pass a strength check, which everyone's got 21 strength, so that should be easy enough. If that fails, uh, there's a few things you can do. If you have a grease bottle, and you, on, if any of your characters have a grease bottle, you can throw the grease bottle at this and unstick it. And if you don't have a grease bottle, go make a hireling. Uh, well, you, you can't teleport actually out of here, so you might have to bring a hireling to grease it. The final thing you can do is attack it once with a melee hit. Not with Lazelle, she'll break it. It has 30 HP, you can smash this and ruin this forever. So if you are on honor mode, I don't suggest attacking this. But, um, you know, click on it and see if you pass the strength save, which um, we did, so there we go. And then we're just gonna turn it. And uh, again, if you attack it, like just punch it, like take off your, just do one point of damage. It is sturdy, so it's kind of tanky. That opens the uh, secret door here. And uh, we're just going to move this over like so. And there we go. Now, if you're wondering about being able to teleport out, well, once you get a little bit further down here, you'll notice that the map no longer turns red, which means we can warp wherever we want. So there you go. Uh, this allows players to come here immediately as soon as you get Lazelle in the, in the story. And you can technically get this weapon like very early on in the game. So I'm going to uh, t tell you how to do the puzzles and how to get this weapon. It is a legendary weapon. Also, we leveled up by going in here, so that was kind of the point. But I'll go over level 7 stuff in a bit, because Sterian and Shadowheart still aren't level 7 yet. Anyway, uh, I didn't mean to go out and leave. Whoops, <laughs> misclick. Alright, so here is the deal. These little... We're going to have Asterion do the puzzles, uh, so he's going to solo the whole thing. He's, he's a quick guy. He's got a good range. We're going to range attack the energy source crystals up here on the left, just like so. That will remove the force field. And you want to do this with Asterion, because the thing we looted earlier is uh, very pivotal. So here's how these traps work. If you step in front of this, it detects you with this wave. Then it attacks you, and it will push you all the way off into the chasm and kill you. That sucks. So we're just going to run up and around behind it here. There we go. Pretty simple stuff. 
We're traveling behind it. We're jumping over the small ledge. We're attacking this energy source crystal. Now, we're going to break this crystal, but we need to break another crystal. And here's how we're going to get to it without being flung off the side. It's pretty simple. You should have learned this when you did the arcane tower puzzle. But uh, we're going to go turn-based mode, and then we're going to sprint. There we go. And then we're going to run down on this ledge right here. So this is our turn, and the machine might make a noise or activate or whatever, but because we didn't end our turn at the machine, it's not going to push us off. And now, um, it will just end combat for you for some reason, which most of the time the game doesn't, but here it does. Maybe it's a bug. We're going to break that crystal. Now this doorway is open. So again, turn base mode, activate sprint, or cutting dash, whatever. And just run up here, and it can't push you off because it's still our turn. The machine can't activate. Once we're long gone, it, it unactivates. There we go, plus 30 XP. That uh, leveled up uh, Shadow Heart. Now we're going to run up here to the big altar. And I bet you just want to run up and just grab the Blood of Lithander, this big old fancy looking mace. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? As of the recording of this video, the Lithander's blessing is bugged and will not revive you when you die. So that's a bummer. But it's still a really good weapon, and it's one of the main weapons our Radiant tank uses because it is... It, it, it is um, it's always shining, and it blinds undead. It is, it's just the greatest thing ever. So we're going to save here, just safety save. Now, there's, <laughs> um, if you didn't uh, get, uh, what is this item? This Dawn Master's Crest, then you could still technically grab this item, right? And uh, you'd have to break this crystal, otherwise it'll lock you in and blow the whole place up and you get a game over. That's a sad day. So to avoid that, you're going to click on this crest panel here. There it is. And then we're going to insert the Dawn Master's Crest. Now that that is inserted, and that gave us a bunch of XP, uh, I didn't see, 145. Now everyone should be level 7. Um, also, I guess it just loots it for you. I, I remember having to click it, but uh, yeah, I skipped the cutscene. It's pretty cool. Now we have the Blood of Lathander. We're going to hand that over to Lazo with Magical Pockets, and uh, she's still not going to use it right now. She's still not going to use it. Okay, but when we go outside, there's some undead, and our healer's going to put it on... And then we're going to beat up some undeads. So I'm going to return to my party. The traps are disabled, by the way. You can just run past them. They're not going to push you off. They, uh, they're no longer powered, okay? The, the mace was the power source. Before you exit back out the door to fight those enemies, we are going to go to camp. And we're going to level up to seven on everybody, including Gale. So for your cleric, your main character, your main healer, nothing special happens here. You hit level seven. You learn Death Ward, which is really cool, and um, it's it's by default. It's down here, and what that happens is if someone dies, they come back up with one life. Really nice. Guardian of Faith is neat. It's a summon. Uh, it's pretty useful, but uh, not necessary. Freedom of Movement. Now, that's a big one, And uh, but we're not going to cast that. That is Gale's job, okay? That's a Gale thing. Asterion, uh, his, uh, he will put a point into Cleric, so you have level 4 Rogue, you're level 3 Cleric. You can proceed. Nothing special. Now you have Lazel, and she's still default. We're not respecting her into the Radiant Tank until Act 2. We get a bunch of items. But uh, you're going to learn Trip Attack, because g making enemies prone is really, really useful, especially from range. That's super useful. Uh, we don't need Precision Attack or anything of the sort. Uh, I like Evasive Footwork, uh, but Commander Strike, I, these are all kind of situational. But uh, it's, you, you can really go whatever you want, but I'm going Evasive Footwork. That's my favorite. This makes you more tanky. And Shadowheart will go level 6 Monk, which uh, now we have Key Empowered Strikes. And let me explain how this works, because this is a huge power boost uh, <laughs> to Shadowheart. Her DPS just skyrocketed. You go to your passives menu, pick an element. You got Necrotic, you got Radiant, you got uh, uh, Psychic. I'm going with Radiant. All right, we're putting their turn. You can't. You can only turn on one of these, and now we deal additional four to seven every time we hit. So you get two swings, and then you get a double swing, and so that's uh, seven fourteen. Uh, you know, that's like twenty eight extra bonus damage we just received. So remember, Gale is your camp caster cleric, and that means he gets these awesome buffs as well. So you can death ward people. You can also freedom of movement people now. And, uh, there you go. It's, uh, <laughs> you basically can't die at this point as long as you use Gale as your camp caster. You're, you also can't be restrained. You can run around on slippery slopes. 
and lava. It doesn't matter. You're just free to roam around and win the game at this point. It's over. Level 7, it's over. Now, you're not going to need either of these, so, uh, but if you want to cast Death Ward on someone, that's totally fine. Uh, if, like, you're on, um, honor mode, I would cast it on the healer, uh, or one of your main tanks. So, I'm just going to cast it on the heals. We don't need freedom of movement. There's really not anything that's going to impede our movement, uh, for this long rested day. Now, at this point, also, you can use Gale if, again, you're in honor mode to upcast level 4 aid. And, um, you can also, again, top everyone off with the temporary HP, but for all the other difficulty levels, the f this fight's pre pretty simple. So now we can leave the camp, and it's time to go back, t back to the Gith Yankees that are waiting for us, and we're not even going to negotiate or try to talk to them or anything. We're just going to straight up attack, fight, murder, and kill. One of them has a helmet for a Starian best in slot. And once we kill them, we can loot this chest, which has a really powerful ring, also for Asterion, that we will swap in and out throughout the game. Uh, and the way you proceed with the story, you know, you don't have to kill them at first. You will eventually have to kill them. So if you want to experience the story, you can talk to them, and you can choose how you want to proceed from there. And then a lot of stuff happens, and you can proceed however the heck you want from there. Uh, especially if you plan to use Lazel, however, wherever you want to take her. She's got two paths, you know, I'm not going to spoil it, so, uh, yeah, just choose whatever you want. But we will be killing them, because we want their loot. You are invited to kneel. Never been the knee, lads. Now, it actually doesn't matter if you, what you do here, if you wave or don't kneel, it pisses off Lazel. So if you're trying to be, like, maximize Lazel's happiness, then, you, I guess, kneel. But, you know, 300 Spartans, never bend the knee. Which is not something they said in that movie. I could quote that movie word for word. It's one of my powers. If you ask her who she is, Lazel doesn't get disapproval. So that's the neutral option. When looting Ardent Jehi Razath, you'll get the Diadem of Arcane Synergy. And you're going to put that on Asterion. And now, uh, he will do more magic damage with his bow. For the rest of the game. More damage, yay! By the way, in this room in the southwest corner, there's an elegant chest, and inside is the Gloves of Belligerent Skies. Now, this glove enables a build. I don't know if this will ever be patched. There is a build where you can infinitely leap dealing lightning damage, and this uh, makes that even better. So, it is an infinite DPS build loop. You can use it if you want. I'm not going to share the build. It's not my build to share anyway. And the reason why I don't recommend that build is it's not time efficient. Yeah, you can go to a super high HP enemy and jump up and down on them for 10 minutes until they die. And that, those gloves will speed it up a little bit. But that's, I don't know, it's just like, it's weird. It's whatever. Now here at the Elegant Chest, you can loot the Strange Conduit Ring to Asterion. And that will replace his Smuggler's Ring, which we will swap the Smuggler's Ring on for really difficult... Uh, checks for lockpicking, disarming, and if you really need him to stealth somewhere very hard to stealth. But this thing, all he has to do is be concentrating on a spell, which it looks like he lost concentration during the fight. Well, you know, thankfully we can just uh, cast any of these concentrations. Resistance, you know, they all last 10 turns. You cast it before a fight. And he's a cleric, so he's got, you know, like, Shield of Faith. He can just cast that on himself. And there you go. Now he de deals four additional damage. Eat a good berry. Now he deals six additional damage. It, ju it's, it just gets nutty. Now, there's no wrong choice when you go into the plane caster. You don't have to go in. You could just walk away from here. We're basically done with Act 1. Uh, but it's story stuff, so choose whatever you want to do, however don't you want to play it. the game. Now, I'd highly recommend you go in because it does give you extra XP. Here's my experience, uh, 7,908 till level 8. And um, I will mention right now, at this point in the game, that uh, if you did every single side quest so far in Act 1 and you killed every single person, like just a pure genocide run, you killed every innocent, every bad guy, you will be halfway to level 8. That's, that, that's all that does. And that can take you, <laughs> like, two to three times longer than we've spent so far. And you would just be spinning the wheels in the mud, not making much progress. So afterwards, you're going to go west, because we're just going to warp out. Uh, we don't need to walk through the gith, the, the crash anymore. Uh, we've already killed everybody and looted everything that we want. We don't even really need to loot anything at this point. Just the key items. We're super wealthy and rich. 
Once you're back in the secret chamber, you can then teleport to the Trileta, Trileta Crags, which is, you know, where we started. And um, if you really want to give this lady a Githyanki egg, you could, but it just dooms her later on. And she is a vendor later, so those are always nice to have for resets and just items. You could also just kill her if you don't agree with her politics, I guess. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go west. And um, if you want to make the next fight super simple and easy, go ahead and on your main character, uh, just give him the blood of Lathander. And then use all the powers. That makes the fight super simple. Have him lead up. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to do this, though. Uh, also, yeah, there's little traps there. It's uh, it's just a bunch of undead. You have turn undead on most of your characters, which they are resistant to. This pack of undead has resistance to it, especially on honor mode. Uh, but again, you're, you're all clerics. Clerics counter undead. This is an easy fight. Now, if you're still struggling with this fight, all you need to do is focus down both death shepherds. Because if you don't, they will continuously revive and summon more ghouls. Now, once you kill the Death Shepherds, and you kill the ghouls that summon other ghouls, everything despawns, and the fight's over. After this, there's no more fights. Blow all your cooldowns, all your key, all your abilities. It doesn't matter. So, just hit them with the sunbeam. There we go. Pew! And yes, I just hit my allies. It's fine. They'll be okay. After the undead fight, you're going to work your way southwest. And I am so tired, I almost said west-south. <laughs> and uh, you'll see a Weary Traveler pet level 20. Oh boy, he is a powerful wizard. And um, <laughs> it's actually just an illusion of a wizard. It's not even a real one. It's a simulculum. I don't know how to say the word, but um, simulculum. Anyway, <laughs> you want to be nice to him and talk about Gale. And he's going to cure Gale's condition, kind of, sort of. I'll leave it to you to decide, or if you beat him up, it's a thousand XP, but it dooms Gale, so you kinda wanna talk to him and exhaust all that dialogue. Make sure to talk to everyone in camp as you normally do to get up, rid of all their dialogue. Alright, so now this is your very last, last, last chance, not really, but it's the most optimal last chance to go and do everything else you wanted to do in Act 1, uh, or do any of the little side quests here remaining in the crash. Uh, there's, like, the Blue Jay thing and some dig some holes. There's really not a whole lot left here. Nothing worth actually doing. And, uh, yeah. Uh, again, if you were to kill every goblin and do all, all the side quests, you will only be halfway to level 8. And, uh, y you'll hit level 12 long before the end game. So don't worry about, like, being underleveled. We are way overpowered than what we should be. And as soon as you go into Act 2, simply cast all your camp buffs. You've got all the gear. The enemies are actually lower leveled in Act 2 for a, a little bit uh, compared to this zone. So, again, it, it's going to be easy. So, all you're going to do is proceed north and go to the Shadow Curse Lands. That starts Act 2. And that concludes the video. That is it. It's a long one. It's, it's taken a long time to make this. It has taken a freaking year of research and development and spreadsheeting and planning and trial and error and filling up entire notebooks full of s s scribbles boy oh boy but hey i hope it was worth it i hope you had many delicious meals while while watching this um if you just came here for a few useful things i guarantee you learned a bunch of stuff you didn't know and all the synergies and uh if you're wondering about that radiant you know evasion tank and how it's going to turn out you'll have to watch the act two video because that's when it really comes online and these builds get pretty crazy in Act 3, and once you hit level 12, Asterion becomes a murder monster and kill like 14 people per turn. I'm not even joking. It's ridiculous. It's the most possible damage in the game, and I have yet to find a way to break that. Anyway, and I'm not talking about stacking a million barrels or having 10, 100,000 gold and attacking with a special item. None of that cheesy stuff. I just mean regular, you know, t you know, turn-based combat stuff, <laughs> all right? Anyway, with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you really, really benefit from this video, I, I would I just please leave a like and leave a comment. I know I have like 100,000 subscribers, but I read every single comment. It means a lot to me to read your comments. It's the only socialization I get in my life. And uh, if you are compelled to donate, click the thanks button. Th this video has taken insurmountable amounts of my real life time, and I am a very hungry person. 
Uh, so please help me out if you can. If you if you don't have a fancy rich person job, then don't worry about it. Okay, if you're living paycheck to paycheck like I am, then save your money for yourself. I'm just some random stranger on the internet. Okay. Finally, 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 this is a thing I do on my channel here. Is on the right side of your screen there is a video you should absolutely click, and if you don't click it, then you're gonna fail every single dice roll like I did in this video. I'm passing it on to you, so click that video on the right right now. It's gonna take me a long time to make that Act 2 and Act 3 video, and in between I do need to make some money, so I'm gonna have to make a bunch of little mini guides about just little niche things about this game. And if you like pirate ship games and come mid-February, I'll be covering one of those games. Thank you so much. Hit the like, leave a comment, click the video on the right side of your screen. I'll see you there. Mwah.